PKA 581 with our guest, Sean Atwood. Taylor? This episode of PKA brought to you by Express VPN. Feel CBD and lock and load, the finest cum pills in existence. You can find the link for all of those <laughs> below. Sean, one of the highest requested guests ever. All the best stories. Thank you so much for coming back on. I'm blown away, Woody Kyle Taylor, by all the messages I've been getting since I came on approximately two years ago. When are you coming back on, PK? And for the viewers, oh, massive thank you for putting me near the top of the leagues. Really appreciate your lobbying. <laughs> Get me back on. And, and yeah, I've got, I've got so many more crazy stories. Good. I'm excited for that. Yeah. Yeah. Our yeah. fan base is rabid. I'm not going to call them crazy psychopath murderers like somebody with rabies, but. Let's just say they're rabid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Rapidly <laughs> proactive. <laughs> proactive. <laughs> so I was just going through your, and if you don't already subscribe to him, go to Sean Atwood's YouTube channel and subscribe. He's got all of the, it is the most varied content base of any <laughs> channel. Like, like even like you do conspiracies, esoteric stuff, but you cover everything and interview everyone. And I know it's like almost cliche, but I saw a little while ago, you had an interview with someone who was a, a genuine flat earth guy. And I think me and Kyle's position on flat earth, or maybe just me is like, it's an intentionally silly conspiracy theory. I think Kyle believes this too. He's nodding that like, they'll bring up to like discredit, like, Oh, you really think Epstein has a rape Island? What's next flat earth? Like to try and lump that in. What was it like talking to a genuine guy? Or do you truly believe he was genuine in it? So I find it absolutely fascinating to interview people with unusual, bizarre or extreme viewpoints. And he was, you know, very energetic, very enthusiastic, very convinced that we are on a flat earth, despite, you know, all the pictures from space and the yeah. aircraft flying around and <laughs> the rest right. of the, the, rest the of math the and the shadows. And... So, so let me ask you this because like All the, the other round of planets. <laughs> yeah, my thought has always been that maybe there's like one or two nut jobs out there that like I don't know, got their math wrong or saw a shadow weird one night. Anyway. But then like but but then like everyone else, I think that like we like to believe, we like to be the one in the room who's like, "Oh, you guys standing in line for the bakery? Oh, uh, they don't open up today." No, is it see today's Sunday. <laughs> I'm the guy who knows. When in reality, you're the guy who googles. <laughs> and, and 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 you you might even there, there's some douchebags who'll sit there for an extra five ten minutes even though they came for the bakery too but now they get to tell everybody who shows up it's closed it's Sunday what are you doing I'm not here for bagels I'm, I'm here, here, to correct here correcting people in a hungry fashion <laughs> they want to be that guy we all kind of want to be that guy the guy who's like knows more or is more well informed we just handle that position differently than others and I can I jump in I think there's an inclination to believe the counter truth it's a little attractive to everyone because it yeah. turns you into that guy you know if, if if you think blood is red and I'm like no blood's actually blue you it only turns red when it gets exposed to air. actually Woody that's that's an urban myth it, it doesn't actually uh, it's not really blue. Yeah, actually, Kyle, reverse card. What you said is the uh, <laughs> what, what he said initially is the fact. Well, yeah. it's fun to be that guy, and and like you, not you, but some people might hear that and be like, "Ooh, now I have the inside scoop. Yeah. I've got the knowledge that no one else has. The whole world is full of fools that think blood is red, but it so only looks like red that. when it touches and, air. And it's just a weird hill to die on with that. Like well, you could be like, like well, you know, the these are kind of blue. I think it's uh, one of the few hills. No, I'm, 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 I'm at the flat earth thing. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> if, if you look at like standard architects, uh, archetypes, ra ra uh, rather in literature and such, like it's one of the big ones. You know, the guy who, ha who who knows, who's trying to fight, show the truth to the people. That's a big one. That's that's almost as as classic as the standard hero archetype. Like like how many movies do we have where like the, that one guy knows? There's a really good uh, uh, oh, Mel Gibson just, movie where like. Up. I think it's called Conspiracy Theory. I think there's a Mel Gibson movie called that where, like, he's a conspiracy nut, but he stumbled upon the one that's real. And now, like, the uh -huh. actual government guys with, like, sunglasses and the cloaks and dagger shit are showing up and being like, we know you know. And he's like, "You, I know you know you know. I've been waiting on you for 30 years. And they're like, you do, huh? Shit. Oh, um, well, how do we handle this? And it's kind of <laughs> weird because he's so well prepared for them because he's insane. It's a fun yeah. movie. But but that happens real popular right now on Netflix is Don't Look Up, Leonardo DiCaprio, Jonah Hill. Um, 
Well, that's more about our culture being a bunch of ignoramuses, though. (laughs) (laughs) Well, there's the nation seems to get divided. The world seems to get divided in two as to whether or not there's a comet coming meteor. They're the Mm -hmm. same thing to me. About to uh, about to hit the Earth. And like everyone who's educated understands that it's real. They can see it. But it's not until people can see it with their bare eye, their naked eyes that. Anyway, yeah. yeah. I think that COVID has been another really good example of that, where the stakes are so low for believing, and uh, the stakes are so high for disbelieving, possibly. You know, maybe if you got an older loved one. I mean, we got plenty of young friends who've had it, and they're fine. I don't know anyone who's... Do we know anyone who's young who's had it, who... Obviously, we're anecdotal here, and we're just young shifting start? gears a little like bit. Who got fucked up from You know, like a 25-year-old who had a oh. rough time because of oh. COVID. No. no. I know a guy who's dead my age. Done. Like yeah, a, he's actually my brother-in-law's. Oh my goodness, brother or something like like yeah like yeah. So not too far from my family, but uh, yeah. Uh, but he's my age, not exactly young. Was anymore. he a was he a big fat person? He was. A, Could he fit in a rowboat? Yes. Yeah, he was okay. a mildly fat person. Like like he could have been fitter, but he didn't stand out at all. He wouldn't have worn a wetsuit happily. <laughs> Not happily, but he, but he also they would now have it in his I size. Don't, I don't like Maybe that at night. question. <laughs> <laughs> now, now we're People getting, are into, now, now now we're getting into too. uncomfortable yeah. territory, and I, <laughs> I don't. This, this wetsuit test, there's no science behind it. <laughs> dude, would, oh my god, dude, that would solve. I mean, the biggest health crisis in this country is obesity. Yeah. Think about the test and like the amount of people who would be fixed if they're like, all right, new thing, president, whoever came in, president John Cena, everyone who has a BMI of over 20 or over 30, whatever the obese one is, you have to go in public and stand there for an hour in a wetsuit once a month in the fat square. And then people can throw people can throw health foods at you. What's below Rotund. obese? Uh, Rotund. O- overweight. I think it's That's the one overweight and then class like one, two, and three obese. I don't know if it stops at three. Overweight is bullshit. Overweight is total horseshit. Yeah, I have... preach. <laughs> <laughs> I have a physical no, six pack right now, and I am overweight on the BMI. Like it just doesn't account for people who are wide. With this is something calves. good for this is good for Sean. <laughs> have you ever gone over any of these? Uh, like BMI health conspiracies. Do you ever talk to those people? <laughs> Whether it's the kind of person who's like, just eat red meat all day. It's it's totally good for you, or the opposite. My my main conspiracy stuff was on the Epstein case, and yeah, I lost my about. I lost my YouTube channel twice over it in the last year, and I also had a visit to the police station. And I'm banned. I am now banned from reporting on that case. I've got a book on it called "Who Killed Epstein: Prince Jesus Andrew or Bill Clinton." Christ. But I'm banned from reporting on that case. Wait, wait. Pardon me. What's the title of your book? (laughs) You kind of like sped up there at the end. (laughs) Who killed Epstein, Prince Andrew or Bill Clinton? Okay, thank you. I just wanted to make sure everyone heard that one. I can't imagine why you're having so many issues. I mean, I mean, when when nobody's like Prince Andrew or Bill Clinton. At least they didn't blow my car up. I think I got lucky just getting my my channel terminated. And, I mean, but at least yeah. like when all the most powerful institutions that control your ability to communicate online globally, when they come down on you hard and forbid it, you just know you're barking up some nonsense tree with nothing there. That's why, you know, that's why they're like, flat earth guy, ban him! Get him off the internet! <laughs> and then it's like, yeah, I do conspiracies. How about this worldwide sex trade? They're like, no, no that, that kind of... Con- Talk about Sasquatch or something. <laughs> that's wild. I didn't know that you had your channel fucked with twice in the last year over it. Yeah, I've, I've had a visit to the police station. There were massive campaigns launched against me to destroy my channel and my reputation. And I'm still standing. The public went crazy. They lobbied... YouTube on on Twitter, it was going for days at Team YouTube, and I got it back twice. What were the conclusions that they were so mad about that, that you? So were they don't. I, I went to YouTube's corporate headquarters in London to try and get a proper explanation of, of you know. But I spoke to the security person, mm-hmm. and she went to the desk and and told them my issue, and she came back with a little business card that said, "Contact Google Customer Service." <laughs> so my theory is that they put the algorithm aggressively on my channel. It probably been lobbied by maybe, you know, Royal Family Legal Department or something like that. Mm -hmm. The algorithm went over my channel. I ended up with 30 major strikes that caused uh, terminations. This is why I got terminated twice. 
<laughs> and um, but I mean, some of the stuff they struck was like I interviewed the guy who introduced the modern day slavery act in the UK, and they what said is, that what was, is that? They, they said that was cyberbullying, the act yeah. that counters and you know enables the safety of women who are getting trafficked and men who are getting mm -hmm. trafficked. This guy. He, he he got awarded, I think, a knighthood for it. He has safe houses all over the country for women who are getting trafficked. But the algorithm, it picks up on certain words, traffic, Satanism, Epstein, blah, blah, blah. And it doesn't discern whether the video is good or whether the video is a conspiracy, is, mm. is, is, is mm. QAnon. I think, you know, the, the QAnon buzzwords is what it was really it really looks for. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's crazy. So you got so, scooped yeah. up in a bunch of bullshit it, and they kind of targeted you, it sounds like. Oh, there's been campaigns. There's been campaigns on me all year. I got, even now, I'm still, my YouTube channel got hacked about a month ago. The hackers had it for a full day. They were, they were broadcasting Bitcoin scam commercials. And then a couple of weeks ago, my Twitter went down and they regenerated it as Elon Musk's Twitter. Oh, no. The question is, wait, what is it? This? Is it Clinton or Prince Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> I'll say this. I'm going to say this from the heart. I guarantee it's neither one of those fine gentlemen. <laughs> How dare you allege anything of the sort, Woody? My bad. Disgusting. No, it's Sean who's coming up with these unsupported frivolous accusations that we don't care for here. There's definitely no evidence that Clinton or Prince Andrew have anything to do with Epstein. That's it. They're not convicted, so you can't talk about anything that's alleged. No. Yeah. No, you can't have fun with it like you can Cosby because they just, I mean, <laughs> you can say whatever you want about him, I think. So what was, I'm curious, like, what were the parts that it got dicey? Because I remember last time we spoke to you, it was a couple years ago, so I think the Epstein suicide had already happened. I'm, I'm pretty sure the the suicide had, had already occurred and you were able to talk about that then like, Hey, clearly this wasn't a suicide. A bunch of stuff doesn't add up. When did it we, really start? We, we became the tip of the spear on the reporting on the Epstein case. We even got a shout out on the Joe Rogan show. Eddie Bravo oh, right. said he was all over our videos. A seal like... of approval. I hear you. <laughs> right? yeah, yeah. We, we'd interviewed people like Prince Andrew's Royal Protection copied that he, it was an exclusive all the journalists at the forefront, victims like Maria Farmer. And we had, we had 60 million views on this stuff. It was going Jesus. mental. Yeah, so, you know, littler channels can still say things, but I, what I've realized is once you get to a certain size, you're not allowed to say things. Yeah, or you well, have to like from that you have to like hedge your bet <laughs> in what you say to such an extent that you're no longer making a meaningful statement. Is that the kind of thing where well, you feel tried, kind of hemmed in? We tried that. We changed our lingo and everything, but you know when they when they've got you in the crosshairs, it's the keywords. Can I? Just... I think that if you, I think you can say anything you want as long as you <clears throat> say it into one of those microphones that's shaped like an ear and you lick it a lot. Because whenever I watch <laughs> one of those girls on Twitch, I don't see anybody coming down hard on them at all. It seems like they can say anything, and they got that uh, that really cool microphone. I'm getting one. It's shaped like an ear. And, uh, oh my god, dude! I am just you putting the idea in my head of ASMR conspiracies. I just wrote it down because that is one of the funniest. Things. Hitler had so many contacts in South America that the idea of committing suicide at that point in his life would have been ridiculous. Here's a picture of a South American man who has a striking resemblance to. Like, that's what it is if you don't you know it, sean if you don't know these asmr videos it's literally like twitch girls and oh. there's a mic that looks like two ears and it's them like flicking the ear the, the rubber <laughs> mic ears and playing with it and then guys are beating off to sounds of something i guess allegedly is... beating off i don't know i'm feeling a little targeted do you trust, beat, me, trust me she's off. like she's audio? like make so they make eye contact with like low cut shirts <laughs> and they slurp on fake ears while they moan and groan I need to hire some of those girls. They oh, work yeah. for pennies. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way he could have killed himself in that room with those tearaway shirts. Like, and they're just <laughs> like, "Ooh, damn!" The, the, uh, Kitty's got me looking. Tell me but, more. Uh, these are um, this is making sense. Yeah. We didn't. Oh, we didn't enter the war in Afghanistan to fight terrorism. 
no one would uh, no one would watch that to like check on you there's there's no there's no oversight over there on ear liquors i promise there isn't because i've seen some shit um amaranth must be making like a million dollars a month over there because she looks a fine ear but what's really fun <laughs> is to slide all the way to the lowest viewed girls in asmr and mm -hmm. and and like they've still spent the four hundred and fifty dollars on the ear microphone because they saw that they, they saw the earnings reports that got leaked or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I'm gonna I'm gonna become an ear licking millionaire named Pixie Princess. <laughs> and they end up like embarrassing themselves on the <laughs> internet for, You're for judging hard. I embarrass myself on the internet for a lot less than I'm that. the only viewer in there, Willem Woody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> it's just me. Her and the ear. <laughs> and you just type one comment like, you suck. No, no, no. Like, well, you see how much she'll do for the, the promise of bits. Oh, wow. I will give you this if you do that. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking for a new ear, girl. I'm feeling it. I got my Twitch Prime sitting here just burning a hole in my virtual pocket. <laughs> she starts licking a little faster. <laughs> I, I know we were making fun of the, the flat earth thing. We went by it. What was, if you remember, Sean, what was that guy's main thing? Like, I, I'm sure there was one argument that he kept coming back to, like the, the ice wall or something. Like, I'm curious, what was his main thing he kept trying to drive home to you? So he mixed the flat earth theory whereby we're not a pancake, we're like a snow dome with a flat bottom into simulation theory. Okay. So it got really technical. And so he thinks that... Oh! He thinks so flat, he earth is, uh, flat earth is a, a little too circle. simple for this This guy. I like. No, no, no. I like him mixing it because it's the only way that you could ever be like, <laughs> yes, it makes sense because it's a simulation. Yes. But, but why this, would they simulate it flat? Well, I don't know, but maybe he had an answer. <laughs> Why would they make all the other planets round in the simulation? It doesn't make you know what I mean? Like, they would cover their tracks. They'd be like, oh, fuck, we almost released this beta. All the other planets are round. That well, maybe, maybe, the, maybe, the other, <laughs> maybe, maybe the other planets are, you know, like, like one of those little dioramas that kids have spinning around in their bedroom with shadows and lights when they're growing up. Yeah, oh, yeah. Are, yeah. Like, too, like, 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 those are just hallucinations. Well, well, I mean, they appear around, but they're obviously two dimensional on our walls. Maybe it's all just. A oh, I, I thought you were talking about like a mobile you put over a. Yeah, I've never been to space. Like, like you know that South Park I episode. Like, they're they're like, this is like the third time I've been to space, and Carmen's like, this is like my fifth. Like, like, my I've, never <laughs> 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 I've never actually been. I've never actually been. That's so, wild. So, yeah. That is like, I feel like if you layer the like everything is digital matrixy on top of any conspiracy. Then you could be like, okay, well, yeah, I guess they could have made that the world it we're in. Like, you can't really disprove it any more than you could like disprove yeah. God putting us. I, but I like it more. It's more palatable. It's like they put a nice sugar coating on the other thing because the other thing is so absurd. It's more fun. Yeah. That, that the the other thing is so absurd. It's bitter. That doesn't want to go down. But when you wrap it up on a little simulation theory, I'm like, oh, I like that one. That's a fun theory. I've heard smart people talk about that one. How could you just <laughs> how could you disprove a simulation theory? Like, is if there was a way, someone would have done it by now, right? Or I don't um, know. When are you there? talking private about that after the show? Oh, okay. <laughs> you know that everyone's an NPC except you. That's uh, solipsism. Yeah, that's a that's more you of a just mental pick illness. Up words to look smart, Taylor. That's, <laughs> that's <bullshit>. true. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say it was? Uh, it's called solipsism. It's where you think that you are the only person who exists. I'm gonna I'm gonna Google that. It's which it's is like which would that... be like the funniest thing to debate. It's like you're in your mind, you're debating a subsection of your mind, <laughs> like, or you're debating. <laughs> It's sort of like the Truman Show, right? They, they, they believe that to some extent, some of them. Yeah. like They believe that, you know, they're there for the entertainment or perhaps for some sort of testing purposes. Like, they're, they're part, everything is fake. You guys are NPCs. Me sitting here, I'm the only real person in this entire existence. It's sort of, and a lot of people not don't think of it as a conspiracy theory because it's a mental illness that they suffer from. It's a delusion that they, they actually... Yeah, like, Zach just put it in there. It's like thinking that the self <laughs> is all that can be known to exist. And it's like, okay, well, then if you draw the line at what can be known at your nose and yourself, then what is the point of discussing anything with you? Because like, Very, if nothing else can be known, like... It comes from Descartes, doesn't it? I think, therefore I am. Yeah, 
Yeah. I'll admit it's a real word, but it's not spelled the way I thought it was. No, it's, a, it's one, of those, <laughs> never one of those tricky fucking professor words where they, you know, they can look in college. <laughs> of- is it, it's, I want to know how to spell it. Is it S O L E B S C I S M? I P L I P. I lip. Yeah, the, I, I, it, I had it right. It said that it was O P. <laughs> okay, never mind then. Well, so, so, so did he try to convince you of the Earth's dome like snowy nature? And if if so, like, what, were you at all swayed at any point? He did. He tried to convince me and my co-host Andrew that he was in fact correct, and we just kept throwing things at him. You know, like photographs from outer space, pilots, journeys around the Earth, things like that. Yeah. But he did. He did keep coming back with fascinating, engaging, and colorful answers. And in the live stream that night, it was really hopping as well. I think the people really were entertained so in the end you would say that he probably didn't you know support his cases uh, that well if there'd been a court of, if there'd been a court of law there do you think they would have cited from the guy's <laughs> point of view he did great i'm sure yeah from his point of view he did great but going into it i think most people knew the truth yeah of course but but like but but my my dream in that scenario is that you run into the best flat earth supporter the guy who's who who really knows his flat earth nonsense <laughs> and, and, and he could be just a little bit convincing like like i'm not going to walk away from this ever convinced of, that there's a flat earth unless you take me there i suppose yeah. like, like he takes like, you there and you can't help but be convinced i have to go on one of those like movie style journeys where the boat just keeps getting closer and closer and everybody wants to turn back but you're like no it can't be and you fall off i need that i guess unbridled enthusiasm takes me there and he definitely had that <laughs> that's fair i like that i like when someone is into what they believe in everybody what they, uh, needs think. a hobby and like <laughs> like what what's what's this guy hurting you know like what is the consequence of him believing the earth is flat that Isn't you he... get hilarious conversations at like yes! july parties with him if that's that the was... consequence inv- i'm inviting that guy to every party hey john, john <laughs> tell, tell me about everybody shut the fuck up john <laughs> Tell me about Antarctica again. No, no. As much time as you need. Everybody shut the fuck up. Like, that would be great. I want to be friends with that guy. That, that's a much more uplifting conspiracy guy than a guy who's just like, and another thing with the Jews. And it's like, oh, man, come, we're trying to play Settlers of Catan here. Like, I'm trying, to tra- I'm trying to trade my sheep for your wheat so I can activate my port. And you're trying to talk to me about Jewish stuff. I don't care. I just got to tell you, I don't care. Like I say, you're the. I don't. I don't I've never played Soldiers of Catan, so I don't get that reference. But I too am tired of drunk guy at the party talking to me about the Jews. Um, it does. I, yeah, and it, I, it doesn't have to be the Jews. It can be any. It seems like, like it does, point. Mark. It, I will say. I will say they are disproportionately represented in those drunk rants. Yeah, definitely. What is it about drunk people that makes them so? Uh, anti-semitic i don't know it happened to mel gibson too i don't know if I, I don't i think i think that pre-exists predates the drunkenness oh him not caring for jewish people so you think that the alcohol just sort of made them a little bit lo- loose-tongued about their <clears throat> i think it probably existing anti-semitism they don't well, talk like that on ecstasy no they mm. don't and also like if you listen to the mel gibson tapes the the anti-semitic part really gets overshadowed by by some other <laughs> other topics the i hope you get <laughs> raped by a pack oh of blank, i always you know, forget that, that, that is, uh, that one that line kind of flies over the rest of everything else that happens in those tapes when we do that private conversation after this we're going to listen to those tapes again too so, so i just, i got it once a year i re-listen to the opie and anthony listening of the mel gibson tapes and it's, it's become i've heard it so many times you know there's that one part where he says all i want you to do is sit there and shut up and blow me <laughs> and like i i've heard that so many times that i that i stopped even believing or associating that with the actor and the man mel gibson because i just can't I, I, you can't see him saying it so it's almost like he didn't so i just choose to believe i, that, I had that to, good, this was many months ago i had to change my 
my uh my twitch alert on twitch because i had the clip of mel gibson saying like sit down and fucking blow me (laughs) like every time someone would would donate and then one of my mods was like i think it's hilarious other people are getting in trouble for a lot less than the shit you're you're doing (laughs) doing around here and i'm like you're right you're right (laughs) this is probably a bad idea yeah yeah you can't have any fun can't have any so, fun anymore. So the Not flat earthers happening. is a big one. Um, I, but but honestly, I don't like that one because it's so outlandish. I, I've I've never liked that one. I like the, the moon that, one is more interesting than that. I, I like the ones that there's a li- there aren't many that I'm like too deep into, but there's some that are li- that I'm like okay, one percent maybe. Okay, I see a thing there that's weird. The moon thing. Um, you know, Woody's often points out that that like some of those photographs that they used were fake. Not the moon specifically, but there's yeah. a space. Walk and they used they doctored photos and showed the public doctored photos of a, of a spacewalk just to make them look a little bit nicer. And if they go to that length, then that means, frankly, that there just happen, so happens to be a Photoshop department at NASA for some reason. Everybody's like, yeah, they just sent it over to the Photoshop room at NASA. It's like, which they, which video did they fake? What else do they do there at the Photoshop room in NASA? I, you you really open it up and it's colossal. Like it's a whole. It wasn't a video. It was a photograph. Like there was a bunch of apparently yeah. legitimate photographs. And then they slipped in a couple illegitimate ones, you know, just to add spice more, it up, spice it up, have some more. And that damaged their credibility. Now, I don't think the moon landing is fake, but there Neither were some I. fake pictures in there, which gives the conspiracy theorists I, some ammunition. I, I talked to someone who like is I wouldn't say they're a moon landing conspiracy theorist or anything. They just are like interested in that stuff. And he mm-hmm. was like, why didn't the the landing craft make any? Uh, craters I guess they're called like why didn't it indent into the surface of like the soft dust on the moon and I'm like well cause it did and then I like looked around and was like okay okay you checkmated me there I, I can't find any where there's a crater but like there must be a reason that I think it touched down so. really gently like it, it would right well like, I mean is, I've is seen that, the it's... video right like it, it did touch down really gently yeah I mean, I uh, that one. What I was getting at is like that one kind of bothers me a little bit. Sasquatch doesn't ever appeal to me. The goose and the the ghosts and goblins either. But uh, when I hear someone start talking about that birds aren't real, then we just need to have a whole different conversation. You can't engage with a birds aren't real person. Yeah, there's no you, entry point there. I you go real? straight to mental what illness. The, yeah. Right. What other animals aren't real? I mean, I'll, you know, I'll the, talk to you about Sasquatch the, all day because there giraffes. was one. The, giraffes the are total, giraffes yeah. are fake. It's they're not believable. Why would there be a forty foot tall spotted moose? That's that, that's like that's that. that would be the way to talk to a birds aren't real person. If those yeah. are even, I can't tell if birds aren't real people are real or if that's can't a meme either. making they're, fun of the also mostly fake giraffes are bullshit. Yeah. They're clearly cameras on long poles. That's why they have those necks like that. Have you it doesn't ever, make any sense otherwise. It's the most fed, logical explanation. I, I fed one. I've seen them. Do, I fed one also. They have yeah, them at the zoo here. They the got zoo. that long Free. blue tongue that like does the little yeah. loopy thing. I, like, I mean, it's very believable. I'm not it's saying it's on not. Your dick. Those are the saying... best damn anat- animatronics I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> but it, Woody, it I got a way to this animal. I can disprove your, your theory for $8,000. Exactly. Only? <laughs> guys come on let's just make it for $8, ten thousand dollars we're gonna murder a giraffe <laughs> that's what it costs for if he told me for eight thousand dollars you could shoot the giraffe you get a dead giraffe out of this well i'm not saying there don't are no cyborg the giraffe giraffes I, i'm not saying that they don't have like you know i'm in for 2500 yes or no <laughs> <laughs> you've called my bluff <laughs> i'm folding <laughs> so I, I wanted to ask sean what like you, you kind of got forced out of the Epstein thing and that was your bread and butter for a while. What's kind of your new area or areas of focus that you're looking into mm-hmm. now to, to expose or learn more about? So I've just been expanding my true crime podcast. I've got like three or four co-hosts come in now so we can keep the momentum going. We got, we got about three videos a day coming out. We have a morning video, which is more cerebral. And then in the, uh, in the evening we have a, a darker video. And on the subject of you know things that don't exist, the um, people attacking my story and reputation said that a guy I served time in prison with didn't exist, and he was called Cheebone. Now, in the last interview, I mentioned to you guys 
the, there was a riot over that guy. What would they call him? Smack, um, Smackdown or knockout or something. So it was the race. Yeah. There was the race riot, and you guys, asked, you know, said it was he like the toughest, one of the toughest guys you had seen in there. Right. When I saw T Bone walk across the prison yard. It was like something out of a Conan movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This guy was six and a half foot black guy, and just you know his 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 biceps bigger than my head basically. So because of the rules of racial division, I wouldn't have just gone up and talked to him on the yard. Mm-hmm. But it was there was an unusual situation whereby you know I had my blog and the prisoners had found out about it by now. There's a big story about how I started my blog, which I could get into later on, and how I almost got killed over my blog, which I could get into later on. But it was it just got in the news, and some of the prisoners had found out. Prisoners don't have internet, but their family members give them a heads up. So I'm just in my cell one day, writing at my little stool combination table thing bolted to the wall, and all of a sudden, the sun blacks out. <laughs> this guy, this, this T Bone, has just entered my doorway. So, so I, I, turn, I turn around. I'm like, "Holy shit!" You know, is this guy going to sweat me? What the, What the hell does he want? I'm absolutely shitting myself. My heart's going. Dun, 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 dun. Anyway, um, I'm like, you know, what's up? And he's like, he, he starts asking me about England and, and English history. He says he's fascinated by the Romans. <laughs> <laughs> fascinated by the Romans, <laughs> by the Romans, and he wants to go to England and visits Hadrian's Wall. And he's he, all he does. Hey, this is guy sounds books. cool as shit. He's oh, he is Adrian. cool as shit. All he, he does is read military history books. <laughs> so, so he he was a former U.S. Marine. He'd seen action, and, and and when he stood in my doorway, he just had his trousers on, his entire body covered in scars, not weenie scars, like horseshoe size scars and every single one was a different life and death prison fight story he was the ultimate prison gladiator but not only was he standing up for himself he was stopping the raping of the young people and i'm and i've got so my my complete journey well most of my journey through the jail and the prison was documented in an online blog called john's jail journal j-o-n-s which started back in 2004. It's still there if anyone wants to check it out and read it. So I've got a lot of my blog entries in front of me to remind me of the stories that I've not told you guys yet because I did re-listen to the podcast. I've I've picked out some particularly hard-hitting ones, but Tebow, the first conversation with him, I put that online. and I'm going to read you what he told me about a little bit about himself and about prison rape. So this was back in... uh, 2006 2007 i think so i said to him how much prison time have you done 18 years since 1986 how many riots have you been through four big ones i saw people losing their lives heads getting bust open with weights pipes baseball bats picks shovels people getting shanked in their eyes how did it feel to be in those riots you gotta do what you gotta do you gotta get down It's hard for me to explain to people outside of prison the effect of a prisoner calling another prisoner a punk. If someone calls you a punk, how does it make you feel? Right away, I'm thinking of death. I'm not going to go berserk. I'm going to wait and catch the person alone. The cops won't see it, but I'll deal with it. How? It depends on who's saying it. If someone calls me a punk, that's like saying I'm a piece of nothing. I'm subhuman. I have no honor or self-respect that I need to be killed. In prison, you have two things, yourself and your word. Certain words are worse than raping someone. If someone calls me a punk, I'm going to handle my business. Whites, Mexican-Americans, and Mexicans make up most of the prison population in Arizona, so you must have experienced a lot of racism. In Arizona, blacks are always at the bottom of the totem pole. I've experienced pure hatred because of the color of my skin. People seething with vile contempt and hate, looking at me like they want to kill me because I'm black but I'm wearing the same prison clothes doing the same time. How cheap is life in prison? It means nothing. I've known people killed for as little as $40 worth of heroin. You must have lost count of the fights you've seen. I've seen so many people get annihilated, it's unreal. I've seen cops get stabbed, one in the eye. You must get sick of it. The raping annoys me the most. It's the foulest thing for a man to do to another man. Back in the day at the walls... 
every single night someone was getting brutalized. You could hear male flesh pounding male flesh and nobody stopped it. You couldn't snitch. And if you couldn't fight back, you were game. Some of the rapers were the size of apes. They'd squeeze the back of the victim's neck to put them unconscious. There was a smell on the run from so many dudes getting raped. Oh. Regular, regular dudes, not homosexuals, getting brutalized, punked, scared to admit they were getting raped. You'd also see big dudes kissing little white boys like they were women, kissing them on the lips and neck. Then all night long, you'd hear the men getting raped. I said, what a nightmare. Worse, gang members would hold someone down and stick things inside him. Things? Yes, cans, soda bottles, shampoo bottles, broom handles, and metal shanks. I've got a lot more to say about T-Bone. Well, I'll get your thoughts. Christ. I'll get your thoughts on that. I mean, did T-Bone... anyone else pick which one? Like, I think broom handles is my object of choice. If you've never that had an issue with that before. If you're going to have to <laughs> pick one of those. I What, you went with the broom handle over the sharpened... Uh, t- yes, I did. And the handle. shampoo bottles get a lot of girth, if I understand it right. Yeah, so at least you get some good out of it. But it's <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that shit's vile. I mean, big uh, not T Bone. He sounds mm. awesome. I like him a lot. But I also liked the way you asked him about like a specific thing, and he was like, "I've seen a lot of people get their head caved in," and then like that's a specific injury. <laughs> and so the an- the answer to that should be like, "Yeah, the 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 jail they brought in a fifteen pound kettlebell for us so we could work our posterior chains, fight off the rapes, and <laughs> and, <laughs> and somebody caught one in the head, crushed his skull." But he didn't just say that. He was like, "Wait." A really big light bulb at one point. Trays, um, <laughs> leg of a chair. Uh, a, a guy's a guy, that guy with the big hands. You see him on YouTube. Leg of he came in. Yeah, leg of lamp. And so it's a like okay, that, that's like seven different instances of this guy seeing a head caved in with like seven different objects. And that was just top of the head. What he could remember that morning. <laughs> so that's, exactly. that's wild. That, that is a horrible, horrible life to lead. But it seems yeah. like he was trying to like. You know, and I'm, did, I'm uh, editorializing a lot, but it seems like he was like, you know, if I'm going to be here, you know, I was a Marine. I was someone who tried to fight for the good. Well, I'll use my body here to try and, like, protect the weak and the and the rapable. So what did T-Bone do? Why was he in prison? All like, right. So the, t- the T-Bone crime <laughs> he story. Raped then. People, so <laughs> he's a little bit of a hypocrite. <laughs> when, yeah, when, T-Bone, when T-Bone got out of the Marines and he saw action in the Marines and he, he, he had PTSD from it. He became a bodyguard, and he was in he was in the gangster lifestyle, the night lifestyle. Gets on the cocaine, and all of his crimes. And he must uh, that was back what two thousand six, two thousand seven. He's back in prison now. He must be at, at thirty plus years right now of incarceration, all revolving around drugs lifestyle, crimes to finance drugs, that kind of activity. Now, sadly, T Bone did get released about five or six years ago. And I was on the phone with him every week trying to get his life story down as a book because I thought that would give him credibility to do talks. He's very mm-hmm. religious. He wanted to do talks in churches, in schools. And, he, you know, his heart, is he's got this massive heart, obviously, for protecting these young people. He didn't even know from prison rapists yeah. in this cutthroat environment. He's got this massive heart. But I knew... And a massive heart from the cocaine. Maybe enlarged. <laughs> yes, that's what happens. <laughs> so I knew... I was in a race against time because he's institutionalized. The the prison industries feed off people like him. They have special cops watching him, you know, trying to get him back in the system. We discussed that last time, the economics of it, $60,000 a year of taxpayers' money when they re-arrest you back mm-hmm. to the prison. So they swatted him. His neighbor, who was an old lady, they, they had a shotgun to her head. They were screaming, oh, how do you know, do you know this guy and all this shit? And then they get him incarcerated and they say to him, look, You've done a robbery. We're going to give you 200 years if you go to trial and lose. We'll just sign this plea bargain right here, and we'll just give you a little 15-year sentence. Now, t mm. hadn't done this robbery. This is how they squeeze you into the system without a trial because it costs them money to have, give you a trial. They think you will be so scared of facing 200 years by rolling the dice at trial, especially if you're a black man in Arizona. That's a very risky proposition. Mm-hmm. They think you will be so scared of that, you'll just sign for 15 years for something you've not done. So he went and prayed, and he came back, and he said, look, I've prayed. I've decided not to do it. God's got my back. I'm going to go to trial. I'm not going to accept responsibility for something I've not done. So he went to trial. 
And they got the cop on the stand. And they said to the cop, is this the location where he did the robbery? Yep. Was there a camera where in this, this location? Yep. Show us the video of him doing the robbery. The cop said, we didn't have time to get the video. So the jury was like, WTF is going on here. Mm-hmm. And they found him not, um, not guilty. And he was so happy. He thought he was getting out. But once the system has got you, it has got you. So there was a woman in trouble with the cops. You know, they reduced her charges or whatever, gave her a pass to say that T-Bone took $20 off a countertop in a store. She got on the stand and said that, and she was believed over the big bad black man, and T-Bone yeah. was found guilty, and they gave him 13 years. For $20? Yeah, because of his prior convictions, they enhanced it. Jesus Christ, that's horrific. Isn't and it? was there absolute, was there any abomination? And there was no even evidence that he even took the twenty, other than this woman. Nothing. Saying. They don't need a shred of evidence. That's pretty scary. That's, it's one welcome, of those things yeah. I imagine you you don't realize how scary it is until you're in the mix and you're like, oh, I, oh, I forget. Yeah, I'm being arrested. I'm the side with no institutional power, no mm-hmm. outreach. Like they can just bend me over and fuck. I could be a hundred percent innocent. Like. You, there happen. are people who sign plea bargains for stuff they've not done just so they get a short sentence or they can get out the next day. If you watch that documentary on Netflix, the Caliph Browder story, he, they said he stole a backpack. He was in Rikers Island. He was getting brutalized. They said, we'll let you out tomorrow. Just sign guilt. And he said, no, I've not stole it. And he stayed in there and he got even more brutalized and it's horrible what, what happens to him. But he could have got out, but he, he had integrity. So... Yeah, it's, it's a really messed up system. But T-Bone was helping these young people, preventing the raping of them in this cutthroat environment. And rape is so common out there, we had to go to a prison rape class to get taught how not to get raped. Did I tell you about that last time? I don't think so. I could use this information. Yeah. All right. Prison rape <clears throat> class, right? So we get this like a little slip under our door. Saying, you know, you got to go to the rape class today at such and such a time. The, the guards come and all the prisoners are joking. Here's how you want to enjoy your rape the most. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all Every, the, pass the Vaseline back. This is exactly the conversation. Yeah. How to prevent <laughs> rape. Well, it's not rape if you consent. End of class. Yeah. This, this is the conversation on, to, on the way to the rape class. You just guessed it. They're saying, are they going to give us rape kits and all this kind of shit? Just, just, just joking. And then, you know, we get to the rape class, and they got this <laughs> big badass, uh, sh- like sheriff-looking guy with a canary cowboy hat on in there, who's who's one of the uh, guards. He's a high-up guard, and he's showing us the video. And um, so you got predators in a day room on the video, and you know the young, the new arrivals are hungry. And if they take food from the predators, the predators are going to come up to them and say, you got to pay for that food now. What's you going to get stabbed up? Mm-hmm. Well, how am I going to pay for that food? I've got no money. Well, go in that cell over there and do whatever that guy tells you to do. Now, once they fall for that, if they do that, then it's called getting turned out or becoming a prison punk. And there's no coming back for it. And they rented out as prison prostitutes. And the conclusion of the rape class was... To stop rape, you've got to report it. And I think we went over all the gang rules last time from the, the Aryan Brotherhood when you go in, mm-hmm. what, what they told me. Uh, you, you can't speak to the guards about anything, or it's KOS for snitching. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, so T-Bone wasn't just knocking these rapists out. He's getting stabbed, hit in the head with river rocks in socks, two or three of them at a time. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of stories he told me that I wrote down. I'm, gonna, I'm eventually going to put his book Jeez. out because... He has the, they talk about having the heart of a mountain lion. Fucking hell, man. Did you learn yeah. anything in your rape class where you're like, oh, good. I, I didn't know that. Or was just, it? <laughs> <laughs> good teacher. They oh. said, if someone puts like sweets on, under your bed sheets, don't take the candy. <laughs> <laughs> I learned about that the hard way as a child. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, from, from the Xena story last time, with the broomstick in her posterior. Yeah. She did survive that, but other prisoners that she knew had um there was one they put the light bulb in his posterior and made bets on who was gonna smash it. That prisoner didn't survive that day. He killed himself afterwards. Oh. Uh, but she Zena told me a lot of, of, of stories of, of people getting gang raped and it 
for T-Bone to be doing that, honestly, bravest man in the world, brave, absolute fucking brilliant. Yeah, person. they should make a yeah a, a HBO mini series about him. They it, should. Yeah, they it'd be should. like it'd be like Oz, but but less horrible. Yes. <laughs> because, not that Oz so was a horrible, horrible show, but it is uh, discouraging to watch. I hate yeah. Oz. It makes you like sad to yeah. to watch it, but it, it's it's entertaining. No, it's, it is a good show. Oh, come on. I regret watching it. It's a terrible show. You, it was the you, timing. You might like it more if you didn't have it. You were about to go to jail over your head. Who would watch it again? How could I watch it again? It was awful. It was so it was so depressing. Just just nothing but death. And every time you think that like, oh, something good's going to happen. So and so is going to get out of prison. No, they're going to frame him up good now. <laughs> oh, this guy's, you know, who we've been rooting for has finally figured it out, got the upper hand. Now he knows what the score is. Nope. That was a fake relationship, and now he's in trouble. Yeah, it's awful. I hated that show. Um, and it wasn't a good time to watch it right, right before going to prison either. Probably poor timing, poor timing on my part. <sighs> So I, 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 you think you're gonna do a whole book about T-Bone? Like, like, how does the T-Bone story like, like, progress from there? Like, yeah, I mean, so he, you know, he was in prison back in the day when I think 60 Minutes did a program on Arizona prison, saying it was the, the most dangerous. This was Florence prison. It was the most dangerous square mile of real estate in the entire country back then. It was so brutal. I mean, the guards would just take you out to the desert, shoot you in the head, and, and bury you if, if you know, they didn't like you. Things like that. Everyone was housed together in this one prison. It wasn't all industrialized and spread out like it is now. So without the cameras and everything else, the brutality was just completely off the scale. Hmm. So over a, over a period of years, I documented my conversations with T-Bone. But that start, the, the, the total documentation story begins um, back in 2004. I'm in the maximum security Madison Street Jail run by Sheriff Joe Arpaio. My first year I was in Towers Jail. The prosecutor's doing all these dirty tricks on me. She doubled my bail bond, doubled my charges. I was facing 200 years at this point. They stopped my girlfriend from visiting me by indicting her as well for prescription pills found in her house on the day of the raid. Um, when I moved into Max Security, that was when I moved in with the cockroaches. And I, and I started I started to write all that stuff down and send it in, home in letters to my family members. And they suggested we start a blog because blogging was relatively new back then. And there was a blogger out of Baghdad. I think his name was Salem Pax. And he started blogging, you know, when the bombs were falling on Baghdad and it was making the news in the UK. So my family, we had a, you know, a chat about documenting the stuff that was going on in the jail. My mom didn't want us to do it because of all the murders that were going in the jail by the guards, people like Scott Norberg, you know, mentally ill man wandering the neighborhood. Um, I think I mentioned uh, him last time. They they beat the shit out of him. They were still, you know, beating the shit out of him after he turned blue. And um, all these were caught on video. And the the, the the jail run by Sheriff Joe had to pay out over 50 million in lawsuits. So my mom was scared shitless about us exposing what was going on in this jail. But I was determined to do it because I said to a guard, how do you guys get away with this? You know, the dead rats in the food, the cockroaches all over us at night time, guards murdering prisoners. And the guard said to me, the world has no idea what's going on in here and the public doesn't give a shit about prisoners. So with a tiny little pencil, like a, a golf pencil, uh, sharpened on the cell door, I started to write everything down. Now, I couldn't put these things in the mail because the guards could open the mail. But my aunt was visiting me in maximum security. Now, in maximum security visits, she's behind like a plexiglass screen. It's like Silence of the Lambs when Clarice mm -hmm. Starling first meets Hannibal Lecter. Yeah. I've got like leg chains on, belly chains on. I've got one hand chained to a table and the other I'm able to hold. Other the hand full of semen. <laughs> <laughs> I've washed that off. Just I've, like, I've washed that off before Just like in came. Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Multiple megs. <Yeah. laughs> I can mm. smell you. Oh, no, no. <laughs> All right. So, so she's, she's on the other side of the plexiglass. Um, I'm not allowed to hand anything to my aunt either. I couldn't put what I wrote in the mail. The guards could open the mail. So what I did was I hid what I wrote in legal papers and old letters and documents I could release to my aunt through the visitation guard. So to do that, I had to put a request in. I take my, I'm penguin shuffling up to the visitation room. 
with this pile of old letters and stuff. It's all hidden in there. So the guard takes it, puts it on his table. I'm talking to my aunt, looking over at that stuff at, at the corner of my eye. My heart rate is up, thinking he's going to look through it and, and suss out what I've written. And there's going to be consequences. But they're trained to look for contraband, you know, syringes, drugs, cash, things like that. So he didn't check it out properly. At the end of the visit, the, the paperwork was handed to my aunt and she took them home in Arizona, typed them up, emailed them to my family in England. And that's how my blog, John's Jail Journal, started. And the first stuff I wrote down was when the jail had had no running water for three days. And I knew we were in trouble when the mound of crap in the toilet had risen above the water level. Oh, no. Mm. Yeah, so inmates display, you know, remarkable ingenuity during these difficult occasions. And the solution was to shit in the plastic bags the moldy breakfast bread is served in. And then you just keep those cells, they keep those bags in your cells until you, you allowed out for a shower and put them in the trash downstairs. So that was the solution, but... Yeah, you had to wait on all that. It took a long mm -hmm. period of time to, to get the crap. And you're, out and you're filling bags with shit. What like it, the <laughs> fuck? Yeah, that's yeah. pretty. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Although, this hold on, awesome. I do, I do like how you said that. You're like, oh, these prisoners, they are ingenious in these scenarios. Their solution was to take, yeah, was yeah. to take a bag and put the shit in it, <laughs> <laughs> and then take you it out. That's really remarkable. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so that was that was the first day of my writing. I was writing about that. The whole building reeked like a giant portaloo, and we're we're sleeping re right next to the toilet. It's like living in a bathroom. Your toilet's mm -hmm. there, your bunks are there. So we put a towel over the toilet to try and reduce the smell. Now, the next day of my writing, my cellmate, he's been holding a shit in for days because he doesn't want to do a dump when, when there's this big pile of crap already mm -hmm. over the water level, but he can't hold it in any longer. So he pinches his nose, lifts the towel from the toilet and says, there's way too much crap to crap on, dog. I'm going to use the bag. <laughs> oh. so, so, as etiquette demands, I roll over on my bunk and face the wall. I hear something hit the rim of the, of the seatless toilet and him say, damn, I missed some. <laughs> <laughs> Is it like pissing in a bottle on a road trip where you're like, oh, I'm filling up, I'm filling up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, he, he, he puts he puts the bag of crap near the near the, the cell door, which made the smell even worse in the cell. <laughs> Where he's got it on the fucking rim of the cell, the shit, because we've got no ring water, we can't clean that off. So that looks like a fucking crustacean on the yeah. rim. Oh, and God, um, we, barnacle on here. <laughs> and, and, and then we were hoping to be allowed out of the cell to you know to, to dispose of the bag, but a guard announced. We've got no running water. We're going to have to get 120 inmates water from emergency containers. So you're all staying locked down. Now, hours and hours later, the water came back on in stages. In our toilet, its level slowly rose. So I said, oh, shit. It's about to overflow. <laughs> <laughs> this is about to be a cataclysmic event. <laughs> it's about to overflow. And we're going to be stuck in here with sewage all over the floor. Quick, what did the ingenious criminals do? <laughs> the cellmate, they flushed the cellmate <laughs> what he said was, one of us needs to stick his hand in the crap to let the water through. And you're the closest, dog. <laughs> you're the, the closest? Like in an 8 by 10 foot room, you're, you're, you're 9 inches closer. Hey, you're closer, man. I'm, I'm 11 inches further this way. <laughs> I, I don't well, make the walls of prison. Was, Reach your hand in there. <laughs> I, was, I was a few inches closer. So I grabbed. It was too late to do anything. I grabbed. I grabbed the sandwich bag and I put it on my hand and I said, I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I plunged my hand oh. into the mound and the mound sucked the bag off my hand. <laughs> <laughs> and, up, <laughs> and, up, and up to my elbow in oh. sewage. I dug. This is until, oh. the, until the water level sank. I, I'll never forget it. There was even like pieces of grapefruit peel mixed with the shit and everything. <laughs> and then, 
And then, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's not gloss over that. Did some mongrel in the prison? He was eating. Not know how to properly peel a grapefruit in the. <laughs> just some guy down there in the common area, like, man, this fruit sucks. Like, just so, take a big bite. Some as, rind. as an as an aside to this story, though. Um, Sheriff Joe Pyro prided himself on feeding us the moldy food. I think we discussed it last time. Yeah, mm. he was he was making news headlines for cleaning up grapefruits from rat infested neighborhoods. So that that had been our breakfast fruit day after day had been these grapefruits from the rat infested neighborhoods. Jesus Christ! Now we've got no trash can, so at the inception of the water problem, we'd been throwing grapefruit peel down the toilet. And that that had formed a base over the crap that had, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm thinking through all this, and the water did go down. My cellmate's like, I owe you one, dog. I'm like, it's your turn next time. You owe me but, five or seven. But things. the yeah. combination sink water had not come back on. Oh, no. So I could not wash my arm. Oh. I sat on a stool till a guard let us out for showers Hours later, just fucking caked in crap. Yeah, and most of it wasn't even so your crap. They chose you. you were <laughs> it was a blend. That doesn't it was a blend. seem like a fair system. Like, were you the lowest seniority in this? Like, was there something aside from your closest to the toilet? No, honestly, I just acting fast. Yeah, we just okay. have to do it right yeah. away. Yeah, no. It's funny you mentioned that. Shit done. Uh, it's funny you mentioned that, like reaching in elbow deep because i can really picture it because i rewatched the original jurassic park for the first time last <laughs> night since i was like since i was a child and when the lady's had trying to discover glove. why the triceratops is sick and she's reaching in except that was like an herbivore shit herbivore shit isn't half as gross isn't a quarter as gross as carnivore shit like it's it, like you like you know kyle you grew up around a bunch of cows Cow shit is still disgusting, but there is something about like if you saw a pile of cow shit in a pile of human shit and you had to clean one of them up, I'd, I'd clean. I'd be like, yeah, I'll take this in the next ten cow. I'll pies say this. the human if, shit. If you step in cow shit, you're like, oh dang, glad I wore my boots. If you step in human <laughs> shit, you're like, yeah. the fuck. Oh shit here! Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I uh, cow it's, shit's mostly gonna come off in the grass on its own because it's largely grass. Yeah. <laughs> I interviewed a prison guard. Let me just tell you a little aside story on this. So in England, they got this thing called dirty protests, and they call shit slingers in America. I don't know if we went over all the shit slinger stories last time, but I've got a lot of shit slinger stories. I'm sure. So I'm um, including uh, the Rambo of the shit slingers was this guy called Magnum. He was. He, he, mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Well, we, we could get to that. But I interviewed a prison guard on my True Crime podcast, and they said they, they, you know, they were doing dirty protests day after day. They smeared shit all over the cell walls and everything, and they figured out a way to stop it. And the way to stop it was when they let these guys go out for recreation, instead of putting them back in their own cells, they put them in each other's cells, so they had to smell each other's oh. shit that had been caked on the walls, oh. and it stopped. That stopped the process quite quickly. That's a high oh, wow. IQ solution. Yeah, that's a very good because, like, you get let back into your own shitty room, and you're like, "Yeah, we're protesting," but they're like, "No, you're in room two B," and it's like, "Oh, well, I understand Josh is also protesting, but this is disgusting." <laughs> like, yeah, oh, what is Josh that, eating? Um... How is Josh eating the same mandatory meals as me? How's he making this into that cauldron of a body? <laughs> Reminds me of Neil Samworth. That, that. Oh, that's so awful. Yeah. It would be terrible. Oh. I, I so go. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Go ahead. The, the dirty protest. All right. Yeah. So so my writing started in the Maximum Security Madison Street Jail. It was at the tail end of that 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 visit. And I did write a blog entry, was my final blog entry from the jail. And this one really did capture the hell on earth fucking nature of that place. I'd love no to hear joke. it, yeah. All right, so <clears throat> 13th of July, 2004. A sudden space of tragedies has compelled me to write this entry. At the weekend, two inmates on my floor attempted to commit suicide. One threw himself off the balcony and survived. The other was discovered trying to hang himself. Sadder still, an inmate housed in a medium security pod was found dead in the shower. Inmates are often smashed in the shower area because it is out of view of the cameras. The jail has refused to release the cause of his death. The temperature outside is 114 degrees Fahrenheit. 
The trickle of er into our cells feels like hot air blowing from a hairdryer. We are soaked in sweat all day and night. It is difficult to write on this sweat moistened paper. The majority now have skin infections and rashes, which persistently itch. My skin is so soggy from perspiration that when I scratch it, the skin detaches and I end up with clumps of it under my fingernails. Between the, between the sweat trickling down my body and the cockroaches tickling my limbs, it is impossible to sleep properly. Last night, while sleeping on my side, my ear filled up with sweat. And when I moved my head, the sweat spilled onto my face. I woke up startled, feeling like someone was touching my cheek. I once asked a, a guard how the GL's administration got away with this, and he just wants us, the world has no idea what goes on in here. When I was a small child, I imagined hell consisted of caves in which the damned were trapped, tortured, and burnt. I imagined serpents and indescribable creepy crawlies tormenting the captives. I never imagined man's nature could be so hateful as to recreate these conditions on Earth. Yeah, oh. that, was, that was what it was like back then, I, as, I doc, as I documented it in real time. I didn't even know your ear could fill up with sweat yeah like like just like water like just like you got out of the pool and you kept your head like that on purpose and then it just rolled over your that's disgusting well that yeah. sounds just awful i'm i'm uncomfortable listening to it yeah i can't that, that's so horrible. everybody the majority have skin infections now like oh it looked like, that, a spill, it looked like a spilled battery acid on my leg at one point really like it was just like burning constantly just like open sores oh and they just don't really, and they just don't give a shit. Like, there's no well, sense of urgency, or I mean, and the, I'm sure there's like an offsetting of responsibility, right? Like, the guards are like, oh, "I'm not in charge of any of this. I don't really care. That's the management. I'm just walking around." And then the management is like, "Oh, well, they're all scumbag rapists, murderers. Who cares? They can be sweaty." So when when I was moved over to maximum security, I did end up with a crystal meth chemist as a cellmate, and he was really good. He had my back, and he helped me with the Aryan Brotherhood who had problems with me uh, teaching the Mexicans. And he also taught me how to play the system. He said, if you put in a request for medical on one form, you got to beg it from the guard, get him to sign all this shit. It's rigmarole. If you only put in one form, it's like a lottery ticket. You got to put forms in every single day. Yeah. So I started putting forms in every single day about my bed sores and shit. And I did manage to get to see um, I got taken out to, to medical and got to saw a doctor, probably banned from public practice. Were, were you having there. like uh, the rest of your friends, fellow cellmates at the time, like, hey, we're all doing this? Or was it just you were just submitting a bunch? Or did you get everybody I was, to I was, submit? I was asking them to get forms from the guards for me so I could submit more myself. Oh, okay. So I go to this this doctor and, he, you know, I had bleeding bed sores on my buttocks. So he told me to drop my black and white striped trousers and my pink boxer shorts and, and bend over and he's looking at these bed sores and he did give me antifungal ointment to take back to my cell mm. so i'm putting this antifungal ointment on on um my bed sores this is months later now when i was in a cell i think on my own and a guy appeared at my window you know i'm, I'm half naked this guy looks through the window and, and he disappears and um I got a love letter shoved under my door a few <laughs> oh, hours no. later, commenting really? on my commenting on my hurry ass and proposing we have a gay prison marriage. And in fact, his exact words were, "I'm looking forward to shampooing your hurry ass on our honeymoon in San Francisco." Oh, <laughs> this, that's this uh, that's that's so sweet. He's a bit of a romantic. I like this guy. Now, I know it wasn't guy. what you were looking for, but you didn't say this is a man with bad eyesight. Cosine. Is, right? Yeah, I, I got to ask, was he, was he cute? All right. This this is now my introduction to Frankie. Frankie was a Mexican mafia hitman. He showed me his paperwork, $50,000. It was his fee for murder for hire. He was in for conspiracy for murder. And um, he was he was genuinely bisexual. But he was a chess champ, and he'd heard about my chess playing skills. So he had come to my window yeah. that day to challenge me to chess. <laughs> he saw me with my trousers down, bent over, putting the antifungal ointment on the bleeding bed sores on my behind. And he said it was love at first sight. <laughs> so I, I, I don't know. I, Does anyone else I feel like we have to see the behind to know? Frankie, <laughs> Frank, Frankie seems pretty nice so far. 
Oh, yeah. he, he did. He had my back. Not, not my backside. He had oh, my back. no. <laughs> for, for many uh, situations. Uh, being good. Yeah. And, he, you know, he was coming on to me throughout um, many months that I, he was housed yes. in there as I was housed. True. <laughs> and, um, A little piece of you flattered? My, yeah, you know, if you go to a gay bar and the fellas come up to you and you know, you, you do feel a bit flattered. Sure. I'm sure. not, you know, there's so many homophobic people out there and it's all nonsense, isn't it? People should just get along with everybody. And um, he wanted me to do naked yoga for him. He wanted me to play strip chess and all not, this not, shit. Not with him, for him. <laughs> <laughs> so, he, he, so you were going to be doing yoga alone to no tape in a cell for him. Um, he just wanted to bang his bishop while watching. <laughs> like, is it, did you say he was a chess grandmaster and now he wants to play probably strip Probably not chess? a grandmaster. He, he was, <laughs> there's a lot of guys in prison who become chess champions, but they have no way to measure it really. But put it this way, you know, I, I was in a chess club when I was a kid. I was beating the adults, and I, it, it re, my chess thing rekindled in in, in jail. And I, I was the champion up until that point, and Frankie kicked my fucking ass. And my parents had to send chess books in so that I, I could keep up with him. And every now and then, I did <laughs> overtake him with the chess books. But then he'd, he'd you know, he'd, fo he'd formulate new strategies and he'd start winning again. I had to get more chess books sent in. That's fun. Well, I've got I've got a funny story about him, right? From Supermax. Mm -hmm. So in Supermax, you very rarely get out your cell. So they pass things through fishing lines. Mm -hmm. Now, a fishing line is, you know, a strip of sheet or cloth or cotton or whatever. You put a weight on it like toothpaste and That's you throw it under your door. And you even got people throwing them from the upper tier down to the bottom tier. They you connect your end with their end, tie them together. And you can pass whatever you want from cell to cell. <laughs> and I remember, so I remember from, from the upper to the bottom. You mean you just slide it so hard under the door that it like goes over the the railing or the side? Yeah, it goes okay. goes off over the run where people can walk across. It goes under the door, over where people walk across, off the railing, and down to the bottom tier to the floor. And I remember one time looking out my window, looking out at, at the at the area outside, and it, it was like poltergeist. You could see like a bag of this was moving this way. And an envelope was moving this way. A peanut butter was going this way. But anyway, Frankie, the frisky fella he was, he got someone to hold on to one end. He tied the other end around his dick. And the person in the other cell was giving it that. Yep. Man. All right, all right. Wait, wait, wait. We made fun <laughs> Of the ingenuity of the, the, the Bobby earlier, Fisher now I'm prison. On board. Yeah, yeah. now, now, like this is ingenious. All man. right, so, so here's the tricking question. another <laughs> prisoner into jacking you off is one of the funniest things I've ever. Heard. <laughs> that's that's really really good. That's what that's did you tell idea. him? He was operating some sort of very complex tattoo gun. Yeah, faster, faster. faster. Coming out real good. Stop! It's too sensitive. <laughs> 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 but yes, I, I made friends. I made friends with a guy who was on the cleanup crew for the shit slingers. So the shit slingers are in supermax. They're housed in a certain area. I picture the slit sh the shit slingers as having matching <laughs> jackets. I, I know they don't, but I picture them having matching jackets. Let's say, let's say SS, except it's very Nazi esque. But they say it's for shit slingers. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I, I see what you're everyone in the whole prison match carry on <laughs> so a basic shit slinging might be then you know you just get get some crap or some piss throw it on a guard for an enemy or if you want to be a bit more um productive you could like get a chicken bone put some crap on it make a blowpipe and dart the person going past your cell and bear in mind that you know there's a lot of hepatitis in prison uh -huh. and if you want to be more devious, you can like let the shit and piss sit for days until mold grows on it and it, it, it's more toxic. But the Magnum, I'm sorry, the Rambo of the shit slingers was a guy called Magnum and he was really harassing the guards, getting them constantly. So shampoo <laughs> bottle, tube, he had a bazooka basically where he could spray shit. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so he would he would like stomp on it and it would spray shit everywhere. <laughs> yeah, this whole cell it not worth it. Yeah, this whole cell rigged up. This whole cell rigged up with shit. Dude, Ma- Magnum's even cooler than fucking T Bone. But did <laughs> what, what? What was like? I'm curious. What is like the the feel towards Magnum from the other prisoners when he does stuff like that? Are they like, you get a Magnum? That's hilarious. Or is it like, stay away from that guy? He's gross. All right, because I was I wasn't housed on the ship Slinger Row. I only got these stories from the cleanup crew guy. Okay. So I don't know, you know, how um, applauded he was by the, the people he was housed with. Okay, but the guards were having none of it. So they went in his cell. They took all of his appliances, they got him completely naked, and they handcuffed him behind his back, like cuffs, you know, ankle cuffs, belly cuffs, hands, everything, completely naked, and put him in a dry cell where he had nothing whatsoever. Now, in this dry cell, there's just like a hole in the middle of the cell which like where piss can go down, Mm -hmm. but there's nothing else in the cell. But they underestimated. <laughs> Did he fill his mouth? Tell me he filled his mouth. <laughs> they underestimated his resolve. Yeah, his resolve. <laughs> so at head height is a uh, an area where the guards can open and look in on him every you know 20, 30 minutes, security walk, got to check on him. So Magnum crapped on the floor of the dry cell, turned his body around so he could mouth it. And then raised his head to head height, waiting for the next guard to do a security walk while his saliva is <laughs> blending into He's the brewing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I have the ingenuity to be a shit slinger. All right. I this call is, it. This so, is fucking disgusting. So, <laughs> the guards have a protective visor, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the guard's head pops up at the door, slot opens, Magnum's face, Magnum's <laughs> mental, mental face. He's right there. If the guard sees this. <laughs> coming at him. The guard gets so freaked out and shocked and scared, he puts his head back like that. Oh. To, and it goes up his up inside the visa, up his nose and in his eyes. Oh. oh. And he probably got hep out of it. Well, yep, yeah, that's the gamble. <laughs> yep, yep. So that was that's Magnum. brutal. I mean, stomping on the, the shampoo bottle with the straw in it, though, as a See, form the, of Here's the problem with that, though. Great. Here's the problem with Genius. that. I can just imagine someone going to the warden and being like, do you know that they're so sweaty down there, their skin is almost coming off of them? Do you know... That one of them shat on the floor the other day, <laughs> mouthed it, and then waited half an hour for a guard to pass so that he could spit it into his eyes. No, no, I didn't. Not, I did not know that warden. I, I, I'm so sorry for wasting your time here today. <laughs> and, and, and like the way I have some say, moldy bread, I'd like to donate. <laughs> the, the way you say, like the way you say, he mouthed it really undersells the way that he was big i'll say he was it he was beginning to eat his shit <laughs> there's no way there was zero drippage in the back of the throat as he's standing there for how long do you think 20 30 40 50 an hour? Been, I, re- yeah, I, re- I reckon uh, you know it could have been up to like 20 20 25 minutes max <laughs> yeah. standing there with a mouthful of shit how many times as you're standing there in prison in the middle of the room hole cell with a mouthful of shit before you're like when did when did my life go off the rails <laughs> like when did it become unsalvageable that now my main thing is building up a reputation as the guy who's willing to semi swallow the, the most nasty things so he can get a glancing blow <laughs> off of a guy who just wants to go home and like play madden some of these people are gone <laughs> they they're completely gone they're serving forever they're mentally gone and they've got nothing to lose and they just don't give a fuck they need it to makes give sense. that guy a deck of cards or something so that he'll stop pooping on them. What what was his main lately like, he's protesting, I suppose. That's why he is doing these horrible things. What is he protesting specifically? Or is it just the prison conditions in general? The cleanup crew guy just said to me that the shit slingers are just people who are crazy, oh. deserving life sentences, 
and you know some of them are just sat in there all day all day just playing with their own poo i, I love oh. how they're, they're i love how you you okay. phrase it like they're like their own like kind of ancillary clan in this mad max world where yeah, like the aryan exactly. we're like the exactly. aryans the, the aryans and the uh 13 or whatever the the uh, hispanic gang is like they are aware of the shit slingers they know of them but they don't deal with them in any way and so like if there were some sort of hero to come into this world and save things one of the first <laughs> thing he would do is he would go we need to talk to the shit slingers and then they would overcome their irreconcilable differences and be like fine you can still spit shit at people but you have to do it my rules <laughs> and and then they would they would fight back against the powers that be yeah zach remove the last few seconds of audio i'm gonna reach out to netflix <laughs> <laughs> who are uh, you again no i'm telling you it's a good idea it's a good <laughs> okay uh, the, 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 two million the dollars an episode <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the shit slingers are a law unto themselves yeah That's they're like they're in uh Supermax. in in 300 do you remember the immortals yes who kind of played for the persians but like it was also like and the three and the immortals fighting for the persians but mostly for themselves like that kind of shit like that's what they're like the ultimate the ultimate warriors who will glom on to any sort of cause as long as they can spit shit at people who are the yeah. the golden knights is that who it was in uh, game of thrones they're like the golden army they were Gold, the golden knights are the vegas hockey team the gold oh golden army that's uh that's the lannisters right they're, no, so in in Game of Thrones, there was like this army they were going to hire that was going to make this really big difference. The Golden Company, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, they they spent like a season and a half talking about the finance related to the Golden Company, and they folded like a house of cards, something yeah. that folds easily. And uh, it, it was <laughs> yet another like season eight ism. Like, oh, I see, yeah, they all for a good fifteen seconds. Every uh, yeah, that was funny. Like seasons five, six, and seven, they're like the gold company's coming to assist, and then it's like <laughs> no explanation. Some guy like, well, unfortunately, Gold Coast, you know, five hundred one C four folded due to insolvency, and it's like, <laughs> well, fuck, man, we were hoping something would happen here. We, we saw them, we met them. They just had, they just sucked. I don't know. Yeah, sucked. there were like eleven of them. What are you gonna do? <laughs> Who gives? How much money can you demand? You're eating, <sighs> you're eating hard bread. Like <laughs> I don't know. So what is a? I guess. What is a conspiracy or esoteric thing you've looked into? Kind of a two-part question. One that you went into thinking it was total bullshit and maybe you got flipped a little bit. And then maybe another you went into kind of convinced and then you unconvinced yourself through the research. Or if either one's right. better, just go. So when I was incarcerated and I was reading books and stuff and prisoners would come up to me. This is back in like, you know, almost 20 years ago now. Prisoners would come up to me and say, you know, you didn't get away with your ecstasy trafficking because you never paid off the cops and the politicians and don't you know the CIA brings the coke in. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, you know, these guys are just disgruntled because they're in here and making this stuff up. And now I've written a whole war on drugs series of books documenting <laughs> everything I was told. I wrote America Made about Barry Seal, the pilot that was bringing the coke into Arkansas for George H.W. Bush. And Bill Clinton was providing the state security, the state troopers. And because Clinton played ball with the CIA, he got awarded the White House. And back then, Clinton's brother, Roger, got busted buying Coke for Bill. And he got busted on the video saying to the undercover cop, my brother's got a nose like a vacuum cleaner. So <laughs> I, you, I can't don't argue, you can't argue that conspiracy is not true anymore. Yeah, that, that the... The Clintons and the CIA, I guess. When was this? When was this period? Because I know. When they, so George H. Bush, Oliver North, Felix Rodriguez, these were the CIA guys. They were bringing the coke in. Barry Seal was flying the weapons down to Nicaragua. And then they were bringing the coke back in to Arkansas. And it was all going very well until two young boys were found dead on the railway tracks who had stumbled upon the operation. They'd been executed, laid side by side on the railway tracks. And it was made to look like the train had run over them. And one of the dads worked on the train tracks and he knew that was impossible. The fact that the blood was not fresh was a heads up to the emergency service that arrived on the scene. But what did the Clintons do? They brought in 
what's his name? Fami Malik, the coroner, a coroner who helped Bill's mum get out of a situation. And Fami Malik's verdict was the boys had smoked so much weed, they'd gone into a psychosis uh -huh. and laid side by side on the railway tracks and the train had run over them. And to this day, Linda Ives, the mum of one of them, is still campaigning for justice for her kid. She's confronted Bill Clinton. He's blown her off over the years. And my book, Clinton, Bush, and CIA Conspiracies, it's the stories of four people whose lives weave together, and they include Linda Ives, Gary Webb, and Kiki Camarena, um, the guy who, who, who narcos Mexico is about. Mm. Oh, yeah. Wait, isn't he the guy who was tortured to death horribly? Yes. But well, I knew a pilot for the Sinaloa cartel who was involved in things back then. He was an American guy, and he worked both sides. He's dead now. That's the only reason I'm authorized to tell these stories, because he died a few years ago. He said, don't ever say any, any of this stuff while I'm alive. And he told me that he did work for both sides. He worked for the cartel, and he worked for the feds. And when he, he never murdered anyone when he was working for the cartel. He only murdered people when he was working for the U.S. government. And he, he explains to me how it all worked. So from the very beginning, you know, where the prisoners were telling me that this conspiracy exists and I wasn't believing them. Mm -hmm. Now I'm speaking to an actual cartel pilot who knew all about the CIA and the deals the cartels have with the U.S. Mm -hmm. government and the weapons they buy in exchange. So, you, so here's how it's set mm -hmm. up. You'll have one cartel, for example, El Chapo, who's working with the Mexican government. And they're buying all these weapons from America to fight the war on drugs. But those weapons are applied to the rival cartels. So the Mexican government can say, yeah, America, we're fighting the war on drugs. Look at all these, these raids we're making. But they're wiping out El Chapo's enemy. But it gets to the point where El Chapo gets so powerful, the government has to hand him over to America. So the cartel leaders are fall guys. Most of that money from the cocaine sales ends up permanently in the hands of the Mexican government, the heads of the army, the heads of the police. It doesn't matter who they arrest, Chapo, Escobar, Cali, these guys just come and go. They are the bogeymen in the war on drugs. Most mm -hmm. of the money is going to the biggest mafia in the world, which is the politicians. And I, from the early parts of the, the Mexican cartel in the 80s, the, the president of Mexico, he retired to a castle in Ireland with half a billion net worth, which could not be explained the source of, and I believe that that's where he lives to this day. I mean, if you want to really if you, nice, if you're trying yeah. to escape as a former Mexican drug lord, a castle in Ireland is like the furthest away you could get. So what I you're feel. saying is this guy's dope as fuck. Is that the the core? Taylor, of that his fucking <laughs> castle's <laughs> awesome. Taylor, Taylor, when when an investigator shows up at his castle, what's the accent he used to uses to convince them he's a good old local Irish boy? Used to run drugs. He's like to the witcher. <laughs> Jump a coin to which he just does that. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to, you know, uh, uh, just enjoy, you know, uh, I don't know the color green. <laughs> what the fuck is going on here? Uh, the cheese is that a thing? Like <laughs> the cheese? <laughs> that is insane. So, and, and it's easy, like I know, because I like the the HW stuff is wild. It's easy to just forget because, like, when someone becomes president, it's like you think of them like, oh, that was that president. And you don't think about like that leading up to it. Like HW was like an absolute garbage piece of shit head of the CIA for a long time, like actively taking place and destabilizing South American governments, moving coke. He cre he helped create, I think. Like he was, I think, a head of the CIA when they began that like fucking over black people with crack in inner city areas. Or maybe it was the guy before him. But like you, you, Clinton, you Clinton and him ramped it. Clinton and him ramped it up. And he, he, George H.W. Bush was asked at a dinner, a private dinner, how, you know, how on earth can you be running this war on drugs while bringing the drugs in? How can you get away with that? And Bush's answer was, it's so far removed from the possibilities of what may be happening in the Americans' minds, no one would ever believe it were possible. Yeah, yeah, like if you told someone, like, oh, the U.S. is, is assisting the cartels and moving drugs because it's financially beneficial to them. You'd be like, no, nah. <laughs> and, then, and then, and then like, that would be it. They, oh, that guy's a kooky conspiracy theorist. He seems to think that these giant multi-billion dollar international businesses have shady shit going on.
Yeah, and Clinton. These illegal like businesses. A, <laughs> and Clinton, like I said, who his brother got busted buying coke for him, uh, he ended up locking a record amount of non-violent drug users, including women, hundreds of thousands of them, to pr- fill the private prisons. So the hypocrisy is absolutely staggering. I, wow. At the time, there was this like culture war against these, uh, what they call them, super predators or something like that. And uh, the idea yeah, was Yeah, remember that, the, the, the Clinton? That's the Hillary Hil- it was Hillary, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the there was this thought process that like people were going to prison, learning how to be very good prisoners, teaching each other, lifting weights, <laughs> and they were coming out like jacked and scarier and better trained and becoming better prisoners. And that's three strikes you're out kind of got employed and um and being tough on crime was a very politically popular position to take and all of america mm-hmm. was lined up i was lined up i think i was wrong but that's what i believed at the time yeah yeah because it, it well it's easy to get most of the population lined up on stuff like when you look back and you realize stuff who's like that it's like or crime what do yeah Crime. This is, Who is, this is who's, for, the who's for child pornography? No one's for that, but they use it to launder no censorship. One. They they well, people people who consume it aren't against it, but like they they launder in internet bills in the modern day where oh you don't you don't want to be tracked with your real name and shit. Well, you must want pedophiles to win. And it's like, well, no, just because you can't you can't vote against the Child Online Protection Act without seeming like a monster, even if that act has a bunch of shit in there that's about tracking people, you know? Yeah. So they can always launder what they want through the media. Yeah, and the media was showing you know all these these crack uh, monsters and crack babies, and also you know they portray that prisoners are just pedophiles, rapists, serial killers. But when I got there, I saw the average arrest was a young person with a bit of weed getting like a two to five year sentence. And mm-hmm. if you look at the stats. Wow. At the peak of the war on drugs, the highest arrest category was weed possession, almost a million arrests a year. Crazy. They go in as potheads, they become heroin addicts, they become Nazis, they've got criminal records, they don't stand a chance, their lives are ruined, they give them $50 on the door, they say have a nice day when they're getting released, and they come right back. As soon as they come back, $60,000 of taxpayers' money to the prison and, yeah. by design. A regular person of the public, I'm talking about me at that time, felt like they were in there for armed robbery. They were in there for mugging. They were in there for like, I don't know, beating up nice people yeah. who Violence. didn't do anything. <clears throat> because that's what the news, like I remember like, it, the news isn't like this anymore. But I remember growing up, the news being a lot about like the eight crimes that happened tonight. Are you like, kidding? Like, that's exactly what the news is now. Oh, well, to I me, watch, it's about politics. Maybe I, I guess I watch C- I think what it is, is I watch cable news instead of local news now. But growing up, we had local news. We uh-huh. I didn't have CNN growing up. I think we had the channel, but nobody knew how to dial it in. So, so we watched <laughs> four, seven, and thirteen, and twenty-one, or whatever our local stations were, and you'd hear about the crimes of the night. And so, like those were the people you thought of when you thought criminal. You thought the guy wearing a mask who's going to beat you up at night and rob you or break into your house or, or rape or mm, murder. Yeah, bad yeah. boys, bad boys. What are you going to do? Dude, what are you going to do when yeah, they come? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, the you imagine the most yeah. intense, heartless killers. Will Smith led me wrong. I watched that movie and I took it to be a historical documentary. <laughs> and, and that is not how Damn. law is enforced. <laughs> R.I.P. Mar- Wait, who else was in that? Martin Lawrence? Martin Lawrence. He's still alive. Yeah. Oh, he's not alive? His career, though. Oh, <laughs> well, you know what, him. everyone? Th- let's all thank God that Martin Lawrence is still with us. He's not looking great. Okay, well, let's let's give a little thanks to God. Then. And, and, you know, usually when they do one of those like movies where like your buddy who's a star, like does the sequel, so you mm-hmm. know, get in shape at least. He's not in shape. Oh, he wasn't in shape in Bad Boys 2, you mean? Three, I think they just did. I think they did three. like Batter Boys. They just made Bad Boys 3. Something Man, like striking that, yeah. while the iron is hot yeah. <laughs> with, with that. I, I do. Do most people in their 20s even know what Bad Boys is? I, I don't know if they do or not. I think the song is so like catchy that like it like they know because they know who like Elvis is. But they is, know but... the Bad Boys, Bad Boys. Like they know that song, I would say almost Yeah. Like they don't when they hear that song, they don't do what you do. They don't think, "Oh, Will Smith in that yeah. mediocre movie." I thought the first one was good. I heard yeah. the second one was didn't good and more like violent aggressive than you'd guess yeah they had uh, i like joe pantaleone in, in anything you know the, the guy from the matrix that with the shaved head oh the, I, I like ralphie him. and the sopranos i like sean him. uh sean when you're not when you're not exploring all this stuff what are your kind of hobbies what, what are the yeah. shows you enjoy yeah because we bullshit because we bullshit about fake things 
That's so, that's what my core competency is. I've just yeah. finished. I've just finished uh, the Witcher stuff, and I'm on season too, man. season four of Ozark. Yes. Mm, yeah. Oh, we're yeah. watching the same shit. I just uh, last night I I watched. I'm up to through episode five. I got six and yeah. seven left in that first half. That is the best show on TV. I have the to definitely, uh, definitely. I haven't gotten to it yet. I, I I've been watching that that uh, that silly superhero show on HBO. Uh, uh, peacemaker and uh, or is it peacekeeper now i can't remember but it's funny it's great i mean they suggest it right when you open the app so i wrote so down peacemaker that's what you called it before yeah yeah uh, but, uh, it's, it's really good i i wa- the newest episode came out uh today it comes out every thursday so i've been like watching as it go but i have i haven't picked up ozark yet i was disappointed to hear that they're only releasing like half the season because uh, one of the benefits mm-hmm. of like Ozark is that it's on HBO and they don't do that nonsense that everyone else does. They, they Netflix. give it to me. Give yeah. me everything. Dick I want teases. to eat it all now. Don't you fucking divvy it out to me an episode at a time or three or four at a time. Yeah. Don't you decide how, how hungry I am tonight. I want all <laughs> this is America. I want all you can eat. How much yes. Ozark do I want? How much do you have? I want 12 <laughs> out. Yeah, I mean, but like, <laughs> like to speak to your concerns, like I was and I'm I, like I notice when shows drop off, like shows that I enjoy even. I notice when they fall off and they kind of get distant from what eventually made me like them. Ozark has not done that. Like I even went to this season. I'm like, oh, they had a nice big break. Like I hope this was all written beforehand so it's all, you know, above board and not some nonsense they made up. But yeah, it, it's still tremendous. Can I ask like, a it's, question? It's a fantastic I, show. I, I don't Kyle, know. I like that the main character in Ozark, Justin Bateman, what's his name? I don't know. Uh, anyway, he's yeah. competent. I like that he's competent. He's good at his job. He, he's especially like the, the the lead male. I feel like there's this King of Queens, Homer Simpson bullshit. Why is Dad always an idiot? I fucking hate. I'm, I'm it's, done uh, with the trope. I'll that, tell like, you why. It's marketing. You, yeah. You take the white male, you make him an absolute jackass fucknard, and now you have yep. a show. I'm done with that. I like that Jason Bateman is equal to anyone else in this. In and he is like, <clears throat> and it's funny because he's he's not just equal. Like my wife and I both noticed since we watched the show, it's like he is the only one. Like if that whole scenario with, you know, when the cartel and Navarro was like, Marty, I know you're a single man and I need you to launder these billion dollars for me over the next five years. Like if it was just Marty and he was a single bachelor with an Xbox in that house, he'd be like, yeah, no problem. I'll do it in my spare time. And then, and, and, that, and that would have been that would have been genuinely the end of the show. His, his, his like I, I thought in previous seasons, his wife Wendy was becoming all like she began very aggressive and manipulative, and that's that's what makes her interesting. So I wouldn't want to change that. That's why she's interesting. She's very good at playing those interpersonal situations. But she's she also, more ruthless than Mrs. Snell, isn't she? Oh my God, she's she's like surpassed. Uh, Jolene or whatever a uh, Snell in, in, in her ruthlessness, but she like it's gotten to the point in this fourth season where it's like she she's ruthlessly evil. She like needs that. to be stopped. Good. Wendy so- needs to be stopped because it's still the same thing of Marty, like Wendy trying to be like, I'm gonna fucking kill the Snells, and Marty being like, that doesn't seem like a prudent move right now. Let's calm down. Let's have dinner and like like just doing his thing and. Marty is my favorite character. I find, and and the son, the son. You, you'll see this when you start watching this season, Kyle. The son becomes a much bigger part of it. Uh, I want to talk about son, the daughter. Very, actually, the, I, the 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 most attractive member of the family. How, when was this filmed, and how old is she in real life? Dude, that's I keep getting distracted because they say like the 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 boy is supposed to be fourteen in this season, which is hilarious because he hit like multiple growth spurts throughout the pandemic, and he looks eighteen. And the girl is supposed to be like sixteen or something, and she looks like she's in her mid twenties. I'm not ripping on her or anything, but when I see her, I'm not like, oh, how's this girl gonna pass her SATs? SATs, not the test you take in Missouri. It's the ACTs here. You know, come on, guys, let's, let's do your research. But because uh, they're in the Ozarks, they're in Missouri. Oh, they, they said would, that they would the take. Show. They yeah, they say like the you got to get your SATs, and it's like no, it's ACT in Missouri. Oh, uh, and they're and they're drinking Miller Light in one of the scenes. You can't <laughs> you can't drive to fifteen stores around me and try and find like a place that has really? more than like one twelve pack. It's it's St. Louis. It's all Bud Light here. 
There's like Coors and Miller barely has a place in the stores here. Your criticisms of Ozark are shit. <laughs> they are. They are shit. But I also, I'm saying, I am also. The show is called Ozark. It, it, look, if you're gonna name your show Atlanta <laughs> and everybody's in there like drinking a non-regional Pepsi. beer, it may, I could see it. I guess. Like if they oh, like, yeah, that would work. If, if yeah. they like That's Kyle, right. literally the same thing. The largest soda producer, the largest beer producer. If they had a show called Atlanta and they were all drinking Pepsi, that would distract you. You'd be like, this is not Pepsi Land. You would know that Pepsi paid out because, like, there's no way. Yeah, Miller Lite yeah. paid out. That's why that happened. That's why they show the guy walking in with like the full <laughs> brand on display. Like, oh, us oh. just gonna enjoy some Miller Lite. I do like that. It's always Sunny does that because they'll even have like the blue bottles of Coors. Like, like, <laughs> oh, it's, God, it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, remember, like in there. Remember in there, uh, yeah, right, boys. In, in there, <laughs> I don't know if you. I don't know if you guys remember this. Like many, many years ago. Like probably 15 years ago, uh, Coors used to have a campaign where it was like, when the ice, when the beer's cold, the mountains are as yeah. you know, blue as the Rockies. And so like your cold Coors, like if it was a warm bottle of aluminum Coors or can, the, the mountains would be white. And when it gets oh. cold, it turned blue. And so they're like, when the mountains turn blue, you know, your beer's ready to drink. <laughs> and and Sonny made a huge deal about that in like 2006, like season two. They're like, I want a beer. No, not that one. The mountains aren't even blue yet. How do I know it's cold enough to drink? <laughs> Give me the coldest beer. Where are the bluest mountains? Like, the, the, the. But then Coors must have noticed because they sponsored it for like years and years. And you saw them drinking Coors all the time with the blue mountains on the bottles. I, I didn't even know if they were sponsored. I thought they were almost like, I ironically. still wouldn't be surprised if they were doing it ironically. I don't know what the biggest beer in Philly is. You know, it, it do, does the Northwest have like a, like a macro brew like that. Like the Midwest has all Anheuser Busch. I guess the whole world has Anheuser Busch, but then there's Don't Coors in the Rockies, isn't Miller. Sam and... Adams? Isn't Sam Adams popular up there? That's where they make it. I know. I know the commercials lead Sam me to Adams believe it's popular. Northeast. That, that could be it. Sam Adams is a pretty big name. Yeah. It is Northeast. He, Taylor said the words Northwest. Oh, I heard Northeast. Oh, no, I was I, saying like Northwest is more Coors because that's. Uh, oh, well, maybe I didn't follow properly. Maybe it's me. I couldn't have either. I'm very high. <laughs> On the subject of beer and cider, my best friend from childhood, Wild Man, died just over a year ago. He was the co-host on my podcast. He got really popular. It was trending on Twitter, RIP Wild Man. So RIP Wild Man, thank you for all the people who, who've sent messages of love and support. But I lost Wild Man, but I gained a friend from 20 years ago. He, he tracked me down. He saw, I think he saw my Nat Geo documentary. They've just done another one as well, which I can tell you about later on. But um, this guy, his name's Bruno, and he was an enforcer for Little Italy for the Italians in the jail who served time with me and Wild Man. He was an enforcer when the Italians took over from the Aryan Brotherhood, which I told you about in the last episode mm -hmm. i've interviewed bruno twice on my channel now but he would be a great one to bring on he's like a character out of the sopranos he's fucking classic honestly. oh that sounds that, sounds that would great. be great Kyle yeah, yeah, yeah yeah sure did i did i tell you the full little italy story last time no you didn't remind, remind us did, yeah did yeah. i tell you about wild men throwing the communion at the priest no you did not tell us about the little italy story so i'd love to hear about these these wild Italians. All right. Well, we, I, I told you the, about the um, the race riot, didn't I? You told us about one. I imagine you experienced many. So there was. All right. So there's three stories in a row here that that, that are in chronological order that are quite long. Um, the first one then is a is a pre story to the race riot because this this leads up to the Aryans and Little Italy. So the precursor to the race riot. The race riot was formulated by a guy called Grave Digger who was a cage fighter. He was like six foot seven, six foot eight. It was ridiculous. He had a tattoo of, of the devil as a puppet master. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, the guards, guy, you keep coming out with cooler characters. <laughs> right? He would, he, would, he, would get in, he would get in fights and the guards just liked to watch it. They wouldn't stop him. And he'd get someone down in a wrestling lock and he'd, his arms were like chisels. His elbows were like chisels. It'd just be like he'd have some down in wrestling lock. He'd just be chiseling the fuck out of people's heads, pools of blood just forming around oh. them. Yeah, so 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 grave digger. He he was a formidable character. <laughs> Fortunately for me, when he moved in my building, um, he, he had met Wild Man, and Wild Man gave him a note to pass to me, which which helped me to an extent. 
but even though the Urians were sweating me to bring drugs in through my girlfriend, but yeah. So Gravedigger became our head of the whites in our building because the previous head in the, of the whites got run out by him and his name was Carter. So what was happening was... Carter remember, has no chance for his Gravedigger. No way. Yeah. <laughs> he, had no, he had no chance. He had no chance against SmackDown. So, oh, so, Grave Digger, you got a tough, tough uh, order in front of you. You got to deal with Al and. <laughs> <laughs> so the race riot came about because they tried to run SmackDown out of the building, and they did run him out of the building. But the build up to that was SmackDown was he was the head of the Blacks, and he was bullying people of all races for, from the commissary. Now Carter was the head of the Whites, and when Grave Digger and he, he hadn't been like saying anything to SmackDown because he knew SmackDown would probably fucking twat him. So he'd been quite mild mannered towards him. But as soon as Gravedigger comes in the building <laughs> and now he's with the woods mm. and he's this guy who can, you know, beat anyone up in, in the, in the fucking building, probably Carter starts to grow balls. And we're, we're all at, at chow for breakfast one morning. And Carter starts to say like, you know, you need to stop sweating people, dog, to SmackDown. And SmackDown's like, who are you talking to, fool, like that? Mm -hmm. And Carter's mm -hmm. like, you heard me, you know, you need to stop. And and, Carter, and um, SmackDown's like, you ain't fucking telling me what to do in this motherfucking place. <laughs> and and, and, and get in that cell over there. And Carter, Carter's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> now I've got to fight SmackDown. And he looks at Gravedigger. And Graved is like, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I got you only interpret that. I, I'm the only one who doesn't get it. Did Gravedigger say I have your back, or did Gravedigger say you are in quite the predicament? What just happened there? All right. So in a situation like this, the gang rule is: if someone calls you out from another race, you have to go and fight that person one on one. That mm -hmm. squashes the beef. Gravedigger can't just jump in now. And, and protect Carter or stop the fight or beat up SmackDown oh. because then all the blacks will jump in and all the whites will jump in and then there's a race riot and then the drugs business gets stopped into the prison and the drugs business is the absolute priority of nearly mm. everybody in there. So by having one-on-one -on -one beefs that are squashed and then they shake hands at the end of it, whatever, you know, the, the drug business is not... So Carter and SmackDown mm. have to fight now and Gravedigger can't do a thing about it. Gravedigger doesn't want to do a thing about it because he's about to usurp that power vacuum, right? Exactly. So we're all watching this now. SmackDown just assumes the, the fighter's stance. Carter goes in. He gets knocked around. His heart's not in the fight. He's dancing around, trying to avoid getting hit. You can see he's getting stunned by these mm -hmm. blows. He gets fucking twatted against the head. His head bangs against the fucking steel. And he's like, and he walks out, I'm done, and sits at the table, sits at the table with the whites. And then, then, <laughs> smack, smack down, comes out the cell. And he's like, what the fuck was that? I ain't done with you, white boy. Get your ass in here, you little fucking punk ass bitch. You call someone a punk ass bitch. That is the worst combination of words you could possibly use in that environment. You got to like, defend yourself. Yeah. yeah. So, so Carter's like, he's, he's like panting and puffing at the table, bent over, pink faced. And he's looking at the words. He's like, you know, I'm done. I've had enough. And, and Gravedigger. Gravedigger just fucking stands up. <laughs> 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 All six foot seven of him with the devil tattoo on the top of the <laughs> skulls and all this other shit all over him and he looks at he looks he looks at God and he's like you know man up wood and just starts nodding his head and Carter knows Carter knows if he doesn't go in uh -huh. right there and then grave diggers just gonna grab his skull and knock him out so he goes back in he goes back in fucking repeat of the same situation mm. bouncing around and um, this time he runs out so fast. He like there's a metal grid stirs, 
mm-hmm. over this when you come out the door. He comes out, he runs out so fast, he, he runs into the stairs and bangs his head. <laughs> Thomas knocks himself out, and that's it. That's it. He's rolled up. He's rolled up. Uh, Gravedigger tells him to roll his shit up. All the words to say, roll your shit up, which means... Was Carter a tough guy at all prior to this, or was he just kind of a money man? I'd say he was like a mediocre head of okay, the woods. Okay. Yeah. Not nothing, any... but he can't take out the Yeah, he, he couldn't defend. And so then, like, Gravedigger so immediately... Roll up your stuff, what does that mean? You were about I mean, to these, these are formidable out. fighters. SmackDown's a formidable fighter. Gravedigger. Digger. Carter, Carter probably could have withstood the fight against an average person. Uh-huh. But these were extreme. So if you roll mm. your shit up means you know like you've got to roll your mattress up and you yeah, get all yeah. your bedding around it and whatever your towel, you know, your towel, your underwear, and all that shit. And you gotta get the hell out of that building, you move on to another building. So he he was gone. So what happened next was then you got you got um the guys orchestrate the race riot, excuse me, against um against uh SmackDown. SmackDown gets moved. And then there's a lot. Of, the, the guards then move a lot of people in and move, and move a lot of people out. And all of a sudden, on the end cell on the upper tier, there's these three Italian guys. And we're like, how the fuck have all that, them got in the cell together? And there was Bruno, the guy who just contacted me after 20 years. There was a guy we called Roscoe. So in, in my book, I'm just going to say this as a disclaimer, I've changed the names for legal purposes. Yeah. And people say, because I've said a different name, I'm lying, but which is BS. So the Roscoe was the head of them. And Bruno's just told me now, Roscoe has got two life sentences. He showed me his prison page. He's, Roscoe's now got two life sentences for conspiracy to commit murder. So he was the head of their gang in, in uh, that jail at that point in time. This is Towers Jail, 2002. Sheriff Joe Pye is running this one. And then they had another guy in there called Hugo, who was like their butler. <laughs> He was like squeezing orange juice for him, all this shit. Now, Roscoe had it so good that he was outside with the guards at night smoking, giving them orders. You see the Italian mafia in these movies. You think, is this real? I saw it with my own eyes. It's very real. But that stuff comes later on. So the Italians move in. You've got some Aryan Brotherhood guys in there. And now they've got no leader. Now, when there's a leader required... It's white boy meeting, cell seven, get your ass over there or else you're going to get mm-hmm. smashed. So the woods go from door to door telling every other wood, get in that meeting, white boy meeting, we're going to vote on a new head. Now, the competition, it was Roscoe was one of the white boys running for leadership. And the other one was this skinhead Steve who had um, tattoos of a gas chamber on his, <laughs> on his yeah. He just, has, he has, just fucking mask off Nazi. <laughs> just, just <don't. laughs> he had Hitler, Zeke Heiling on his chest over a gas chamber. Was it well <laughs> done? What, was it people. well done or did it look terrible? Was it like a really detailed Hitler? <laughs> did you see that Hitler and you were like, eh. no, 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 no matter, how, no matter how good was it? I can't remember the proficiency of it, but I'm thinking these are scary motherfuckers when I'm seeing <laughs> these tattoos. These, they, this is for life, you know. You put that shit on your chest. This is for like, these guys are committed. Yeah, are he, that, psych- that guy, like, didn't, that guy didn't like Hitler for a weekend. <laughs> like he, he's, he's he's all in. This wasn't this wasn't a summer infatuation. This was a, a romance. <laughs> Sorry. So so fortunately, Roscoe got voted in over the Aryan guys. And there was an uneasy coexistence between them. But immediately, things started to change. So there became like a circus atmosphere. Like we adopted a young person called Sonny Slope who would do our laundry and he was selling me extra cheeses. If the guards were going to raid the pod, Roscoe knew in advance, so we'd hide all our shit. And then we'd, you know, the guards would come in flash grenades and all this shit and get us strip us naked and spread our ass cheeks and look in our assholes mm-hmm. and trample on our pictures of our girlfriends and have sniffer dogs on our assholes and all this shit. But as soon as th- those guards had gone, the goon squad, Roscoe would have the guards bring us back all clean stuff, all clean bedding and towels and boxes and B stripes. This is how good he had it. Ro- and Roscoe he said, seemed, wait, was he doing that for other people too or just himself? The whole fucking pod, man. 
And then he's a popular then, leader, right? Oh shit! Th- th- this was just the beginning. He comes into my cell, and he says, "He says, Sean, you know, tension to the Aryan brother. I know you got a lot of co-defendants. If I move all your guys in here with you, you know, will you guys work with us? Blah blah blah." I'm like, "Yeah." So next, <laughs> thing, next thing, I've got two co-defendants in my three-man cell with me, and one mm. of them is a guy called Joey Crack. He's dead as well now, Joey Crack. God bless him. He was like a walking drug testing kit wherever he we went. If you want to do a drug deal, he'd just get out a syringe, put it in his fucking neck and be like, yeah, that's good stuff. He was like this feisty New York Italian guy, always talking a million miles an hour. So he started to regale the Italians with stories about wild men. The nightly thing was, you know, they would come to my cell, we'd hang out, We'd all sit around, and Bruno would be like, come on, Joey Crack, tell us another story about Wildman. Because Joey Crack and Wildman, you know, they were hanging out on the outs for a couple of years before all, all, all the SWAT teams came. So literally, literally got very curious about Wildman. They heard all these, these crazy stories. Mm-hmm. So they said, you got to arrange for us to meet him. Now, I would get to meet Wildman at Catholic Mass or Church on the Street because the prosecutor had put a do not house together with me and Wildman because they they were in fear that we would together, you know, I was the brains, he was the brawn. Yeah. We would influence the co-defendants into not cooperating and all that stuff, which which we did anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I lined this up then for them to meet Wildman at um, Catholic Mass. Now bear in mind, Wildman cannot whisper. We always get on the back row of these church <laughs> services, but his his voice is so deep and when he laughs, the whole a whole room will shake because he's so big. Six foot two, hundreds of pounds in weight. He was 29 and a half stone when he died. Was that 400 plus pounds or something? Jesus Christ. The, 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 the cartel guys in Mexico called him El Oso because he was shaped like a bear and because of his butt. He, he fought like a bear, his fighting style. <laughs> so, what? <laughs> his so, fighting but, style, he just can't move differently because of his, his girth. No, that's a style. No, <laughs> so, so um, prior to this arrangement of meeting, Little Italy. I'd gone to a mass. No, it was a church on the street with Wildman. And we were on the back row. He couldn't whisper. He's really loud. And past the wall, he's giving the sermon. And he's like, he stops his sermon, kind of like swerves it and says, it says in the end times, in revelations, there will be scoffers and mockers. And I can hear the scoffers and mockers on the back row. Yes. He starts, he starts walking through you know, towards me and Wellman at the back. And he's like, hallelujah. You know, and he's talking about pur- purging the, the, the scoffers and mockers and he's nodding his head and twitching and looking at Wildman. <laughs> and Wildman's trying to whisper to me and he doesn't give a shit. And he's just talking really loud and, and ignoring him and all this shit. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm setting the table for how Wildman behaves at these religious yeah. services. Now, the Italians are very religious, let's say. Very Catholic, <laughs> yeah. Very Catholic. So, so there's about four, four or five of them, I think, um, come to meet Wildman. And there's Wildman and my crew. There's maybe four or five of us. We've got the back row. We've got the row in front. So I'm sat in the middle. I've got Wildman here. I've got the rest of my crew on the other side. And the Italian straps start to file in on the other side of me. Bruno sits next to me. And he's, like, looking over at Wildman. Yeah, yeah, Wildman. They are such big, powerful guys. They shook hands in front of my body and the force of them shaking hands almost knocked them knocked me out of my seat <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so they're all shooting the shit buzzing you know bruno's buzzing off wild man because these big crazy guys you know they've got that look in their eyes they know you know the damage they can do to people and they're buzzing <laughs> off it uh, roscoe's buzzing hugo you know he, hugo's probably the most devout and he's he's looking over he's he was he was probably the most sensible out of out of the, mm-hmm. the Italian uh, clique. So the, 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 the priest starts to give a sermon, and it's really moving. And you've got the most devout prisoners on the front row. These guys are like sleeved out in Virgin Mary and Jesus. They've got all these religious tats all over them and shit, mm-hmm. crucifixes and everything. So they're taking this service very seriously. The Italians, I'm about to find out, take these things quite seriously. <laughs> <laughs> and the priest, he's saying, and the priest was quite old. He looked like he was about 60 or 70. He says his mum 
is gravely ill. She's in hospital and he's almost in tears and he's asking everyone to pray for her. And this is really moving. I'm moved. The Italians mm-hmm. are moved. The front row are really like, you know, fucking hell. Everyone's taking this really seriously. He goes on and describes about his mom and his relationship with mom. I'm looking over at the Italians and they're crying. They're crying. And wild man's like looking around. Like, <laughs> like what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck's wrong with these people? And he just starts like making weird noises. <laughs> and the guys at the front row with the Jesus and Mary tattoos are looking like, shh, shh, well, shh. <laughs> like, who the fuck do you think you are telling me to shut up? You're all sinners. You think you guys are, you know, you're the first people to snitch people out, you fuckers who pretend to have really all this shit. <laughs> and they're like, they're, give, they're giving up on telling to shut up. And then the Italians looking at me like, well, man, come on, come on, behave yourself. Oh, I'll behave myself. So the priest then he's going row to row with the communion. You don't get to go to the front. He's coming to us. Mm-hmm. He comes to the back row. He's giving everybody the communion. I've got the communion. He goes, well, I'm in the communion. Italians on it. And then he, he he's, he's leaving then with his back away from us to walk to the front of the room. Wild man, at this point, spits out his communion in his hand, puts it over his, his <laughs> eye like it's a pirate's patch. Yeah. <laughs> He then goes, he just raises his arms and his head, and he's got this crazy Vikings beard at this point, and he's had an eyebrow shaved off because he's lost it in a, in a bat. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy just looks like a maniac anyway. Imagine him with one eyebrow gone, a Vikings beard. He's got the, the, the communion patch over his eye, and he just goes, <laughs> <laughs> And the room's shaking because he's so powerful. His belly. <laughs> he goes, <laughs> look at me, everybody. <laughs> and then they're all, the whole room just turns around and looks at him. But the priest is oblivious. He's walking <laughs> to the front. Wild man just grabs the communion. And they, I can see the Italians getting upset. And he, fucking, <laughs> he fucking launches it like a frisbee. <laughs> launches it at the priest who is almost at the front of the room the communion is like going whoosh, 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 almost, <laughs> almost like a fucking flat earth ufo fucking yeah. thing it's almost skimming almost skimming the ceiling it's it's the priest in the back <laughs> <laughs> it was a good shot and it rolls on the floor and hugo you go you fucking start screaming at wild man shaking his <laughs> jumps out of his seat, runs to the front of the room and grabs the communion, hides it before the priest can see it. <laughs> then, no. then after after that service, wild man, he, he's in the corridor, he drops his trousers, he starts mooning the guards, showing them his ass crack. <laughs> he gets taken <laughs> away, fucking cackling and screaming. Did that did that ruin your relationship with the Italians? Because I know no, how seriously no, it Italians take catholicism which is um, twice a year they're very serious yeah bruno um said wild man was just like a big-hearted maniac and that people couldn't you know like the, the ab guys didn't fuck with him the italians didn't fuck with him he, he made his mark and every everybody knew he was with us and if he, you know if, if i'd have gone in though on my own without him heaven help me because he did uh, protect me in, in, in many situations. And just the fact that people knew he was in with us. He's a, he's a good guy to get arrested with, basically. It yeah. sounds like it. Let, let, me just, let me just say then, because, you know, that's very sad about what happened with the priest. And in the next um, mass, the pro had worked. His mom had been released from hospital. He got a standing ovation. And I just wanted to make sure this story had a happy ending. Yep. did have a happy yeah. ending yes. and you know what if if i were in prison i would definitely start going to church like at the very least it would be a different place to be for a while That's I could everybody... see, yeah i could see prisoners doing that we're like you know i'm not sold on this but i get to kind of escape for a bit and think about something else that's where the prisoners share their drugs to the other buildings and also where you get to see your mates if you can't be around your mates now, mm. little Italy, like I said, they had it so good. There was like people doing backflips off the day room tables, and it was like the circus atmosphere. There was this giant hippie who had a diamond uh, stored in his ass, 
in his behind. We called him John the Baptist. There was a guy <laughs> that was the head of the Urian church. And it was the best we ever had it. And then one day, Roscoe just said, fuck it. We're all going to go have a day trip out. And we're like, what do you mean we're going to have a day trip out? We're all going to go to Muslim services. So to get to Muslim <laughs> services, to get to any services, there's a, this is a 45-man pod, right? Mm -hmm. To get to any services, the guard will announce it and say, first 10 at the sliding door. And fights can break out to get to the ship. But Roscoe always had a head, heads up on um, before the announcement came. Mm -hmm. he'd, he'd tell us all to get down there. Church on the street, jumping build. That was amazing because we'd all end up jumping up and down, pogo dancing in that one. So we, we go off to the Muslim services. And white guys like this en masse have never been seen in the Muslim services before. The guard's like, what the fuck's going on? They think there's going to be a riot. So they escorted us to Muslim services and they're watching us. The imam is like, what the fuck is going on? Who are these guys? <laughs> we all sit in there and, 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 and Roscoe explains to them, you know, we're curious. We want to learn, you know, about, about your faith and all this stuff. He's very respectful. And we sat in Muslim services for the whole thing and there was no problems whatsoever and everybody got along fine. That was, Roscoe had this way about him. He, he could fight. But he was—he was—he was a big smiler, and he just had this this lovely way about him. Yeah, the a charismatic situation. guy. He charismatic. That was it. So we get back from Muslim services. There's no problem. Now, after literally, literally got broke up in that building, and we got moved to another building, and the Aryan brother took back over. They were all interrogating us, the Aryan brother guys. You know, they're like, "Okay, Wood. You know, like, what's your charges? Blah blah blah. You know, drugs. Blah blah blah. That's acceptable. Blah blah blah. And then at the end of the interrogation, they'd say. We heard that some of the woods in your building went over to Muslim services. Were you one of those woods who went to Muslim services? <laughs> no, I have no idea about that. <laughs> 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 yeah, but when, when Roscoe finally got sentenced, oh my God. So when you get sentenced, they move you to another part of the jail for a couple of weeks and then the, you know, the, the Department of Corrections come and get you. So all the census people got moved except for Roscoe. They kept him with us until the very end, until like his last night or something, last couple of nights or some shit. So when he when when the guards come to get him, he literally had a standing ovation fit for a war hero. Yes. <laughs> I, I've never seen anything like it. Proper good fellas, how these guys took over the jail. You, he would move anyone into your cell. He would you know help you resolve your disputes. If he had to fight, he would fight. And um, the guards took him away, and we were all like deeply depressed and sad because <laughs> they took an hour later, from you <laughs> an, hour later, an hour later he came back he came back the guards brought him back we're all pounding on the day <laughs> yeah yes! I wish I was that popular like, like, how the fuck did wife. you do this Roscoe <laughs> <laughs> he, he told the guards that he forgot something and he needed to come back and the guards just he, lit, he had his girlfriend come in as a lawyer in the legal visit room, giving him blowjobs because the guards can't come in because of the legal the <laughs> confidentiality. <laughs> and then, and then one of the one of his guys, uh, his girl, his girlfriend made friends with my girlfriend, and they told me, "Bring your girlfriend at the same time as our girlfriends." I'm like, cool. And then we got extra visit time together. So one of the happiest days of my life was when those guys asked me to start working out with them because I knew. They accepted me into that little Italy clip. But if we could get Bruno on here, viewers, tell us in the comments that, that there's two Bruno interviews on my on my channel. But yeah, let, let us know if you think you know he, he would be good on PK. I think he would he would blow I, I bet he minds. would. He sounds like a like yeah. a funny guy with a lot of experience. But like yeah. that is so funny what you said about the Italians going in and then they like immediately there's like some guard named fucking Tony Italiano who's yeah, like yeah, helping was. Him out with everything. But, yeah, there I'm was. sure there was. Uh, what, what's your name? Fucking Dino Kicciarelli? Oh, okay. <laughs> you you sound neutral. Go handy the, handle the Italians. But like, like because that's what happens in like Casino and those yeah. movies where they're like and then we went in prison but we still got our razor blades to cut up our tomatoes to make the mother sauce so we're not all the other, <laughs> other shit they're talking i just i thought that was totally like an old timey thing i couldn't imagine that in the early 2000s some some italian guy shows up and just starts running it there was a That's point wild. where there was a point where a sergeant tried to clamp down on little italy and he moved bruno the enforcer and sunny slope the youngster to a different building and then the next day, 
guard Tartaglione, whatever his fucking name yeah. was, <laughs> brings him back. And then the next day, the sergeant moved him again. And then the next day, they came back again. And this was going on for like two weeks. <laughs> and then, and like, you just know that guard, like, like Joe <laughs> Stevens is like, <laughs> what are you doing? And fucking, you know, you really uh, your job. I'm confused. Yeah, Giuseppe <laughs> Italianissimo is like, oh, just yeah. trying to get things going here. You know, <laughs> I don't know him. He's certainly not. I don't know him. He's certainly not a send, fucking cousin of mine. Like <laughs> they had to send, they had to send a sergeant to assertiveness classes because of the way he couldn't handle Little Italy. Literally. They sent him to assertiveness classes. And, and towards the end of Little Italy, they had like a banner over the door saying, by appointment only. And they had an Italian flag on the cell door. And that <laughs> sergeant ran in after doing his assertiveness classes. He ran in. He grabbed the banner, threw it on the floor, and grabbed the flag and threw it on the floor. And they all came out. And they were like muscling up to him. And he fucking shit himself and ran out the pod. And they were yelling, get back to your assertive classes. They didn't fucking work. Sergeant Baptist. <laughs> get back to your assertiveness classes. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. imagine it was quite that articulate. <laughs> these oh, these oh, Italian guys time. screaming oh, at him. <laughs> That's hilarious. I didn't yeah, know you were. could. They ran him out. They ran him out. I didn't know you could still do that in prison. Oh, and just... If you get Bruno on, he'll, he'll give you all the details. Did anyone but the yeah. Italians ever pull something off like that with just like never saw it, never saw anything. I've never seen anything like, like that in my life. And um I didn't think it was even possible. I thought it was just a thing that happened in the movies until I literally saw this guy do it. And the family he's from, Roscoe must, you know, must be a formidable uh family. Mm -hmm. And Bruno showed me the paperwork now. You know, he's he's serving life in super maximum security prison in, in Florence, Arizona for two conspiracies to murder. So serious people. Serious people. Yeah. Sounds sounds very very serious people. Conspiring yeah. to murder not once but twice. Maybe maybe murder is not your path in life. If you <laughs> if you just can't figure it out. Yeah, you should be a yeah. bank robber or something. <clears throat> bank robbery is the coolest of crimes. I've said that many times. <laughs> it's pretty high up there, right? Like bank robbery. That, that, that's so cool, cool to rob a bank. I mean, you know, but like, okay, yeah. robbing a bank's all right. Robbing a museum is the coolest of crimes. Yeah, but like, no one's. <laughs> I mean, Who's your nobody, favorite nobody's museum stop robber, you. Woody? Uh, the people from the heist Netflix series. I don't know. <laughs> okay, that was a good series, but I didn't, wa I didn't watch it all. <laughs> <to> the back <laughs> <laughs> called Heist, oh. where you're just watching the dub in Spanish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know it though. I don't mind the dub shit. I, it really it works well me. for me. Yeah, yeah. I sometimes mind the dub stuff. Like old kung fu movies were terrible, terribly done. Yeah. But somehow in Heist, it's working for me. Maybe the it, voice acting is better. It, it seems to like line up with how long it takes to say certain things in certain languages. Like some like if it's like an Eastern European dubbed film, it's like it takes fucking forever for these people to say something. Like and so it doesn't. It's it's not as quick. As like English or or Korean. <laughs> Korean seems to line up pretty well. When I watch the Korean dubbed stuff, it seems like it takes about as long to say something like Squid in Game. Korean as English. Yeah. Yeah. Squid Which, Game was good, but they acted like it was the best ever. Yeah. I my think my, uh my, my first wife was Korean. She almost cut my dick and balls off. Why? Huh. How much of it did she get? So she was a... <laughs> <laughs> I still have the one not, nut, not, thank God. She, not, 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 not full one, not full John Wayne Bobbitt. She uh, she um had been married to an American guy who cheated on her with a blonde woman. So I didn't I didn't know all this at the time that, that she was had this psychosis over this. Okay. I got I got married to her quite quickly. I was you know in my early twenties, a bit emotionally mm -hmm. immature. She said after six months of feeling more secure in our you know, a relationship, we got married. I said, yeah, that sounds cool. I haven't got a green card either, so let's do it. So we got married in some little courthouse in, in Glendale. And then quite quickly, you know, this, this psychosis came out. So I'm working these long hours in the stock market and come home, go in the shower, shower curtain rips open, <sighs> Ginsu knife coming down from my dick and balls. I managed to, you know, 
dodge that. And then she starts screaming at me. I know you fucking sucking blonde pussy. American guys, they, <laughs> American guys, they love bl- fucking sucking blonde pussy. I'm sure English guys are the same. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, what the fuck? So, so <clears throat> she got, she got on. Um, what happened was, a, a, sister, a sister came out. She no, she got on. We took her to the. If you love someone, you just got married. You got to help them through these things. We got. She went to the doctor's. Got on Zoloft. And she was fine for a year or so. After she brandished a knife at you? I I mean, I I don't think of myself as insensitive, but that's a one strike and you're out thing for me. Yeah, well, I was emotionally mature and and I was committed. Very forgiving. (laughs) Yeah. Very very forgiving. (laughs) But it got worse. It got worse. A sister came over a year later. She stopped taking a meds, said it was Western poison. It was killing her. And um, I came home from work. She smashed the place up tries to put an iron in my head and all this shit. And her ex-husband shows up <clears throat> and explains to me that, you know, yeah, she'd been smashing the house up when I was with her. This is what she's <laughs> like, blah, blah, blah. And Suddenly like, you feel a lot in common. I'm like, fucking hell. Felt a lot in common. Oops, let me just, is that my camera battery? Yeah, we just, oh, we yeah, just yeah. launched your camera. That was my camera battery then. Was You're back. You're then. all good. Yeah. Yeah. So off off the medicine. I think Camera, I replace- Camera's gone again. Camera battery's going to get replaced. Hold on one second. Off the medicine, it just got increasingly worse. She started, you can chasing, do, uh, me. She started uh, chasing, it, chasing me around the house with a Ginsu knife, I, I, what, demanding to smell my Georgie. She's like, I, I know, I know you Georgie? fucking sucking. Yeah, she's like, I know you fucking sucking blonde woman. I, come here, I want to smell your Georgie. <laughs> <laughs> she, she said Georgie. Georgie, mm. that's the that's the Korean word. I think. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, I, didn't, I thought that was some yeah. bridge slang. <laughs> she launched an iron through our chandelier, and that that was the last night. I, I'd had enough, then. that was not the, end the of chandelier. That yeah, no. I think but the knife not- incident would have done it for me. That that like, like I, I would have flashbacks to Psycho, and uh, I, I, how could you? I bet after that you locked that bathroom door, didn't you? She would saw through it. Those Ginsu knives, she would oh, saw through doors. They are quality. Yeah, we yeah. It's a commercial. It's like, this, is the third, this is like this the third time you've, you've mentioned Ginsu specifically. I like to believe <laughs> are she saw through the by door. Ginsu she sliced the tomatoes super in. thin. Just this like this channel brought to you by Ginsu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> so we had a guy, we had a regular guy who came out and replaced our doors. <laughs> Mm-hmm. She saw okay. through a door one night and, and planted a TV on my head. Jesus Christ. And how long was this before you left? Yeah, like after there was the there was this first six months uh was good. Then she went tried to cut my dick off. Then there was the year on the Zoloft medicine. Then mm-hmm. her sister came over and then and it was fractured after that. It lasted so many months and that. So that when she it. would yeah. smell Jesus. your when she would smell your Georgie and she would find it satisfactorily it smells like blonde uh, pussy. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that'd be the scariest this thing ever, right? Because <laughs> you're you're hoping that she's gonna like what what'd you do? What'd you go? All right, everything seems to check out here. Yeah. Well, when she was in this that mood whereby redhead. she wanted when she was in that mood whereby she wanted to smell my Georgie. She had her eyes went completely blood red, so I was never actually amenable to her smelling my Georgie. I would always mm. just fucking lock the door and, and go in another room. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd at least like give her like a. I'd give myself some space. Like I'll rub my balls and dick, and then you can smell my hand. <laughs> keep, I tried, keep you I away that. from the danger zone. I tried that, but she bit onto my bicep, and I couldn't get her off. And I still have the scar of her teeth marks on my bicep to this day. What a crazy bitch. You married yeah. a pit bull. But she made amends years later when I was in prison. Uh, when my, whenever my parents came over, she gave them loads of money and said, look, she offered to pay my legal fee of $100,000, but my parents wouldn't let her. She took my parents out you know, to nice places and, and always gave them money for me to, to help me while I was in prison. And okay. um, yeah, so that one has a happy ending too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not... not- <laughs> Not a Sounds great terrifying ending. though. Like, like I've never, no one's ever tried to stab me before. I don't think. I would hate well, being stabbed. I know myself. I wouldn't. Like they didn't it. try hard. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're a bit of a delicate flower. They, I don't think I enjoy they, stabbing. they say try everything once. Not for me. Not for yeah, me. Yeah, know your kinks until you give them a go. I don't need to be stabbed. 
Well, I perhaps next time, I'll, next time I'll tell you the stories of guns getting pulled on me and shit, but I, it's almost my bedtime, so I'm going to have to slide well, off, guys. Well, yeah, we've enjoyed you, you thoroughly. Uh, we just enjoyed you thoroughly. Uh, I'm gonna, we, we're going to look into getting your Italian friend on. He sounds yeah. good. And uh, um, <laughs> I, I look forward to your books uh, that, that are upcoming. And uh, I need to read... To, uh, Plug all your, your books. Because... Well, my life story is a trilogy. It's party time, hard time, prison time. And I've written 15 books now, and I've got a book publishing company. I've probably published about 20 books for other prisoners as well. So that anyone who goes on uh, Amazon just puts in Sean Atwood, it'll, it'll all just come up, and all my socials under my name. And thanks to all. Since I spoke to you guys last, I think I've gained about 200,000 new subs. So huge thank you as well to all the people who subscribed to my channel. Cheers. Of course. And thanks for coming on. we got to not yeah. wait two years. you got so much fun stuff to talk about. Yeah, you're Ready? so fun to listen to. Love the stories. <laughs> you're a natural Ready? storyteller. Ready when you guys are. Kyle, Woody, Taylor, yeah. I salute you. The PK Army. Thanks for all the messages and love and support and the lobbying to get me back on. Really appreciate it. Of course. Thank you so much for coming on, man. Take care. Thank all you, right. Sean. Cheers, guys. Yeah. Good night. Toodaloo. All right. Before we jump to the next thing, we're going to hear I from don't a couple think of... anyone's ever said toodaloo to me. Toodaloo. Like, sincerely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's going to regret that that's even yeah he's going to who the fucking who I don't I know I should have said hush, hush. <laughs> as, he's, as he's leaving just ruin it <laughs> so alright this episode of PKA brought to you by ExpressVPN admit mm. it you think that cybercrime is something that happens to other people you may think that no one wants your data or that hackers can't grab your passwords or credit card details but you would be wrong Stealing data from unsuspecting people on public Wi-Fi is one of the simplest and cheapest ways for hackers to make money. When you leave your internet connection unencrypted, you might as well be writing your passwords and credit card numbers on a huge billboard for the rest of the world to see. That's why we decided to take action, which is why we're recommending you get ExpressVPN to protect yourself from cyber criminals. ExpressVPN secures and anonymizes your internet browsing by encrypting your data and hiding your public IP address. ExpressVPN has easy-to-use apps that run seamlessly in the background of your computer, phone, or tablet. Turning on ExpressVPN protection takes only one click. Using ExpressVPN, I can, I can safely surf on public Wi-Fi without being snooped on or having my personal data stolen. For less than seven bucks a month, you can get the same Express VPN protection that I have. Express VPN is rated the number one tech service by Tech Radar. Or I'm sorry, the number one VPN service by Tech Radar and comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. Protect your online activity today and find out how you can get three months free at expressvpn.com slash PKA. That's E X P R E S S VPN.com slash PKA for three months free with a one year package. Visit expressvpn.com slash PKA to learn more and get three months free with a one year package. So check that out. Wonderful service. You want to be safe and secure. Turn on with one clicks. How many clicks do you need? Right? That's the fewest amount of clicks I can imagine. That's the only amount of clicks I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kyle's so muted. One click. Kyle's muted, but what he's saying is that ExpressVPN is the most high-quality <laughs> VPN service you can get and that it is rated number one by Tech Radar. Uh, <laughs> 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 took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> took, uh, stole the words right out of his, his fucking muted mouth. <laughs> uh, th this episode of PK also brought to you by Feels, F E E L S, CBD. CBD isn't about what you feel, it's about what you don't feel stress, anxiety, pain, and Feels is a better way to feel better. Feels is a premium CBD that will help you keep your head clear and feel your best. It's hassle free, delivered direct to your door. CBD naturally helps reduce stress, anxiety, pain, and sleeplessness. There's no hangover or addiction. Place a few drops of feels under your tongue and feel the difference within minutes. The thing to remember about CBD is that finding your right dose is important and everybody's dose is different. In fact, Feels offers a free CBD hotline to help guide your personal experience so that you can find your perfect dose. The Feels customer service team is dedicated to making sure you get the best use of your CBD. Joining the Feels monthly membership makes your self-care easy. You'll save money on every order and you can pause or cancel anytime. Start feeling better with Feels. Become a member today by going to feels.com slash PKA and you'll get 50% off. 50% off. That's a big discount. Go to feels.com slash PKA. You'll get 50% off your first order with free shipping. That's F-E-A-L-S dot com slash PKA. F-E-A-L-S. I just realized I read the wrong thing on the top because Chiz didn't put F-E. I'm, I'm changing that right now. F-E-A-L-S. Okay. F-E-A-L-S dot com slash PKA to become a member and get 50% off taken 50% taken off your first order with free shipping. Feels.com slash PKA. So check that out. 50% off and free shipping. You only have to pay half then. 
Yeah, free shipping, 50% off. It's a tremendous deal, one of the best deals, uh, and it's very good for sleep. If you're someone out there that has trouble conking out for the night, like like I do, this could be a helpful thing for you. So give it a go. Feels, F-E-A-L-S dot com slash P-K-A. Check that out. I always listen to those rainstorm videos on YouTube. You like those? I love those. Like I, I put on um, there, either a live stream or a video, and the video will start. It'll be like, thank you for you know, using dream sleep videos and then like, like screens going dark and three, two, one, and the screen goes completely dark. And then like a rainstorm, like slowly amps mm -hmm. up, uh, with like, I like, like a lot of thunder, like lots and lots of thunder. I, I know heavy, what you're talking rain. about in that, like when it, when I'm in my bed, all curled up and soft and comfortable and it's, oh. you know, thunderstorming out like you feel like you've, you've escaped it and it makes it more relaxing in a way yeah yeah no i like sleeping on rainy days uh that's what i was doing earlier today when i found out we were doing pka at 4 p.m in the <laughs> afternoon i swear to god the fact that i was here on m mostly on time like eight minutes later whatever is a fluke I, like, 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 <laughs> like, 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 i was like, in I, the gym when jack is like or zach was like you guys remember the shows now I'm up here. I run a brush through my hair and for one second. I'm here in my workout clothing starting the show. Oh, yeah. I, I was like responding like it's a work day. I'm like responding to an email. And I see that and I'm like, oh, oh, fuck. Oh, <laughs> <It's just laughs> I'm, I'm so glad no that idea. none of us knew it worked. I got to yeah. I got to go make jokes for retards. I really blame <laughs> Zach. He only told us like six times. He yeah, only told but... us six times over and over and over. And we all said explicitly, yes, that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> Zach is gonna slip some scary stuff in one of these days because that's all I ever say to Zach. Yeah, yeah that's good. all right. All no, right. he did. He did a good job. It, it, fooled, it fooled me because initially we were gonna do the show on Wednesday for Sean, and then we scrapped Wednesday, and I was like, "Oh, we're back to normal time." He did. But I didn't realize that, yeah, yeah. normal time was a. The yeah, other, the, norm, the yeah, same normal, normal earlier time time. has become normalized. I, I was confused, and uh, also. That wasn't going to happen till February, which until very recently was distant future. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what the month is sometimes. I, I predict <laughs> a year for years at a time. Yeah. It, and, like, and it'll be January 29th. And he's like, yeah, the show's February 3rd. Oh, <laughs> well, I have to start worrying about it. So my <laughs> sleep another... <laughs> schedule is, is kind of interesting right now. Like, like I've, I woke up at like 6 a.m. after eight hours of sleep or something like that. And and I was like, okay, this is That's good. A this good is good. Schedule. It is right if you're like a coal miner or something, I suppose, <laughs> or like a truck driver or some shit. No someone who actually man. has a reason to get up. Um, but but in any case, I was like, ah, I'm gonna need a nap for the show. I, I if I get up at six, the show starts at seven. I've been up for 13 hours, and then we start four hours of this. You know, I, I'm gonna be sleepy at the end. Right. So I was just gonna take a little nap before the show, and uh, I set the alarm for like 45 minutes pre-show, and I just luckily woke up. And I I looked at my phone. It was ten missed messages, and one of them was three minutes old. And it was you going. So the show is now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <And> I. <laughs> it took me a minute to process that as being a real thing. I was just like, show is now. What does he even mean? <laughs> that is a like, complex message. Is that, to is that some sort of? Is, it, has Chocolate Thunder been giving him some of those black people phrases again? Because I, <laughs> I, I don't have time to like backwards engineer how being being a dollar bill means that you agree with somebody. And, and, and so that means that a buck means that the you're show agreeing is with now somebody. Zippity -zoppity. And so that means that if you're a Milwaukee buck, you're agreeing with somebody because it all goes at, back to being 100. I remember. Fuck you with your reverse engineered <laughs> gobbledygook talk. Say something cool and mean it. it. Yeah, <laughs> it was like you're a dollar because you're a buck because you're Milwaukee. But I no, you're a hundred so because you agree, and then that makes you a buck because that's a hundred cents. And then it went back to like being a Milwaukee buck somehow. And I was like, there's no fucking way this goes back to a sports team. Like, there's, <laughs> there's no way. There's no way. But uh, uh, but no, I, I it took me a minute to realize the show is fucking now means the show is fucking now, and I just ran in here and jumped in. I'm I'm surprised it, I could have not been home. I'm glad I uh, didn't fuck this up. Uh, we're starting time. this show, and I'm like, Jackie, bring me a reasonable shirt to wear on show. I still have oh, like good. board shorts on. <laughs> in my, my, oh, I saw a really good video the other day, and it was um it was like um a black guy's like sitting down to that job interview with like a, a couple of other business professionals and i think his kid comes in and like interrupts and he has to get up and shut the door and he's wearing like 
board shorts or something with his suit and tie like uppers and uh and the guy giving the interview is, is like i like your shorts marcus and he's like oh i am so sorry about that he's like marcus marcus don't be sorry. And he stands up and he's got the exact same thing. Everybody in the meeting has like a suit and tie on and fucking gym shorts on. <laughs> uh, I thought that was really like really cool that they like cut him that break. Because like a douchebag could have totally been like pretty unprofessional. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> or he could have just been like, it's fine, and not acknowledged that like yeah, I'm 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 also wearing shorts because we're living in this stupid world where people can't wear masks. How uh I saw that Dirty got COVID, and uh, yeah. his initial reaction. Well, wait, was, wait. His girlfriend got it. Did you see that Dirty got it? That'd be very new since two days ago. Dirty had it in the hangout. He was coughing and said, "I have COVID." He said he tested negative, but he lives with someone who's testing positive and expected to have it. Well, shit. Maybe I completely misunderstood. I'm almost positive he has COVID. I asked okay. him how he's doing today, and he said he was okay. Okay. Well, um, I'm glad he's doing well. Yeah, it seems like everybody like. Young, they gets it is, is more or less okay if they don't Especially have it. Especially with the new variant, I, I guess the new variant is like, um, it's kind of doing what I said. It, it's it's drowning out all the other variants, right? It's out competing Delta and the original one, and um, it's inoculating the population to some extent. Now I've heard that inoculation lasts ninety days. This is a comedy podcast. Don't don't take that to heart, listeners. But uh, I think that I was only uh, good. Their, their vaccine recommendation. Natural immunity lasts for quite a while, they're saying. I'm not going to believe any facts or things that I, I hear from, from you in particular. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <really>? That's fine. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Uh, uh, no, yeah, leave whatever you want. What I, I, what I mean is I don't better believe than anything the anymore. Natural inoculation. The Every time they tell us heard, a thing, but, they change their minds. Yeah, I haven't heard that. Yeah, so... I'm so it seems like there's a, sources, a bunch of conflicting stuff, kind Man. of like it's been the entire fucking time <laughs> where what was truth three months ago is now conspiracy and vice versa. Yeah. Weird fucking patterns <clears throat> like that. Dude, what's I, the biggest news story right now? Is it right. COVID like it has been? Is it Ukraine? Is it some the Trump rallies? I haven't been following the news closely, but I feel like it's Ukraine shit. So what I got is on my right? phone and I was scared. Uh, like, like last night we were playing a game and, and I was like, my, my phone like did a little news alert thing and it said Biden giving remarks on military and then it like cut off, you know, because the update yeah. only shows so much. And I'm like, fuck, what did he do? What did he do? Mm. But I guess we killed some sort of ISIS leader in Syria. I guess there was some sort of a military strike of some kind. And then I was like, oh, good. back to basics. I never trust it. They always do this. They're like, hey, we killed Mohammed McNever heard of. And he is the number two guy in all of ISIS. This is a major win for us. And I'm like, really? Did you just promote him post mortem? And to me, yeah, like my number two well, guy. Muhammad yeah. bin Fiktion. You know what it reminds me of? <laughs> like, is, uh, was taken have, down. Yeah. <laughs> have either of you ever played Shadow of Mordor? Yeah, I lost interest Every, in that. Quick. So it's this game where you're basically like in Mordor killing like orcs and goblins and shit, right? As a Lord of the Rings character. But every time you like kill the guy in charge, there's this screen that it goes to and it's like, you killed Ugloff the ugly. Mm -hmm. Tough shit. Cause Moon Raper the one-eyed is moving up. And you see Moon Raper go dun dun dun. And now he's in like the head position. So you gotta yeah. deal with him. That's what they do every time. They, they all look the same to me. I can't tell one from the <laughs> other. Like, 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 why even laugh? We all know it's true. They have the same fucking it's, it's, stylus. It's some guy. They all have the same style. It is. Okay? It, you're right. It's the same. It's the same dirty guy who's 61 years old in robes with a beard that obscures it's his graying. entire face. It's, it's not guy. gray, but it's graying. And yeah. and and he looks. He, he's very tan. And and it looks no, like you know Arab, it, it, yeah. he's got some crow's feet going on, and he usually has a bit of headwear. He's maybe had too much sun exposure. Yeah. A little bit too much sun exposure. Not with those and, hats. Yeah. It, it looks like he's been squinting at the at the at the desert glare for, for. You know what they yeah. missed out on? They they have those hats that look nice with like the gold bands around them. Imagine how much more effective they'd be if there was like a baseball cap bill out on the front. They don't know about the bill. They don't have that technology. They need no. sunglasses, is what they need. They a little Ray Ban action. They do. Ooh. They don't want it because those will fly you off know. when they're driving their Lamborghini too quickly on a fucking tarmac or something. You know who figured that shit out like right away? And it's always surprising when they, I don't know why, but like those Eskimo like little goggles that they made. You yeah, the, the, little, little, the, the, the little slits. Yeah, they, they have the little slits so they don't go snow yeah. blind. Uh -oh. Yeah. Like I like carved out of bone. Like, like, like they're like ancient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like this is like new technology. Like the Eskimos like 
forever have made like made these little goggles out of like, like these flat pieces of bone and they have slits carved in them. So, so I picture them looking a little like Jordy from the next generation. Star exactly Trek. like Jordy from the next generation. <laughs> have, no, it's they're honestly a little racist. Have you ever seen Mickey Rooney wearing those eyes? Those yeah. Asian eyes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it looks a little it, Asian yeah. racist. Those Inuits need to kind of get their shit. Yeah, they need to get a little more woke. Yeah. Aren't they the ones who would take the old people and like put them on the ice and like push them out to the was it old people or was it people they punished? I don't remember if they actually did that. They did or if they did do that, then I must yeah. have dreamed that they didn't do that. Oh, they definitely did that. Okay. I All what's right. that thing? Oh, I love your 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 what's the word for that thing? when the Vikings would k kill themselves when they became useless. It's called a strudel step or some shit. <laughs> <Strudel> step. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't remember what it's called, but I, I think you're on the right path that like, they'd be like, all right, I'm sorry, grandma. You can't really fetch any blubber for us. And we're in a very calorie restrictive place. If you don't die, the baby. Ed Edelstoop. Is it Edelstoop? Edelstoop. It could be, but I don't think many Germans are there. It's mostly... I, I yeah, you know, some like kind of there were some Asian, Germanic tribes like there. there. There was an intermixing of cultures, I'm sure. At was some there? Point. I didn't know. Yeah. I, thought, I, I thought that like Inuits were kind of like uh, Inuits. How did we get back to Inuits? Oh, I thought you were talking about because because I'm the on glasses. the Vikings. Oh, the no, Vikings. I'm back on the Vikings. When, yeah, when they there's got, probably some Russians. And it's not synthesized. There's like a Viking word for like killing yourself ritualistically to like when you're useless to the clan or when you're too old to like, you know, be a, be a warrior or, or whatever the fuck. Um. It's, is the hunting, but I'm not finding. Is it, it. Atestupa? Because that's what it says here. It's make whereby it, make it elderly... pronounce the word. Wait, what? Make it pronounce the word. Is I think it's what's Atestupa? What? Let me see. Where do I even click for that? I have to search the fucking word for that. Well, no, get at it. Atestupa. No, that doesn't I think come it's up. Edelstup. No, it's Atestupa. It's a name given to principles in Sweden, Norway, and Iceland. Uh, it denotes sites where ritual senicide took place. Senicide, I, I would assume killing the elderly, uh, throwing them to their deaths either over a cliff or into the well, that, sea. See, that's propaganda. They jumped. <sighs> yeah, they it does jumped. It does say here that they jumped, which is definitely not true. Uh, they, senicide uh, is killing the elderly. I Google there it. we go. Senicide. Well, if an old person kills himself, he <laughs> has committed senicide, so... Well, suicide, right? Sent a suicide. I Sent a suicide. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm going to watch uh, Ozark this week so that we can, and, and I suggest to the audience that you also watch some Ozark because we might like have like a spoiler e segment next week that you know we'll mark and warn you. We up should. For, yeah. Cause, we, cause we, I'll catch up with you guys. I, I I apologize for not being there, but this fucking Peacemaker show um, is is so fucking funny to me for whatever reason. John Cena is really good. Uh, the new episode came out today and I immediately had to watch it. I'm surprised it's, you think he's such a good actor. I think he's look, I don't think he's like gonna win any Oscars or anything, but he's like a good comedic actor and like like he pulls off the role really well. Oh, by the way, lock and load. <laughs> forgot We forgot our own ad reads. <laughs> and, then, and then he said it that goes out. <laughs> he just sitting there. <laughs> uh, is my internet out? Yeah, but it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, I would, join I, me. Oh, hang on, hang on. <laughs> I think this is better than a real ad read. This is a thumbnail. <laughs> no, no, right. Oh. Hang on, make the bottles more prominent if this is actually the thumbnail. Now, make the bottles more prominent. <laughs> Look like you've had a stroke. Let's do a stroke one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now let's do racist faces. Let's do <laughs> Taylor's not even trying anymore. He's I, back. He gave had a drink at one frame per minute. In my back. No. No, someone sent me a message today. They go, I'm pretty sure my dog has consumed the first dose of lock and load <laughs> by any other dog <laughs> like, i think i have the first and i'm i don't know how to reply to that i don't know what to tell him i don't uh, know if I, it's canine safe actually i'm sure it is not um but, telling anyone to feed their dogs or pit or come it either do is or it isn't i'm sure of that god why would they why would they feed their dog or come pills i, I mean 
Maybe their dog's ejaculate was weak sauce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody sent me a TikToker's video today. I didn't know who it was because I'm old or whatever. And this TikToker's like, mm. "Oh, you got to have all your stuff together." And he's like going through like this like quick list of like quick edited like things, and it seemed like they were all related to sex more or less. But then there was like a part where he's like, "You got to take your vitamins," and he had a bottle of Lock and Load. Uh, nice. I thought it was funny. Uh, the comments were like, "Those aren't vitamins." <laughs> I know what those are. RSK. <laughs> yeah, I saw someone on the sex subreddit ask if lock and load was good. And there were a bunch of people like RSK, PKA, F Kyle, <laughs> stuff like that. So Yeah, man. I know it's uh oh look at that. The Taylor's back. Hey, I know that guy. Am I back? Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. I think my No, it's okay. We we mocked you relentlessly for like, it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> I would I would expect nothing less. So you like we, you, you froze? Uh, you froze and you were like this? You're like Oh no, I so, saw I saw all oh, of this. I saw oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I saw I saw all the stroke mouths. I saw the whole, the whole oh, there. Good. I didn't want you, you know, be outside looking in. Yeah. I thought he could no, see never. I don't know why I was confident in that. I just thought Yeah, that. well you were right. I could see you till I left. I uh we got like 14 inches of snow here over the last 24 I'm so hours. jealous it's one of those I, things I, where I, you say it's 14 inches but you put a ruler next to it and it's really seven but you want to believe it's 14 because you're not as you know i can't relate to any of that <laughs> <laughs> no no kyle's got it's a, only a, seven a inches but it really only goes to five inches <laughs> it's really thick snow, why would it ever go me. farther <laughs> what are you measuring that's so long what my are you snow's, doing with <laughs> my snow's more about girth <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it was uh it was so deep because it, it snowed it's been continuously it snowing for almost two inches. two days now that like F fozzy and teddy my little dogs they love to run out and play in the snow so like last night when it wasn't very deep yet or last afternoon and I let them out. They're like doing that, like, you know, Woody or Kyle, anyone who's seen dogs, they're jumping around, they're having a grand old time. And then overnight, you know, a foot came down. And so now when they run out there, they're little dogs. And so they're like looking. It's like Kyle or you wandering into snow that's six feet tall. And so like he like runs out into it and has been like panicking not understanding like what he is, which is basically like underwater and then running back in. And so I dealt all morning with Teddy, you know, Fozzy pissed, but Teddy, the littler one, he'd go out there, panic a little bit, bark and then run back in. And then he would immediately stand by the bell and be like, I got to piss. Like, what do you want me to do? Piss all over this foreign substance. And so I had to shovel out through my patio, a track, for them and then because the snow on the grass in my yard is even deeper i had to shovel out like a, a, a six by six patch of grass yeah, so that they, they he felt comfortable this i mean because so I, I i know they are stupid but i i love my dog <laughs> they so much protect us from intruders well, they they think they do, but like I'm, <laughs> I, I I mainly use my dogs. Like I, I I finish I'll finish the show. I'll go out. I'll get out there, and sit, watch a show with my wife, or hang out. And like my dogs will act like they haven't seen me in five years. They're like, yeah. oh oh oh, it's <laughs> it's you, it's you. Like I I always forget what night it is that you lock yourself in that room, and then I forget that you're here, and then you come out of that room, and I'm so excited that you came out of that room. Like it's a good feeling. You know, yeah. like they love, yeah, yeah. they truly love you. We should, yeah, it's really do, nice. you know, how we do a death pool. <clears throat> we need an over under on the like Taylor's first conception. I, I feel oh, like he's God, no, he's, it's coming soon, right? You know, it's coming, Kyle. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I go the, the Kyle route, go no kids, lock all my money up and fun things. Yeah, but think about all the excess money you'll have through your whole life, the lack of stress. You think about <laughs> <laughs> even the parent I mean, is like yeah don't mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, oh the international travel <laughs> it's gonna blow yeah all those trips to japan i Imagine could make. a lifetime of focusing on your own happiness <laughs> what was just... that meme you sent me one time woody that was like like it was it was like jerry's girlfriend broke up with him jerry was sad 
But Jerry went and did and like Jerry yeah, yeah. like like a ton of like amazing shit. Like like and, and part of it was like and then he fucked cheerleaders in the assholes yeah. and, 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 he, and he drank beer and he stayed up late and he played video games and he didn't care what he would have thought he about. He stayed that. up late. <laughs> I mean I I can't imagine staying up late being big on the list. <laughs> you know, it was just like anything basically it was like he just did whatever the fuck he wanted to do. Uh, I wish you could find that again. I was trying to show that to someone whose girlfriend broke up with him the other day, and I couldn't was, find uh, it. So, what, when you guys were kids, was bedtime a big set thing, or was it like as yeah. you became tired, you were allowed to go to bed? No, no. 9 p.m. was bedtime um, when I was like a little kid. Mm -hmm. uh, like, like the the We had one of those grandfather clocks, like a big one. Oh, well, as, as a four-year-old, it was gigantic, right? It was big. It was towering. But... um. Uh, you know, it would it would ding at you know nine times, and like that was it. Like like I remember that so explicitly. Like like, like that thing ringing and be like up oh, nine, and it was almost like yeah, it's nine. I have to go. Those are the rules. Like and my mom was like, yeah, they are. I wish mm -hmm. there was something I could do about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I wish there was some wiggle room here, but <laughs> <laughs> it was almost had... like, as a four year old. Like those are just. Well, yeah, you gotta go to bed at nine p.m. because that's yeah. that's when you go. What well, God knows what would happen if we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't remember my age at the time, but I, whatever the bedtime was, call it eight p.m. I remember it being set in stone. So come like seven thirty p.m., we'd be the best behaved children ever. And if you kept that up for a little while, bedtime could stretch. You know, it might be eight twenty before parents are like, "Wait a minute," because because you're being an angel. Yeah, I, I think it extended to like uh, <laughs> like ten p.m. Like like later, uh, late, later on, you know, yeah, when I was sure. like a teenager or whatever, right. and um, <laughs> eighteen year old Kyle, I, you know, like like, like twelve, yeah, 14, it ran like, ten like, times, Kyle. And, you know, <laughs> after a while, like they're they're just not checking. It's like, yeah, well, of yeah. course, it's like, yeah, you know, you have to drive your sister to school tomorrow, so maybe go to sleep sometime or don't. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I, I remember like realizing my parents just didn't want to deal with me at one point where it was like. Like it wouldn't eat, like it got to like middle school time and it wouldn't be like bedtime. It would be like, go to your room for the rest of the night time. <laughs> like you're, you go to your room and you're just in your room. And so it'd be like eight o'clock and I'm like 16 or 15 and be like, all right, well, I, I guess I got to go to my room and spend the rest of the night there. Cause can't relate to that one. Yeah. Yeah. I looking back, that was strange. Like I, I remember being like 14 <laughs> I like that. Like, it's all right, like it's it's you're it's bedtime, and you have an eight p.m. get out of my hair time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was it was literally <laughs> like that. And like at sixties, probably exact. Probably four, fourteen. I know for sure because I would be like, I was in eighth grade, which is fourteen, and I'd like get home, and it'd be like eight, maybe eight thirty, and he'd be like, "All right, everybody, bedtime." And it's like, what? And it's like, well, you know, just just go away. It's go away time, pretty much, <laughs> is what it was. No, we didn't have a go away time. Jesus. Um. I'm trying to think like, like I remember like when I was like uh, maybe like 12 and like Killer Bee Nightmare was on Fox. Oh, that scared the shit out of me, man. And I wanted to watch it. It was like one of those things like you guys have to keep in mind, like there's no way to watch Killer Bee Nightmare again. Right. Mm -hmm. It's on. It's TV. on right now. You know, it's on. Chance. They're showing okay. it. There is. Trust me. Like, like. 12 year old me couldn't have gotten his hands on a copy of that VHS if I tried with all of my heart. Like, it probably yeah. didn't even exist. It's a TV movie mm -hmm. in like 95 or whatever. So, like, I'm begging my mom, please let me watch the last, you know, hour of Killer Bee Nightmare. I watched the first, she's like, it started at 9 p.m. You know, your bedtime's at 10. And I'm just like, let me fucking stay up and see how this Killer Bee Nightmare ends. <laughs> first of all, it ends terribly. It's a it's an awful movie. But as a kid, I thought like that. Did they was have cool. to like clog up the vents in a car at one point and like the underneath the bathroom door? Any trope vent? you can imagine so with things needing to be clogged or smoke being employed or some Yahoo with a shotgun this. thinking he can win the day. All of those things happen. This. What we needed was a, I got bees. we needed one guy with a paramotor to like. Zong. And, like, and like use the paramotor to like push the bees away 
I, I don't I'm mean so to much slower story. than the bees. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's going to blow them away from the family. Every like, with- year on the Facebook paramotor group, I get annoyed because someone thinks he's the first one to employ it as a leaf blower. Like, look at me doing the leaves in the yard. What a I'm dumbass. Just, I'm like, oh, this is my sixth year in a row watching Dude, someone who thinks they're clever. To do with it. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what's the coolest? Like, You got to be careful, though. Those things are expensive. We can't be chopping taters. Okay, but is there anything cool you could do? With, obviously, other than like the I kind of like the idea flying. The, um, other than like, that cool stuff, it normally does, of course. <laughs> I, like, I, I don't know how fast it would go as a bike. Like, you know, if you used it as a bike propulsion thing, I think you could go 50 or so. Maybe we should start small. Like, like, like maybe like, um, no, I like the bike. Like, like, where would you go? You need like a runway or a salt flat or something. Yeah. Assault flat. That always that's where they get going the fastest online. Always got like, miles to go. I want something yeah. with very little rolling resistance. I, I, assault flat might not do that. I'm not sure. Unis- what do you what do you mean roll? I, is, oh, is it a little like friction? sand? Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm. Huh. <clears throat> Why do they do it on salt instead of like? Because it's sand super flats? duper super flat. And and it doesn't Oh, it's just because of the flat. It's not because of the salt at all. It's just and you right, you know. right. It's if so I watched a documentary on a car trying to break the record and the salt flat went wrong. I think it was wet or something. So they went to a road and they're like at 500 miles an hour, even seemingly very flat roads are just like ramps launching you into the air and mm-hmm. dips and stuff. So you need something that's super duper flat. And also Interesting. like a runway is pretty wide, but it's not as wide as a salt flat. You can really get off track track if you if you had to i've seen them get all kinds of like use all that uh, all kinds of speed records i was watching something er, uh, a while back where some guy had some sort of contraption where there was like a propeller on top above and a gyrocopter uh, it was he was trying to prove some sort of physics problem and there was a ten thousand dollar bet on the line um something about Hmm. uh because it was set up in such a way that like the forward movement would propel the propeller but the propeller would simultaneously provide forward movement and uh and there was a bit of uh an argument over the physics of it i, I don't remember specifically the the what it the, was. it was the machine you're describing is a gyrocopter it kind of looks like a helicopter but the top prop rotor thing is not per, like lift they're like oh oh it's just like a rotating wing and i'm like well you lost me already in in this simple explanation but uh yeah, Zach, can you Google gyrocopter and show a picture of it? It looks like a one-man helicopter. I don't know. Paramotorists think they're cool. I'm not 100% sure why. Okay, so it was Veritasium, if I'm pronouncing his channel right. You probably know that channel. I think he's super popular, like 11 million subs or something. But he had this uh, this bet with a UCLA physics professor. Um, That's it. That, yeah, yeah. So it's actually that prop in the back is pushing it forward and the rotor on the top is providing like lift based on the push forward, but it's not powered or anything. It just spins. It's not what an, what an absolute death trap that is. It is (laughs) actually one of the most like the fatality rate and accident rates on that is really, really high. That's it. Look at it. (laughs) Like it's got, Oh wait, 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 that is not what I'm talking about. It's not even close. Not even anywhere no. in the same neighborhood um, okay that looks terrifying <laughs> um <laughs> what is the point of those those I've never wind seen a cedar one before look at yeah, the right? delusion of windshield <laughs> yeah i'm sure it's pretty windy in there oh what a dumbass <laughs> no this is a three-wheel car that has a propeller above it mounted on a tower yes I'm that is what confused. it is <laughs> um, what, what what were you talking about <laughs> Okay, I'll just link you. Um, <laughs> we probably can't watch this video. No, you can't know. watch the video, but Maybe if you were to just skip to I just need to know the kind of thing. To two minutes and ten seconds. Oh, okay, okay. I know what you're talking about. It, it's just a, a fan boat on land where and, you try. Uh, oh. I've watched this video. I've watched this video where he, you know, they talk about the different physics theories of, well, they think this should have a potentially intimate or infinite accel- acceleration because yeah. of the... Uh, the constant, you know, movement of blah blah blah, and, and that, 
But then some other physics guy said something I also didn't understand. It was and something I thought about, that thing what, he said that well, I don't the understand was, seems more compelling to the thing he's. This guy said I don't understand. I think that the bet is that that car can travel faster than the wind blows, than the wind that it, it propels it. Oh, um, and and, okay. and 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 the guy who was arguing against it said, "Well, yeah, it does in little spurts, but that's just because." You build up that energy, then the wind slows down, and then now you're now the wind isn't technically pushing you, but you're accelerating. Hmm. But that's just for this little part of it. And so they they did a ten thousand dollar bet, and they had Neil deGrasse Tyson and uh, Bill Nye, the science guy, be part of like the agreement. You know, the hand sh- the online handshake. Bill and, Nye. Uh, yeah, you can't and the, like, a high caliber um, um, scientist. And then they went out into the salt flats, and they proved their point. I watched a physics visit video today that I didn't understand, but I thought it was super interesting anyway. I kind of understood. So the question, what you've heard of speed of sound. Yeah. yeah. You've heard of speed of light. Mm-hmm. Have you heard of speed of motion? Like how fast you can move yourself? No. So imagine you had a steel rod, right? Like you know, whatever, one inch in diameter, thick steel solid rod. And you tap one end of it. How quickly does the other end move? It's kind of instant if the rod is like human length or something. Make it 300,000 kilometers long. And then you tap one end with a hammer. Let's pretend you're infinitely strong. And and move it an inch. How quickly until 300,000 kilometers down the way that other inch moves? It's not instant. Is it the speed of light? It, it, it's re- the answer is it's related to the speed of sound in that medium. So if we're made out of jelly, it'd be one thing. If we're made out of steel, it'd be a different Yeah, that thing. makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I guess the speed of sound is a nice approximation. The speed of sound in that thing is a nice approximation. Because you think speed of sound, like me, maybe, the speed of sound in air. The speed of sound is not the same through every medium. It is different in steel than it is in air and probably water. I'm sort of outside my depth here. But uh, I watched a cool physics video about how quick the speed of motion is so like so it's, it, it's a 300,000 mile tube or whatever it is 300,000 mile tube and you smack it with enough strength to move it an inch so is right. like because it's not instant that inch movement is it like that like micro pressures throughout it actually like almost shorten it by an inch at the moment of impact and then it like re Yes. regains that as it rolls yeah like that's a wave so, that extends through the other yeah, way that's, that's the speed really, of motion and i hadn't even heard of that concept before i haven't either but that's really it's also the speed about. of smell that's often not discussed yeah <laughs> and in, in, a, in, a, in a in a hot shower that speed is faster than light yes. shockingly fast and, and like look dude explain to me why if the speed of smell is very quick in a shower, why is the speed of dispersal not equally quick? Yeah, it, yeah. It can, uh, and why is the speed of smell for my farts faster to other people's noses? <laughs> <laughs> why can they always like, know that I farted? If I smell it so quickly, <laughs> I should stop smelling it equally quickly, but that doesn't seem to be how the science you, you, works. You know how you have like silly scientific thoughts like that? I talked to someone once and this it made me crack up because I'd never considered it in that way. They were like, yeah, every time I would fart, I would try and sniff as much as I could so that I was sucking up all of the fart smell uh-huh. and it wasn't going anywhere else. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's dumb, but I, I see... Dude, I, I had a friend in doing. high school that would like try to employ his friends to to, in, to like to get their filter. Everyone breathe deep. Everyone breathe deep. We don't <laughs> want the rest of the class to know about this. And it's like I am not your fart partner in crime. Inhaling your stench. <laughs> yeah. You're on your. I'm holding my breath, bitch. Don't M- fart in class. Me- meanwhile, you're like covered. taking a deep breath, and a cute girl you like comes over, and she's like, "Your breath smells like shit." <laughs> 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 smells uh, like you inhaled I... Scott's fart particles and just put them in my face Uh, (laughs) you didn't think about stuff like that kyle like sniffing up your um, own fart because i didn't either i didn't think about that until someone mentioned it and it's a very funny concept i I just don't think that that would work i don't think you can like filter out like sulfur dioxide or whatever the fuck makes a fart smell with your lungs yeah. You don't think your lungs filter that? I, I mean, that's I mean, I, I mean, think about how like I, I just I feel like you've poisoned a whole room full of air with a fart. Whereas, <laughs> like, if you tried to inflate a balloon, it would take we'd all be out of breath in five minutes. Like, 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 like Jesus Christ! Like, like our lungs are so tiny compared to a room. Yeah, and it's going everywhere. 
once you've oh, yeah. leaked your fart out, it's like it's it's spreading I mean, the, like the, gas the, does. It, the very, I, I mean, it's it, it would be like spilling your wine to the river and trying to catch it real quick. This is absurd. Yeah. <laughs> like, like <laughs> quick, drink all the river water. <laughs> like, don't let the wine get into the ecosystem. <laughs> oh, I'm getting so sick of this river water. <laughs> I, I don't think we're gonna be able to to do drink it. all the wine that Kyle spilled in the river. That's a absurd, good comparison. Yeah, it's a very good absurd, comparison. Absurd concept, and and it's also. Okay, I've Googled this. It appears that the answer is somewhere in between. Methane is the gas primarily responsible for the smell of farts, and it's water-soluble. This suggests that the methane could be taken up by the lungs, therefore eliminating the smell from the air. Of course, once released into the environment, the gas from the fart dissipates into the air, making it impossible to breathe up every atom of odorous gas. So your breathing would not effectively deodorize the air. Yeah. So it works, but just very poorly. Yeah, I remember a, a news story once. Well, you could call it a news story. I used to listen to the G. Gordon Liddy radio show. Do you know who that, that is, right? The, the Watergate He's a guy. Watergate guy, maybe? He was in on the break-in. He was there. Um, yeah, and, then, yeah. and then did his time in prison and uh, became a really popular conservative uh, radio host. Uh, mm-hmm. had, a, had a very good voice, too, and a lifetime of cool experiences, including his prison stories. It was good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and now I've forgotten why I wanted to bring up G. Gordon Liddy. Well, it started with the <laughs> fart thing. Oh, he told. I remember he told the story one time about a, a jail in Mexico where they were on a diet of nothing but like beans and cabbage, and it was a two man cell, and the guy on the top bunk died of asphyxiation. <laughs> <laughs> it was because there was there was so Dude. little breathable air. Yeah, because they they, they farted so much that, that one of them died. <laughs> I was in a conversation recently and the person lost their train of thought. So I started doing what I always do. I'm like, uh, the dog, the car, the this, the that. And like, oh, right. I'm like, yeah, I do this professionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is funny when like someone like gets onto a, a conversation or a topic that they're like, that's wildly inappropriate. And you're like, no, 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 keep going. Uh, uh, the retarded guy on the bike, the the, the retard, <laughs> the, the, the rapist who assaulted people, uh, the uh, uh, the child criminal, the child uh, trafficker. Uh, the, you're just, <laughs> trying to, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was talking about my birthday and like, <laughs> and they didn't even deliver the seven year old I ordered. <laughs> uh Dude, I came prepared to talk about the Ukraine thing. We talked about it on PKN. Yeah, and yeah. you were like, I looked into it a little bit, and I still can't find any. I, I did reason. not look into <clears throat> it at all. So I need I you guys to tell me what I, it's about. What, the, the more I looked into it, the more it seems like there's probably a lot of Ukrainians that would like nothing more than to be a part of Russia again, and uh, and and uh, the, it just seems like while Russia is definitely in the wrong, um, and we would be in the right. Um, by supporting Ukraine militarily, it's just still something that I don't think is I want any part of. Uh, I it kind of seems... agree, but let me lay it out. So Ukraine is Russia, right? Russia didn't start as this giant country that occupies like some huge portion of Asia. It started at one spot and it grew. And that spot it started was the Ukraine. Over time, Ukraine and Russia have been like brother sister countries forever. They are closer than America is to Canada or England. And we consider them like our mm-hmm. closest allies. You, know, you couldn't mess with them without yeah. knowing that you're messing with us. Yeah. Ukraine and Russia in the USSR, Ukraine was a part of that, etc. Ukraine is now being courted by NATO. And most Ukrainians, but not like 60%, would kind of like to be part of the West. They're right there on the edge, Eastern Europe, you know, that they, they could be part of Western Europe, they could be part of Russia. And mm-hmm. 60% of them would choose NATO based on what I'm seeing. Having said that, 40 of them, 40% would choose Russia. And that's not a small amount, right? It, it, you wouldn't find 40% of Canadians saying they should give up their Canadian identity and become America. Saying, you might, yeah, for sure. <laughs> we'll do away with those Frenchies. So NATO <laughs> has been winning over like former Soviet states and Eastern Russia, you know, like Poland was kind of a Russian ally and now they're kind of an American ally. NATO has been, chipping away at these and Russia sees us doing that to Ukraine and they're like, not this one. Fucking no. Enough is enough. Mm -hmm. I'm watching you chip away at our power for the last 20, 30 years. I can't have it. And that's kind of what this is about. Russia has a maybe legitimate claim to Ukraine and Ukraine is like, you're kind of my ex and I'm trying to get away from you. Why do you think you can get me back? Maybe. 
so so that that's like what the relationship is. That, that's the who is the United States in this relationship? Because I'm enjoying the the the. We're kind of the new boyfriend. Oh, you know the new boyfriend that they've chosen instead in in this relationship. Are we a good boyfriend? Do we do we like take him out for? We're power? we're a, we're a terrible boyfriend, probably. <laughs> I think we are. Do we I buy him nice really. things at least? We, we just use them for the, resources and fuck them. <laughs> the planet has been largely at peace since World War II because mostly America and NATO's role as this global police force and the right? nuke the nuke did a big uh, part of that yeah okay sure sure maybe the nuke has been a deterrent to people fucking mm -hmm. around the way that they used to pre nuke all right cool cool uh russia is now saber rattling probably will do it invade the ukraine uh, they, they've done some stuff like put troops on the border but countries do that as a show They've done other stuff like internal propaganda on why we should, why we, I'm Russian here, should be invading the Ukraine. Um, they've, uh, they set up hospitals on the edge of it. Not something that they always do. They have set up fresh blood to those hospitals to prepare themselves for the surgeries that you might expect in, in a war. And it's like, you know what? This is looking really fucking real. This isn't looking like a show where you just bring your tanks to the edge of the border when you're like supplying your new mash stations with blood and stuff like that and propaganda to your population as to why this is necessary to do. These are the sorts of things that mean they're for real, it seems. Um, now, I think it's pretty easy to make this first case and I'll make it on why America should stay away, right? Why should we put our kids because to me 18 and 20 year old are children um why should we kill them to protect ukraine's borders right yep. you could definitely ask that totally and then you could ask and the nation's uh resources right our money our time talent treasure is going to be devoted to military shit when maybe we could be putting that effort towards like i don't know renewable energy or something else like mm -hmm. it seems like america is always putting our time talent and treasure into this fighting stuff when it's maybe not the best use of that Mm -hmm. Cool. So that argument is super easy to make. And, and I, I feel like I, if I had to win a debate, I'd want to be on that. It's side. very salient. Like it's a good argument. Yeah. yeah. The other side of the argument looks like this. We have had global peace for a long time. And part of it is because America doesn't let shit like this happen. If Russia invades the Ukraine, China's watching. China very much wants to invade Taiwan. And they'd like to see what happens when you do fuck with another country, like an American ally. You know, like how close is America? Will, will America fight China about Taiwan? Will America fight Russia about Ukraine? If we stop, like you could argue this is a replay of why should we fuck with Germany when they invade Poland or Czechoslovakia? No one really knows what they did first. No, that that seems, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, one <laughs> no, it. it, it I'm not very convinced by the Nazi comparison, frankly. Like, I okay. not only do I, I, Ukraine has nothing to do with me as a normal American person. Us defending the border of Ukraine does not help Americans. And as such, it should not be a priority of the American government. I mean, the, the American government at this point is pretty obvious. They don't really represent us, they, repre res they represent lobbied interests and wealthy corporations and shit. Don't forget but the baby. You, know, you could have made this argument about Poland or what did they do first? The Nazis. What was the first country they Poland? I'm going to bet Poland. Yeah, it was, it was Poland. Okay. Uh, and, and so, like, the, the comparison, it was much more aggressive and the Nazis had a more stated kind of view of what they wanted done whereas with this it's like okay so russia wants to go into ukraine and like re-amalgamate it in and it seems like like half their citizenry pretty much wants that almost oddly enough from from the american right. media perspective we go what how could this possibly be half how almost half their fucking population wants to maintain this well we don't know because it is so distant from us we have no business there same with taiwan i don't care what happens with Taiwan. It is not my business. It doesn't help middle Americans. It doesn't help the opioid crisis in the Midwest. It doesn't help the lack of healthcare crisis around the country. It doesn't help the wages crisis causing people to, to, to not be able to afford basic living expenses with the inflation happening because wages are so stagnated. Like there are so many fucking things we could be dealing oh, with. I hear you, right? Yeah, I, the, I, I, I think you could make an argument that Maybe America defending its own borders should be a good use. A, yeah, better than better some use other country. of money yeah. than Ukrainians' borders, right? Like, I get you. I feel like that's the easy side to win if you're trying to win a debate. But I'm not trying to win a debate. I'm trying to lay out the, the 
you know, for sure, kind of for sure. So, so anyway, um, what happens if Russia invades? It seems like in America, both the Democrats and the Republicans are like, you know, I'm not war, right? Like, do we really want to go? To, look, we don't want them to do it, but not so much that we want to put our time, talent, treasure, and to me, children, fucking 20 year old yeah, children, exactly, because I'm old. Um, in in harm's way that doesn't harm's way sounds benign like this is war these are people who will be uh, dead yeah um, mentally traumatized uh um i'm looking uh, paralyzed you know like like badly mm -hmm. hurt oh, never the same their, their lives will be destroyed over it yeah disabled even the like even the ones with the best of experiences will be fucked with and you mm -hmm. know in their head or physically or whatever all right so um so there are a lot of solid reasons not to do it. What are we going to do? It seems like everyone's on board with sanctions, really strong, aggressive sanctions that could even lead to counter sanctions and a big global like angriness. Mm -hmm. But that's what we're doing. We have thus far done nothing, uh, mostly. And that's because like we still have we all the say, existing sanctions on Russia, right? I'm actually not sure what the state of our oh. sanctions are with Russia. And um, but we haven't changed anything because the idea is like, ah, oh, keep your powder dry. If we do it now, there's a real sense that Russia's gonna be like, Well, fuck it. If you're gonna do it anyway, then I'm gonna do my thing anyway. So 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 far we're just trying to be like, don't it'd be better if you didn't. It'd be better for everyone if you didn't. And yeah. I mean, that, even if like like this is my like, even if the US went in there. Yeah. The U.S. with 20 years and more money than God and everything, they couldn't beat Afghanistan. And you could make arguments that they intentionally lost so they could maintain the goal through the media and politicians of we have to stay here. We have to stay here. We have to make more money. But they they weren't able to win in any meaningful way. What was it? 45 minutes after they they left the Taliban. It, it basically shows they were fighting a ghost shadow war and laundering money. And, I mean, it and, could and, have been an hour. Enriching these. Yeah, it could have been an hour. <laughs> like, no, but, you, but do, like fair, if, if the U.S. military in Afghanistan can't make meaningful uh, foot falls towards progress do you know how bad they will get fucked by rush Russia? is not a jokey a military it's it rush is not a joke military but, but they're, they're, they're not cold where cold war retards they have a think... real ass military not like afghanistan not like the taliban not like these little insurgency groups that the u.s somehow couldn't uproot over 20 years like you really think they're going to go into the the area of ukraine and beat russia no we would lose that conflict Guaranteed. I think you're talking about two different things, though, right? Like, like I don't think the Russia is going to fight the way that Afghan the Afghanistan Taliban. Yeah, they'll did. fight much better with much higher tech resources. I don't think, and we will have point... losses that will no longer be able to be thrown to the media as, oh, we lost twelve people this month in Afghanistan. Oh my goodness, it's so horrible. No, if there's a fight against Russia, it's not going to be reports of twelve people dying. It's going to be reports of. Thousands of people dying, and the American public will not stay on board for that for very long when they realize they're fighting there. Real, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I kind of agree mostly. The, the only thing is, it's not like when you fight a country, you're trying to win every battle because America does that. I'm, we kick the shit out of the Afghanistan's battle by battle, we kick the shit out of Vietnam battle by battle. You're trying to win better yet, you're trying to beat the will of the other country. And it turns out Vietnam, Afghanistan have just wills that are hard to wilt, right? They yeah. just, they, it doesn't matter how they lose every fucking battle. And they're like, I didn't hear no bell. That, that's what it's and, like. And, and they, and they don't even lose every battle. Those are just what we hear about. It's like our pro military propaganda. Like we don't hear about the times that an IUD fucked up a military convoy so bad that they weren't able to deliver a billion dollar worth of resources to Baghdad or whatever the fuck. Like you don't, you don't learn about I that. I guess stuff if you call an IUD a battle, I kind of agree. And that's a yeah. clever way for an underpowered force to, for to sure. Fight. And they all do that. And like yeah, you could, but, you, you um, could predict this will happen again and it would be way more, infinitely more brutal to cross the Russians in a bad way than the Afghanis. It will really suck. Yeah. And, and I think that most Americans, probably including me, are on the, on, um, 
mm -hmm. join you in that thought. Come on, process. what are your, yeah. you play Tarkov? This is literally <laughs> Tarkov unfolding before our eyes. They showed news footage on RT. Was it Russia Today? And, yeah. and there was there was like Russian defenders brace for the wave. And and I looked, and the Russian defender looked like a fucking scab from Tarkov. He had a poofball cap on. He was all <laughs> dirty. His AK barely had like parts on it. It looked. He needs old. to level up. He had like rags wrapped around part of it. It was perfect. They were. It was, <laughs> it was like something out of Comic Con. It was. There were scabs <laughs> defending the border against against what's going to be Russians, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, look. I'm not as like uh, down on the U.S. military, I think, as Taylor is. Uh, Taylor clearly hates the U.S. military. Yes. Um, Lance wow. Corporal Taylor doesn't need, doesn't deserve <laughs> Lance, auto <discount>. Lance, Lance <laughs> Corporal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're going to steal God. valor, you could at least be a little more patriotic. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what, was, what, was, uh, what was the name of that last war we won? Uh, well, World there's War so II many. The big one, the two War. World War Two. I'm more of a fan of battle. <laughs> that, that very recent, 80 years ago <laughs> war, 85 years ago. Well, we yeah. have we even declared war technically in like a long, long. Exactly. No, because no, they don't, don't declare war action. anymore because they found a Congress loophole. So All right, well then, to. don't ask <laughs> questions if the answer is going to be we've won every war we've ever had since, except for like what War of 1812. Uh, you you can't count the Civil War as a win. I count yes, it as a win. I count of a Yankee. No, I'm but like it's still, it was still the country <laughs> fighting. It was still the country fighting against the country. And who so that, won? Yeah, Can't the country. Lose. But who lost? Not the me. country. Not New Jersey. So I think that's a that's a win the and a loss. You can't count lost. that shit. Look, no, look, you, if you count the Confederacy count as, as our country, then you're not an American. That would be like some <laughs> asshole being like, "Oh, no, 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 that doesn't count." That's like saying that like when the National League team beats a National League team, it doesn't count. Come on. Of course it counts. That's how we determine who plays in the fucking World Series. That's right. a win. That's a yes. win. Okay, yes. that's that's a win. So so World yes. War II is the last win. We won the last war we had, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great way to frame it. Yeah, we won the last war we had. You're, you're trying to like count. This would be like counting when Conor McGregor fought that old guy in the bar. Oh, that's a win in his column? No, you don't count that win. And if he'd lost the old man, I've he also heard you wouldn't count, count it as a win. loss. You counted, I counted that, that win. win. <laughs> That's because I'm a Conor McGregor fan, and he deserves that win. Dude, that old man was feisty. Did you see Conor McGregor's Instagram post? I'm sorry to change that. Dude, Conor McGregor <laughs> yeah. is a fucking alcoholic now. Oh, no. He has gained like 40 pounds of body. I'm exaggerating. Oh, Let's say 30 right, pounds on. of body fat. I need photos. He was just laying Instagram. on the back fucking high off his ass, giggling at nothing in a bed. This guy is, he's fucked. And he just put out a post saying, I'm going to stop drinking and get and prepare properly for my next fight. And then he's drunk as fuck. I mean, he, the top he story, big. Conor McGregor confuses fans with long rambling Instagram post. The one I saw wasn't long and it was video. So I might be talking about a different one, but I read it and it said it was like, he was drunk off his ass. And I'm like, well, I'll be the judge of that. You know, people are sensational. I was like, Oh my God, he's so drunk. Uh, dudes. I don't think he's thriving right now. I don't know. I'm, there's a picture of him here. He looks very fit. That's him. That's what he looked Yeah, This is the, I saw it in video form. I remember the ice cream in particular. He's got like his arm around the like, oh, ice cream. Oh yeah. He's got a, he's got an ice know? cream bar. One of those strawberry bars. Those are good. Yes. Yeah. That's what it is. Um, I, I don't know if we can show the video. He deleted it shortly afterwards, but he looks like shit right now. Oh, and if you don't know there. what Connor's supposed to look like, this is a very puffy version of Connor. Yeah. He's he looks great very there. Thin. You know, if you go to his Instagram, you he's, can see pictures of him. He's put on weight, but he is more muscular than he's ever been. Like he's a bigger. I think guy. you're right. Um, I will say sometimes you add a little fat to the same dude, and he just bulks up in an attractive way, almost like. I um, think more plates, more dates did a thing on like Superman, and he's, they're like, "Look how strong he got." And he's like, "He's just fatter," and of course, he's not fat by any conventional standard, mm -hmm. but he, that's what it is. Yeah. Um. <laughs> what are you talking? What are you thinking of Superman? No, no, no. It's, it's um no. okay. So anyway, Ukraine. I feel like there's an easy case to make that it's not worth the cost, <clears throat> and I guess yeah. we'll try and do it with sanctions. And I think that's about the right way to go. If you had your uh, your pick, 
Would you rather have Biden or Trump in this moment? I really don't know. So here, I was thinking to myself, Trump how would, would Trump funny. handle it? Yeah. Right? How would Trump handle it? And and last week or two weeks ago, I thought to myself, what he would do is he would say, invade. I'll step out of the way. Russia, cool. America has nothing to do with this problem, which is one way. Maybe not terrible. Trump also might go like he did on North Korea and be like, I've got a bigger button than you do. Probably not. But but Trump was... One thing Trump did that I kind of like is he didn't tell you what he was going to do. He kept every option on the table. He would never say, like, are you going to use nuclear weapons against this guy? He'd be like, maybe. Why would I tell you I'm not and disarm myself? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, not dumb. You know, Hope not. Respect it. That's a good answer, too. Um but mm-hmm. so what would Trump do against Ukraine? But what's the funniest be, answer? Hang on. What's he, the funniest answer? He wouldn't answer show us cards, I think, right at this point. The it, funniest it, answer to will you use nukes? Hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. I got even better one. That's a oh, that's a great question. I'm very interested by that question. Thank you so much. He's actual actually actually good. I'm oh. gay. <laughs> they <laughs> were like he's like answer. what if north korea launches nukes and he's like well he better not i got a big button too and it's bigger than his button that's the biggest button lots of people talk i gotta use two hands push it down big button size of a table <laughs> he probably doesn't he probably doesn't have tables that size mm-hmm. where he's from that's fine i don't insult other cultures it's just some cultures have better tables than other like he would just <laughs> <laughs> like that's what he would do or i i can see him you're 100 right woody i could see him both doing the or I could see early term Trump being like that has nothing to do with us. We're not doing anything to do with Ukraine. Late term Trump, he'd be like, I have the most nukes, the most missiles. You try it. You try and come to Ukraine, Russia. I'll fuck you up. Like like he would he would be big talking, bloviating that as he is. He could. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know exactly what Trump would have done. Um I do love that Trump literally had a Diet Coke button. Are you guys familiar with this? Yeah, we love the Diet Coke button. I wish I, I had one. I wish I had. Yeah, I would love a Diet Coke. I, I would get a, a cream Woody soda. Woody has ZD one. And I'd be getting that 15 <laughs> times a day. Woody I, literally has I'm one. I'm trying He's to think, it. what would my button? I think I, I, I kind of have a coffee button. I just texted. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've done it twice. Dude, ha- having having a, a, a Diet Coke button is just the fattest thing that you is can it? do. Yeah. It's funny though. Like he made fun of himself. Remember that like 2011 super viral tweet he made or something where he was like, "I've never seen a thin person drinking diet coke," and, like, <laughs> and that's that's all he said. And everyone was like, "That's true. It's before 2015, so we don't know we're supposed to hate this guy yet." That's funny. Like well, it's I didn't like, true. take it as him picking on himself though. I, maybe I missed the. F- Oh, he, oh this I, is I thought he, he would... meant it as like he's yeah. I'm fat too, guys. I'm drinking. I I everybody I knows like that slant. I guzzle I diet coke to see it at the time because everybody knows he drinks a shit ton of diet. He did like presidential addresses with diet coke on his desk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I uh, Mitty has that that one clip it's on the soundboard. Diet soda. It's not even close. Uh, coke Zero is pretty fucking good though. Like they they changed the formula. Diet like, Coke is just boomer fuel. Like they, you know, who changed my it. mind on diet sodas? Now I don't drink diet sodas, but I'm open to them because of Greg Doucette. Apparently, that guy pounds. Like, have you ever seen his shopping? Yeah, it's lots it, of diet soda. I'm the same way. Like, like pieces and diet soda is great. This guy, I order, I order case, 24. Stick to at a time. He'll buy like 150 minus six or whatever. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, you know, like sodas at a time, and it's just like. It's yeah. so much diet. This guy stays hydrated, it would seem, with diet soda. And um, it's like if you need to have some sort of cheat, something sweet, right? Because very few people stay to a truly, truly painful diet all the time. Then diet soda, I guess, is not the worst thing you can do. Yeah, no, it doesn't seem bad at all to me. I mean, and the artificial you know like, sugar is probably I was good looking for at you. I was looking at cereals. Like like different different just different ways to do carbs, because rice and cream of rice get old and uh one of the healthier cereals like, i was shocked is cinnamon toast crunch it's that cinnamon toast crunch compared yeah. to what i didn't wait, see com- that coming compared to what like, like there's less sugar in it like raisin bran <laughs> oh like those little raisins are just covered in sugar i they, thought you were gonna be comparing it to good. like lucky charms no um actually it probably it, it's probably it's definitely healthier than lucky charms because lucky yeah. charms has fucking marshmallow lucky, lucky, lucky charms is just candy 
There's candy in there. Remember when they made Lucky Charms just marshmallows? I'm that, feeling a little called out by this whole conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like Cheerios, no, like like multigrain Cheerios are like the healthiest cereal by far. Like they're, they're disgusting. Nothing. I'm not eating them. Um, well, you know what I do? I put if a you add enough of, sugar, they're good. I put a spoonful of Splenda in there and and my vanilla cashew milk and like you give it a little whirl, throw a little cinnamon in there. You got some nice cereal. You <laughs> add a <laughs> cup of sugar and now you're talking. <laughs> a spoon of Splenda. That's all you need. No, no, no. Do you and then some... when you're done, drink the milk so that sugar. Gets I in. always <laughs> drink the milk. I do, always, do. do you remember that like that office episode where Michael is like drinking scotch sugar? Or, or like and he's like uh, scotch and Splenda. Tastes like Splenda, still still gets you drunk. And then he's like just drinking <laughs> it's drunk like and Splenda and like seeing that clip. I'm like, that is the most woody thing to do with, with <laughs> alcohol. Like if someone's like, what do you have to drink this thing of of whiskey? He'd be like, oh, well, is there Splenda or something? Just Stevia something is my sweetener Stevia? choice, actually. My Stevia favorite my... my favorite Michael Scott thing um, when they're doing the Michael Scott pa- paper company and he's picking them up at like 4 a.m. crack of dawn or whatever. Mm. And uh, she goes, do you have coffee? And he hands her this thermos. He goes, cream and sugar. And she takes it. She goes, oh, thank God. She takes a sip. And she goes, oh, oh <laughs> is this just cream and sugar? <laughs> and, and he goes, that's what I said. You just... <laughs> Every morning. <laughs> Every morning. <laughs> just drinks a container. Have you ever cream had cream and sugar, and sugar like that? <laughs> no, I um, bet it's tremendous. It's amazingly good. So uh, I actually don't put cream and sugar. I put like some sort of almond cream substitute in stevia. But my wife would have cream and sugar in her, in her coffee. And one day she made the cream and sugar first before she added the coffee. Like you would add the coffee to it later. Mm-hmm. And I tried it. And it is very good. It turns out if you have fat and sugar together, it's <laughs> outstanding. It's literally it's ice cream. You yeah, just needed a little bit of vanilla in there. And you just got some ice cold and some mixing. Freeze it. Yeah, yeah. It, that's why. Like, um, I remember when, um, like the Tarkov foods, like, 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 uh, the condensed milk. Whenever he cracks that open and like eats that in the field, I'm thinking like, oh my god, to drink down a whole 16 ounce can of condensed sweetened milk in the you would field. feel so terrible <laughs> like like 40 minutes later. it's interesting because like the way it affects your character your hydration like it's plummeted like like it dries mm-hmm. you out but your energy is off the charts you're just like <laughs> fuck yeah because you just ate a whole can of like melted ice cream yeah. i don't know what condensed milk is like in real life i only know how to use it, in it it's it's just like what kyle said like it's basically yeah, so like i yeah. i've used it in it's like uh, that bacon. astronaut ice cream kind of mm-hmm. no 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 no. It's, it's more not, like it's wet it's a syrup it's on it's like a honey consistency but it's sweetened milk so it's like thick melted ice cream syrup. what do you do with it normally do you it goes it into milk? recipes and like baking recipes and stuff like that as like a you know like a like a sweetening, like a sweetener, flavoring yeah. consistency changing element Sometimes um, in Tarkov, I'll have things like um, most, if people don't play the game, most foods dehydrate you a little bit. So like you eat your food, then you drink your water later and your character's all set. Peas give you a little energy and they hydrate you a touch. Milk does the same thing. So if you combine peas and milk, it does good things for your character. But in real life, that's awful. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know if I can stomach peas and milk in another raid. <laughs> this is getting to be terrible. Yeah, that would be really awful. Um, I think eating that beef stew in the field would be pretty nasty. I think anything but the MRE. Um, MREs are pretty good. In real life? I've never had yeah. an MRE. Yeah, you, really? No, I've never tried an MRE. I think I have. They're kind of fun. Like, like first, first of all, you can order them off of Amazon, and uh, mm-hmm. they come with you know the heating element that you add the water, and it gets all bubbly. And uh, they're you always want them to be more complicated than what they end up being. Like when I watch the MRE guy, um, who we should have on as a guest, I think I, I I'd love to have the MRE guy um, on okay. as a guest. Um, that guy's into fitness too. I don't know if you ever noticed, like like he's fucking yeah, ripped. he he's a fit fella. I've only watched like two videos where I saw him, but yeah, he is. Yeah, uh, um, <clears throat> I always want one like he's got, like some Slovenian like Air Force three day ration. But I end up getting some nonsense off of Amazon, and I end up having like peanut butter crackers with peanuts. That's literally what they gave me. Like, like it's like oh, peanut butter and crackers. Oh, and what else? What else? Peanuts. Okay, and and, and what else? <laughs> Trail mix. That's all peanuts. It was they gave me like three peanut things and some ravioli, and I was that very sucks. upset. I wanted to feel like an army man. 
<sighs> like an army man. <laughs> like he's, I feel like it's the like, all right, this is what America's Department of Defense has put together in terms of food. And you're like, oh, how a clever way to heat up this, or this is what a brownie looks like when you need that brownie to last for 75 years. Yeah, I'm interested in that. Um, and also like <clears throat> how the other countries um, mm. uh, do do things because everybody seems to have like the same idea about forks and spoons, but not everybody has the same idea on the value of coffee. Some cultures clearly or countries, maybe I should say, man, it's the most important. You need like eight different mm. kinds of coffee and three kinds of creamers and four sweeteners in there. We got that. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> like there's not a lot of food left, but it's most it, all right. It's all coffee. It's all there's. Yeah, yes, it comes with a Keurig. Yes, <laughs> like, like there's so much in coffee in, in some of these countries, like like rations, and then like some of them will have like just cans of fish that look so disgusting, and like lots of mm. pate, which isn't really a thing here. I, I I don't think. I think of like potted meat product. How's the American like macro situation? Like, is it all carbs, or do they like get you some? It's proteins? mostly carbs. It's mostly carbs yeah. and fats because there's so much peanuts and so much like, uh, but there's tons of like crackers, peanut butter, um, and, and then the, like the the main that I got was like cheese tortellini or something like that. So it was just like a giant carb bomb. I didn't eat most of it. It was just I was like, how many peanuts am I going to sit here and eat before I'm satisfied that I've got the whole thing down? I think I know what they're all going to taste like. Yeah, that's how I was with the grasshoppers. I got a couple, <laughs> and I, I get the full grasshopper experience. I finished the tortilla. Yeah, I, I would. I, I'm interested. Um, it, I would have done that too, uh, just to just to get the experience. But I hope that you were like, yeah, give me, give me one grasshopper taco and three chicken tacos. <laughs> <laughs> it was a plate full of grasshoppers. You make it yourself. So I saw an article on Reddit that said that people are more attractive in masks. And uh, I agree. At first, I questioned it, and then I was like, you know, I kind of see it. I feel like I substitute whatever's under that mask for something good. Mm -hmm. Which mask makes you look the best? The article said it was the blue surgical one. You can probably imagine it. Okay, yeah. I I, I kind of need to see it, but it's not what I would have picked. I would have picked like the. The Formula One black mask, like I'm a big fan of those. I think they're very attractive. What's the what mask do you want to look good in? Like, what mask would make you look good? I don't know, but I've said before I wear what I've been told is a douchey mask, that like gator thing. Um, and I, I wear it for a couple reasons. Like, if I'm wearing it, I'm probably outdoors, Ooh. right? And it's gonna be fucking cold. I was wearing it outside at an event the other day and. I was really glad that I had the mask I had because it was like a neck warmer at the same time. I don't know. I don't even see mine on the thing. Mine is just a big black tube that I slide over. Yeah, my maybe number eleven, but black. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, exactly. Probably. I think the article felt like number one made people the most attractive. I think number two makes people the most attractive. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah. Maybe I don't not. know. I, I tell you what, I don't like 14 because it has, here's the thing. Here's the difference. Here's what I think is happening. When you see one and two, you think doctor, nurse, and like maybe athlete in your case. Um, mm -hmm. I think when you see 14, you think, yeah, get the Destruction. leaves too. Get the leaves too. <laughs> yeah, you're right, right. Yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. The leaves too. So when I was in Mexico, I don't know how to describe it, but I had a big white one that worked well because I was going to be on like planes for so long and I was in Mexico. I didn't want to get COVID in Mexico. So the one I wear around here is maybe like a little fucking Republican. It's a cloth mask that looks and feels good. The one I wore on my trip was I, I chose it to be. Uh, efficacious, right? I chose it to actually fucking work. I actually have a lot of those, uh, like like number ten and number six are identical to me. Um, but like okay. the ones that have that, like, yeah, right. that are really expansive in a way that they don't seem like they're gonna like. Like I like those too. I lost the, the ones and, that I had. Are, like are that. you guys talking about the the difference in these? Like what? Uh, we we started with which one makes you most attractive, but um, in Mexico, mm -hmm. I chose this one that I thought would work really well. I think it might have been M95 or something because they're dirty fit tight and i was gonna be on a plane for so long and i didn't want to get covid and like rely on the mexican health system to nurse me back who knows what fucking witchcraft um, but where i was headed with this is it didn't touch my lips 
and I could talk better. And I've learned, like, wow, so all this time I've been wearing a mask, I've been trying to be heard doing <laughs> one of these things. Yeah. And then when there was a little space next to my mouth, it's not the most handsome look, but I can speak better. And like, like number oh, two you're talking about? I might which, value that. Which, which I, I don't see a perfect parallel. Is it the one that, like, sticks out from your face? and like A tiny like, bit. Yeah, like it's that, not too yeah. super extreme, but there's an element of that, yeah. Okay. Because I really don't like the the ones are the ones I use all the time if I have to use them. But those ones, they make you look terrible. Well, it's also just because I'm fat. And so like I'll, I'll look at myself in the mirror with that mask and be like, yeah, so the, that's the criminal here. Can, not can me. I jump in on you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, the article I read said number one makes you look the best. And I wouldn't have guessed that. But yes. when I saw the pictures, I was like, I kind of see it. No, no. Okay. If, if one of them makes you look the best, it's like, I can't exactly see what's going on with number two because there's like a fold on the right and it's kind of dark on the left. But if it's one of those that's more angular, that one looks better for sure. Like the more rigid one, whereas the the blue one just kind of folds and just just kind of muffles around you. You know, like there's there's not a lot of form fitting there. So I would definitely just who the fuck were they asking? Like for number, <laughs> I think it for was number a one. Survey. I think Zach's about to show the one I wore on the plane. It's not exactly it, but it's close enough that you'll get the idea. You've probably seen him before. Yeah, yeah it was something like that. Jesus, oh. that mannequin is terrifying. <laughs> it's a terrible Look mannequin. at those eyes. Is, so it, is that like a dummy at like a esthetician <laughs> school Dude, for makeup? Exact, no, no, that's what they would look like when I buy them. I would buy mannequins that look exact. They'd always had these ridiculous. Those are real lashes. Those are. Oh, for on. your gun channel. I thought yeah, you were yeah, admitting yeah. to something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, my friends. That's his cover. Um, so yeah, that mask is super attractive, but it fit well on my face. I, when I wear most masks, low key, I know the air is coming in right here, like below my eyeglasses if I have them on. Yeah. Uh, when I wore this, the air was like, and when I inhaled it, it fit to my face and kind of suctioned and the air was coming through the mask, not around it. That's good. This and one that, looks too duckish. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Th and this one's a little more duckish than mine was. You look like you're but... hiding the fact that you're from another planet. Yeah, you look like you have a jaw problem and you're taking advantage. No, of you, like he's got tusks. <laughs> like he's got tusks that he wants to conceal. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's about COVID, not my tusks. <laughs> but I, I don't know if you hear when I was saying it. The fact that it didn't touch my lips made me speak much better. I didn't realize. Yeah, how... that's a downside of the thing that I wear. But I really, I really like how warm it keeps me. It's like a, and when I like pull it down, now it's like a, it looks like a scarf, so it's like I don't know. I don't have some. Do nasty... the do the places around you guys even have like mask required signs and shit anymore? Or no, because um, around here there's very little of that now. Well, I, I do it regardless because I go to some places that are like really populated and like like big crowds, and then I go to like uh, a hospital a couple times a month to do some stuff there. So I end up around scary stuff so i wear my mask well I, I know you have to go like wear it at the hospital like that's a place where like they're yeah they're a stickler you know. about that well, in my course. area yeah the bigger the it organization is. the more likely it needs a mask obviously hospital i think i've ruined kyle's joke i'm sorry um but like a grocery store is going to require a mask too if it's some international chain that sells like kids toys like learning express we probably need a uh -huh. mask but if it's like the quickie mart at the gas station you don't um but Other grocery little, stores like, around you still do? Yeah. They never did. Interesting. Really? That to me is like... <clears> or, <throat> so like, I live in Georgia. Uh -huh. And down here in Georgia, we don't believe in masks. Uh, we have not mm -hmm. had to wear masks. Um, I don't... I've been told to wear a mask once, ever, um, outside of the hospital. Um, mm -hmm. And it was... It was when I went to fucking Comcast like place to get a, a new like modem because mine like fried that mm -hmm. morning and I was like obviously we're not going without internet and I, I walked in I, I had left my mask at home he's and, and he's they they freaked the fuck out like do you have a mask and I'm just like I left it at home I'm here for the modem I need at it now Comcast mm -hmm. they freaked out yeah they like there was a very effeminate black man behind the counter and he was not having me me coming in there unmasked but he he found a mask for me and I put it on. And uh, that ties into my big organization thing. Only like, time. It, like Comcast doesn't surprise me that they required masks. But if you went to like whatever Joe's Quickie Mart, he probably lets it slide. Yeah, like the local Publix, Walmart. Of, I can't remember the last time a gas station like Quick Trip had like oh, wear a mask no. in here. Like they, they haven't had that in I like, do. 
all, all of employees might have one. Like, yeah, I was like living in, and I'm sure Kyle was the same, like living in Georgia, like living in Missouri, like even throughout 2021, they're like, it's getting serious. Everybody's going to got to wear the mask and shit. And like, you'd go out and like, you'd be like, oh, I saw online how serious everybody's taking this. And then you like walk to the grocery store and it's like, I'm not going to be the weirdo wearing a mask. Like, like with, with no, like, 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 people like just to be clear, that. I wear mine at the grocery store. What I'm, what I'm getting at though, is there's no requirement. Like, like there's no requirement at all. I think you'd be called out in my area if you didn't at really? the grocery store. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To me, it's, I'm surprised to hear this because to me, grocery store is like one step under hospital in terms of always being on the mask train. No, Not like here. most like er, early on in COVID, everybody was wearing their mask like throughout like, like most of 2020 in g- grocery stores. But it seemed like it died off like very early 2021 around here where it was like, eh, whatever. I'll tell you what immediately died off. Like, like, and I liked it for a long time. They had the one way lanes in the grocery stores. Uh, like, like, and, and I was just like, I never experienced that. Really? So Wait, we, so you mean like you're like. They, you can like only go and, one way. That's and, actually and pretty land. convenient. Yeah. So so and that was oh. meant for COVID. Oh so no no, it's actually not people. good because like then you go in the Mexican aisle and you want salsa. You're going through the salsas on the other side. You're not allowed to you go. Have, so you, now you, you now you have to double you have to back and, and double yeah. lane it. So that's yeah. actually shitty. I don't like that. Wait, what? Because you're not allowed to go north down the salsa aisle. The salsa aisle is south southbound traffic only. So if you want to get back to the sauce aisle, you're gonna to have to take the 405 yeah. over to the coffee, head head north up that, <laughs> make the right. <laughs> but wait, I just don't get it. Salsa town. Are you saying if you pass your salsa, you have to do another lap? Or yeah. like, it's so like the problem uh, is you forgot it the first time. Yeah, so you're, you're no, 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 no. It's not that he's forgetting it, Woody. It's like imagine you're walking through an aisle and you're on the right side of traffic, and the salsa you want is on the left show. No, 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 no. All right, so you've misunderstood as well. Oh, okay. God damn it. This is so simple. You can only go in one direction <laughs> in an aisle. Oh, so you okay. have access to both sides. You have access to both sides. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, this is a much better system than the nonsense I yeah, made Taylor, up. Taylor, the point it. is you can maintain social distancing by going in the same direction. If there's crossing like this, then you're next to people that you otherwise wouldn't have to be. Well, that's why it was such a dumb idea that I made up. <laughs> <laughs> no. but anyway kyle continue I, so you're going through I, your no, one-way was, traffic there's nobody nobody wants to do it anymore and i liked it so much because it kept kept you from getting jammed up with people and inevitably someone turns their fucking cart sideways and it's all blocked up and the guy's trying to put more cans on the aisle and i, I just want to get to the salsa i Dude, eat a you, lot of salsa there's you, not many calories live, in it you live near a bunch of retards you have people turning their cart sideways in the aisle the old ladies and shit like Dude. like like Georgia That's is so Florida rude. adjacent. Of course, there's retards there. They leak over. Turning we're, sideways we're in the six aisle. hours away. Okay, where I am, I'm six hours in Florida. Also, you you guys <laughs> can't be talking about rudeness. You both admitted that you aren't cart people. You don't return your carts every. All right, time. hang Sometimes on. You no, guys no, no, leave no, no, your no, no, carts no. in the middle of the fucking road. There are occasions <laughs> in which it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Kyle. I've Kyle never done that. Kyle Do you doesn't always think I've entered a grocery store for <laughs> a large amount of groceries? I, I just look for a healthier is. alternative to restaurant food. Dude, Woody like goes into grocery stores and is surprised when like versions of Lay's that were canceled in 2015 are no longer available. You can't find Listerine strips anymore. They're gone. <laughs> Dude, genuinely like 2015 is when those went away. <laughs> like the- I've been looking all I found them online or something. I like those. <laughs> those, those like little little tabs that you put on your tongue and you're like oh oh it's too intense it's so intense oh well hopefully my breath is good now <laughs> yes yeah, smart mouth needs to get on the listerine strip train exactly get on it but imagine that they'll have like two strips that combine in your mouth to create a formula to be oh, like, like, like a stingy <laughs> one on the top one on the bottom and let let the magic happen Infusion. i want it to be like pop rocks i want like a smart mouth that comes in a pouch like pop rocks and like like, like when i when i have bad breath but I don't even have time for a liquid. I, I need a dry source of mouth refreshment. Mm-hmm. That's a good idea. And you know what? Like Pop Rocks themselves, where did they go? I where haven't they seen, go? I haven't seen a container of Pop oh, Rocks. Oh, they exist. Are they still Pop around? Rocks. Yeah. They used to have them hanging. Kids in the love group. them. I remember like at the grocery store, you would go through that aisle, like the final like checkout aisle, and there would be that like uh, clip strip of them hanging there, the little strawberry ones. 
No, oh, not the, not the I'm, fun dips. I'm the, sorry, uh, I'm thinking of the fun dips, but but the pop rocks are obviously yeah. good, though. The, 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 they pop and shit. Yeah, yeah. Pop rocks is the way to go. I loved pop. Let me ask pop you rock. this: What the fuck is that spoon for the fun dips made out of? It's made sugar. out of uh, sugar. Yeah, it's it's just <laughs> sugar candy. <laughs> yeah, is it really? Yeah. I dude, do you know? Away. Dude, I I can't believe I'm remembering. <laughs> Wait, you, you, you you threw <laughs> it away. What are you a fucking retard? That was half the candy in the whole thing. Yeah, you, no, no. You get it wet. You you dip it, dip it. When it's done, you eat the. What spoon. were you licking on your finger, you mongoloid? <laughs> fool. <laughs> I think I just emptied the pouch into my mouth like a monster. <laughs> dude, this is this is so. It, it's so funny you mentioned that because I was gonna say a second ago. I remember. From grade school, this kid who was dumb, not quite, not quite as fucking retarded as you apparently, because he still realized he realized that the dipstick was candy, and so he would crunch through. He would put the whole dipstick in his mouth, crunch through it, and then he would tear off the top and pour all the candy powder in his mouth. And I was always like, Josh, like you're wasting all of your candy experience in like two seconds on the playground. Like you could be. You could be enjoying candy all throughout history class or whatever, like, or, or whatever fucking classes they have when you're nine. Yeah, Kyle, you, you you ate that like a fool. You're throwing, you were like, throwing away candy like a like a like a dunce. You didn't I notice thought, how when you suck on it, it gets smaller. Like I never candy sucked candy? on it. Like like like, like why? Uh, yes. You gotta suck on it. <laughs> I never, yeah. I didn't Kyle. see the point. I thought it looked like a piece of. Just like open those clay. pretty little lips and suck mm -hmm. on it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I thought it was like a piece of clay or something. Or you know how like those Science little, is a those special little bottles come in those. Suck on it. I just let it exist in my no, mouth those, for a those... longer period of time. <laughs> you know the little wax bottles that had <laughs> those. The those inside? are those are terrible. I hated those wax bottles. It's called spoon warming, and it's nice. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> What is this bit you're doing? <laughs> it's getting weird. Kyle, did you did you actually there, like there those people out there that get this? Did you actually like that wax shit? Because that was like even that was like on the same tier. Of no, candy no, no, no. As like what I was doing was I was comparing the empty wax bottles to that dippy spoon thing. That's what oh. I that's how I thought of it. I thought of it as like edible trash. No, no, it, it's it's just sugar water with glycerin hardened i would assume well i gotta go get me one of those i want to know what they taste like i don't know if they even do they make fun dip anymore? oh they make fun dips how could they stop because like fun dip is also one of those candies that like is in the realm of a good and plenty you know like Ooh. think of how many like good and plenty to the time fun dips came out bunch of good candies couple of bad candies then fun dip comes out and think of between fun dip in 1994 or whatever it was and now the Reese's Fast Break has come out in that time. They revolutionized yeah, the chocolate and peanut butter. The Nutrageous. They 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 did all that sorts was ninety seven. Yeah, yeah. Well, we all know <laughs> it was it was a it was a good year. Find yeah. out if I'm right about that. I gotta be close. I gotta. What's be the candy? And Nutrageous. Nut I'm guessing Nutrageous is more like a tw two thousand ten candy bar. And this will 97, show 97 who is, who is, is the fattest. Ninety four. Oh, I'm close. That didn't wait. Not rageous. Yeah. Fuck, man. I yeah. just remember eating them in Pretty 1997. Because I, I remember my dad had a uh, a blue F-150, and it was the 1997 body style. I can picture it. And I remember like, I remember eating that not rageous candy bar as a kid. And it was fucking delicious. I'm so hungry right now. I want, I, I want candy so bad. I, the Reese's Fast Break came out in 2002, which which gels. This makes sense now. Okay. Be because I remember, like, what's the best playground candy snack? Even playground Third, candy or snack? Playground remember, candy or uh, snack? I remember thinking like I was so like cool and manly one time on the playground, jerky. Uh, because I had jerky. Exactly, I had like some some Jack Links pepper jerky in a container, and and everybody else was like having their their juice boxes, and I'm like, no, dude, I'm the I'm eating Pringles. meat. Pringles are Pringles. Awesome. Pringles. What fl what flavor? What flavor? All of them, but I'll say barbecue for the purposes of Ew, that's the oh, flavor. Fuck you. Oh. Only Swing, cheddar. Only Swing cheddar. and a miss <laughs> on the, bl on the I'd bl rather have pizza <laughs> flavor than that. No. <laughs> oh, no, and, and pizza flavor was actually what flavor good. Are you picking, Pizza's, pizza's okay. I like pizza. I'm going sour cream and onion because the problem with sour cream and onion is, is that, that you you're not an adult and you can't handle it. Yeah. 
<laughs> sour cream and onion is amazing for like a third of a tube but if you're a whole tube guy you get burns and like you're injuring yourself yeah that, you like, have to play through the pain if you want to get to where i if you want to get all, to where i if you want to get to to my way i don't you know what play pringles so pringles I'm, I'm i'm pretty sure that the way they make pringles involves like puree like making potato powder and it's then a it's pressing a, that it's a into a chip Wait, it's not a potato chip in the making of a pringle Thousands. yeah yeah but but they they, they <laughs> turn them into like a goo right and their potato like, children the are raped pringles pringles <laughs> pringles are the mcdonald's chicken nugget of the of the potato chip chip world they I, are the trashiest of chips because they are not a true chip all the other chips yeah, being called are out. a slice no of need potato for this. that has what been is with fried this chip judging i salted i agree the, 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 the actual reason, potato and, and help, chip. let me talk to you about why sour cream and onion pringles taste that way Preach you ever me. see that white powder white powder that's in there that's like all over your hands uh, is it, yeah all that white powder all over it <laughs> Are you, what do you the have with your potato the white chips? Powder. There's white powder all over them. That's white powder. White powder. Coke, white powder. Coke, right? I get it. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, I, I I know what you're saying. But I feel like you are throwing the entire Pringles brand under a bus where it belongs. A lot of their chips are bad. Sure, all of their chips are bad. They can't compete with they the leave crunchers. A bad taste. They, 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 they they use some they can't sort of weird oil. With the kettle cooked. The kettle cooked. That's a different thing. They can't compete with that. The nice sour cream and onion Pringle is not bad. It's, bad. it's not as it's not as good as even a Lay's uh, sour oh, cream and so onion. Wrong. Because you're Lay's so wrong. is better. You don't Lay's like Lay's. Make Everything that Lay's has is better than everything that anything that Pringles has. The yeah, only, no, no, no. I was, I was agreeing that the Lay's all, sour cream is better. You're wrong. First, you probably <laughs> eat sun chips. I don't eat sun chips, you fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> See, telling a man, saying that a man likes sun chips is the worst thing you can say about a man. Like, that, <laughs> you like those crackly worthless. bags, don't that you, you bitch? That he has no honor. <laughs> <laughs> of course, they call him a punk ass bitch. Even. No, do you remember that? Do you remember, uh, this was like from like 2005 or something when Sun Chips, like in my memory, were start, starting to get, to, to get huge. And there was a family guy making fun of it where Stu was like, I'm just going to eat Sun Chips. They're good for you. And he's holding it. He's like, oh, no, they are not. Like, like, <laughs> like looking at the back of it, like, no, it's just fucking chips. It's the same as vitamin water. Sun Chips are just what was why, why was the bag so loud? Were they trying to revolutionize? Bags it, it was it was literally a recycling thing i remember because i went to the store when they first came out with it and like was gonna buy one and it sounds like you're robbing them when you pick up a bag <laughs> because it's so loud and it you says on the back sun chips. oh no and it says on the back like notice something about our bag and it's like what that it's wildly inconvenient for the consumer no it's for <laughs> it's it helps to uh, get six packs off of turtle heads or something and it's like i don't even know if we're benefiting I don't. I don't. <laughs> Taylor, win. Taylor views turtles like the Ukraine. Like, what's in it for me to get I, the fucking bottle of things? Ev- the success. way I see it, every conflict on Earth is a zero sum game, and and I am the one to gain by it not happening. And so that's how I see it. But yeah, that shit's. I like absurd. Funyuns. Uh, Funyuns oh. were like, like when I was a kid. When I was what? when I was in second grade. Oh, okay. Not Funyuns. You, fan. Not not anymore. No, I haven't had a. Were, were you a were you a fat little second grader? No, I didn't get chubby until I went to uh, like homeschooling and like I was oh. hanging around with dad all day. And like, you know, you just got access to anything because like I mm-hmm. I was a grown man. Right. You know, I had you know, I'm, I'm working every day and I had money to spend. And so I could buy my own fucking yeah. snacks when I wanted to. And so I got chubby doing that. Like there's some pictures of me like deer hunting and I've got like the deer's antlers. I'm holding them up and I got them big old um, little chubby cheeks. And I'm, like, I'm like 13 or 14 or something like that. Um, that, that was those were good times though. I really enjoyed those those couple of years I was homeschooled. I should have just done the rest. Those are you should have just done it. But I need to get back to the the pressing issue. What I was what trying to chips, get us away from the fucking chips, man. I'm not gonna let it happen, man. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna keep talking about chips. What other than crunchers and kettle cooked are the premium chip for you? Because like I feel like if you include the kettle cooked that stuff that is a true. Well, there's like thirty different chip. brands of like 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 the kettle cooked chips. Yeah, but I do yeah, like yeah, those yeah. a lot. I like Lay's. Like like original Lay's are really fucking good to me. Like totally I like, agree. Bud. They're delicious. That's like, like 
<laughs> it's bullshit chip. It's mainstream. Oh, it's it's the original your basic Lays, bitch chip. Basic the original chip Lays is here. still around for a reason. It's delicious. It, you know what flavor it, it is? Like bud is delicious. Salt. salt. Yeah. yeah, I love salt. <laughs> I fucking love salt. I like salt and grease. I like and you know salt what the best part is? Here's my yeah, the oil. I was gonna get to that. Yes. Here's how you know you got a Lay's chip. Every now and then you get a bite, and there was like a bubble in that chip that had a little oil in it. You get a little mouth, little 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 mouthful of the straight up vegetable oil. And you're just like, mm, that's the good chip. It's that so chip good. was holding that oil for me for weeks and weeks. I that's haven't had chips in a while, oil. but Jesus, I you haven't had chip. chips in a while. I've I don't had... remember my last chip. Uh, I have had a real go around the past month or two with goldfish. I've been eating. <laughs> I keep telling myself that I'm not eating cheese. It's and I haven't had a cheese it in a long time, but I have eaten. <laughs> how, how many calories of cheese? It's are in those giant boxes that they bring to like kindergarten classes for snacks for kids. <laughs> <laughs> because I need you to double that because I ate two of them. because I found it on Amazon that you can order boxes those big giant boxes of goldfish to your house and so I did and I've been just mowing through them goldfish are so you put the goldfish in a snack. bowl and then bring the bowl to where you're sitting yes and then you get up over and over and over <laughs> and over I, I've 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 been in the, like I'm I'm like stoned as shit late at night like walking over with my little dish of goldfish, and then mm -hmm. it's like I black out and I reappear and the box <laughs> is there, <laughs> and, and like I'll like I'll finish my little bowl of goldfish and be like oh that was a good little snack and then just immediately dump 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 more <laughs> in it's like this isn't actually. My grandmother uh, always had goldfish at her house. I like, like, like that's one of the things I remember about like being there. It was like there'd be gold. I bowl, love bowl. goldfish. There'd be the bowl of goldfish and like Coca Cola in the can for uh, like like movie nights, and and we'd it, there would always be uh, and those Werther's originals. But I don't. I'm not a big goldfish fan. I I like the Cheez Its better. I think or cheese nips, whichever. They that's that's a fun take. Me. Definitely not nips. Cheez Its. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. And uh, it's funny we're talking about this landmark. I, I stopped watching him last night because he, he stopped playing Tarkov <laughs> because and, and did a chip tier list. Like, this is completely unrelated. I just remembered this. Like, he uh -huh. was like, all right, here we go. And he had ordered like 35 bags of rare potato chips and he had a big overlay and he was going to like place them in tiers. Like, like it's a good bit. I, I like figured it. I'd come back for the video and watch it later. I don't know what he agreed on, but um, dude, that sounds like so much fun. So 4,000 <laughs> calories in that container you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't think it would be that many. That's, that's <laughs> quite a few. I did eat two, and if I and I lied, it was over the last three weeks. <laughs> oh, so you've had 8,000 calories now. worth of goldfish over the last three weeks? Yeah, yeah. It'll single-handedly make you over two pounds heavier, just those. That, I don't like that math, but it checks out. <laughs> I'm looking at snacks right now. That's what I'm doing. Have you ever had the uh, the chicken in a biscuit crackers? Oh my god, I could eat whole boxes of that. I love oh, chicken in uh, a biscuit. Every once in a while, when I'm high as shit, I go to the store and I get chicken in a biscuit, and I bring that whole box home and I eat it. Oh. So I'm is it safe them. to assume that chicken in a biscuit crackers are a good source of protein? Because it says chicken in the name. There's no chicken in good, them. It's a I, good source of salt. Oh, <laughs> I, I remember when um, there was a comet um, that, that was passing by when I was like maybe a 13, 14, 15, something like that. And it was one of those once every 80 years, like maybe it was Haley's, Haley's or something. Haley's comet, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and so I camped out in the backyard all night on the deck of our pool. Um, I was like threw some blankets and like pillows out there and I had a box of those chicken and a biscuit crackers and like I just remember like being out there all night like watching the thing and thinking like pay attention you're never going to see this again and uh, it, it was pretty underwhelming looking back it just looked like a comet you know like you've but you still movies. got to enjoy your chicken and a biscuit they were crackers. delicious and my dog like slept out there under the blankets with me and he was eating them too it was a good night they're so good they're really they, good they, they do like they, chicken. they're like uh, they, they taste like a piece of cracker or bread that you dipped into chicken noodle soup yeah they have it's like you dried chicken noodle soup and made it a seasoning mm -hmm. yeah. and put it Doesn't on crackers sound, well maybe it is that does sound it's good. very good because it's so like you can have chicken you know it's good for you but this what? is so salty and so savory like it's it's like doubly as savory as the common cracker it's a little like ramen noodles seasoning like like that really salty mm -hmm. chickeny flavor it's uh it's pretty good 
Um, what do you think about those um, the the dill pickle lays? I'm looking at those on here. I, I I'm a huge fan. I love the dill pickle lays. I think they're underrated. There are times where I've gone to to friends' houses to like watch a blues game or a sports game, and they say like bring some chips. And so like my idea of that is I always buy I, I bring like a big thing of the original lays because those are always a big hit. Everybody likes those, but I also get the pickle ones. And some people just don't like the pickle ones. It's a love hate thing. Like, I love the pickle ones. A lot of people don't. But those same people hate pickles. What about ketchup? Only weirdo. Ketchup chips, don't care for it. I don't don't feel like it tastes Mm. like ketchup at all. It Hmm. it just doesn't. Like, ketchup is not a salty flavor. Dill pickle, very salty flavor. And so it mashes well with a chip. I... I can't have too many of them, but the vinegar, the salt and vinegar chips. Yeah, those are solid. Top tier. Yeah. Now, if you buy, for example, a large bag to keep you awake while taking a long drive, you can regret it. Yeah. Like, your tongue. But yeah, by the end of one of those, like you take a drink of water afterward and like then you realize how raw the top of your tongue is because it burns a little bit in yeah. the little areas where you chew getting roughed up by the salt. I the, the tip of my tongue does that all the time with goldfish. Because oh, I take the goldfish the and then I put it in my joke. mouth and I lick the salt off and then I crack it in half and then I chew one one half on each side of my mouth. And this then is I good. You like take that. your time. That way you don't eat too many. No, Dude, you wouldn't believe Rito. how fast I am. <laughs> 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 you'd be blown away at my speed. You'd be like watching you know, Henry Ford unveil the fucking uh, factory. <laughs> making <laughs> Fritos do that. Fritos have like a terrible shape. And, and then they, they even make those Fritos that are like, like a curly cue uh, that are just made to like, like you throw a handful of those in your mouth, you might bite one that's like straight up and down, like how they how they like stop a giant snake in a movie. Yeah, and like those Fritos. are just chili cheese. Fritos yes. are good. The chili um, cheese ones, you know, yeah. Fritos will are a lot of food. They're probably a lot of calories. I don't know the nutritional information, probably. but um. I feel like I could have a bag of potato chips and this is like a little snack machine bag. Mm. And by the end of it, I haven't had really any notable food. It was just a bunch of air and a half empty bag and it kind of sucks. Fritos on the other hand, you have some of those and you fill up like Fritos are solid amount of food. They are definitely more solid than Lay's. Because Lay's Mm -hmm. just come apart in your mouth almost because there's so much oil in there. Fritos... Lays are, are fronting over the amount of food you're actually getting. They they, they take a mm-hmm. if you were to take lays and, and try to compress them, you'd have a, a little like a like a brick of it, yeah. worth of food, like a very little. But Fritos, if you compress those, you'd have a you'd see what I'm talking about. I haven't eaten Fritos as just like a ch- snack chip before. I always think of Fritos as like what you put in chili and stuff. Oh, well. or maybe that's oh. different. No, Kyle, do you ever do you ever just eat Fritos as, as a snack chip? If I were if I'm buying Fritos, it is because I'm doing some sort of like Frito and chili type pairing. Wow. Honestly, I would never buy them otherwise because they just taste like corn and salt to me. It, if, here's taste, here's the scenario: you're staying in a hotel, you're actually hungry, and there isn't like food available or anything. You have to go mm-hmm. to the vending machine. Mm-hmm. That's all you have. There's a bunch of different kinds of potato chips, but you know that's fake volume. Th- those are nearly empty bags filled yeah. with the food that is basically air. Then you get there's the Fritos, and that's actual. You you won't be hungry at the end. Fair. I mean, in that Fair. situation, I think you're right. Fritos are definitely heartier than Lay's, probably because Frito has corn in it, which is a heartier food than than Lay's. But I don't know. I I just have never wanted a Frito. I've craved the Lay's. chili cheese ones though. I, can, I, I can, don't even want those. I, cause, and you know what? You know why I don't? Because I remember taking road trips with my younger brother, and my younger brother loves chili. And so he would buy these chili cheese Fritos, and his breath would fill up the entire fucking car, and it would smell <laughs> rancid after Pungent he eaten aroma. those chili cheese Fritos. And I don't and like chili because I don't like beans. I remember one the what? reason I, I – No, this, this is I, – I, it was talking about this with my wife like a few months ago that I realized why I like don't like beans really is she was like, why did you ever like have an experience? And I was like, well, I mean, there was that one time at dinner when I was a kid with, with chili, but I don't know. She's like, well, tell me about that. And I was like, well, yeah, I was, I was a young kid at dinner and my, my, my parent, my mom made chili and I didn't like chili. I didn't like hate it the way I do now. Like I didn't like it. 
and it wasn't my favorite. And so I sat down and I started to eat some and then I feel felt like I was going to throw up. Like I, I just randomly felt like, you know, how fucking seven year olds are just randomly like, oh, I am feeling like I'm going to vomit. And I was like, I feel like I'm going to throw up. And I was sitting there in front of my fucking chili. Everybody else at the table's gone because my dad has already made the decree that you I cannot get up until the chili's finished. And I would not eat it because I felt so bad. And I remember sitting there and I like took another bite of this getting cold chili, very uh, probably cold by now. And then I just vomited what the chili I'd eaten like back into the bowl and was like so afraid of my dad being upset with me that I was like more willing to take my chances with the, the fucking vomit in my, my bowl than I was like him getting mad at me. And I remember like thinking about eating that next. and being what like, I just, next, can't, I, I went to bed without dinner. <laughs> I, I, I went to bed without dinner because he was like, you're going to eat that until like, you're going to finish your dinner. I threw up and he's like, you're going to finish. And I was like, oh, I'm going, uh, I'll go to bed without dinner. I'm you sorry. Know, I'm so sorry. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, I'm sure there's plenty of times when like my dad, like freaked out and he shouldn't have, but it was never at dinner between you spilling the milk and this one having to eat his chili. Y'all had some traumatic <laughs> dinner <laughs> experiences. I, 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 I've had, look, I've been yelled at and scolded and dad's had to apologize to me before, but not at dinner. God damn, boys. Oh, I've, been, I've been spooked at many times. Just to, not quite like Woody. Woody's dealt with some some very real, real shit. Well, I'm sorry to both of you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'm hope, fine. I, I hope someday, I hope Look someday at how well can, adjusted I am. You should see every time. Every time. Dude, Taylor no, he he still finishes his meals to this day. <laughs> every time. <laughs> a bowl of chili vomits now. He can't. I, 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 I can't eat chili. I can't. Really? I, I have trouble like eating beans. I just get like that texture makes me want to vomit now. And it's not because oh, of the taste. Wow. It's not because of any of that. I just I really have an aversion to Does that. Does your dad know he ruined chili for you? Uh, no, because there have been times where like, this is funny. Like I, there have been, like, I was coming back from, I think it was a time I, I, when I, in 2015, when I moved back from Idaho and he like, was like, Oh, we're all having dinner at my house tonight. And it's like, Oh, okay, great. And it's like, we're having chili. And it was like, uh, and then immediately like my, my, I, I get a little anxious because I remember that experience and I did not, I don't want to repeat that. And so I, I will, if there is chili being served, I will eat nothing, which is a, which you may underestimate as a feat for me <laughs> to, 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 to yeah, truly people, eat nothing. We, we had like a viral video where I didn't like Jackie's chili and people assume I hate chili. Like I'll, I'll go to like parties and stuff and they're like, there's chili here, Woody. I dare <laughs> you. It's like, no, I, I like most chili. You don't understand how bad the chili <laughs> is. <laughs> My wife, she can't cook. <laughs> she fucked up the chili it's just beans and spices and ground beef what'd she no, do to be, to be fair like the only thing that i've ever had that jackie cooked was that breakfast casserole and it was Ooh, fucking that's amazing. good stuff yeah that, that, that's her fucking a game clearly uh, i don't know about <laughs> chili but um um chili i've always found to be like one of the easier things to make it's one of those recipes where it's like what do you like in your chili Oh, uh, you know, whatever. No, no, no. Seriously, you like corn? Because we throw that right in there. It makes no difference. It'll be corn. It'll be corn chili now. You like jalapenos? Like whatever. Cilantro, sour cream, cocoa powder. I put cocoa powder in mine. She likes her own chili, and and it's hitting her personal bullseye. It's just not mine. Shit. Yeah. I I make mine over the course of like eight hours, and uh, it's um I I like I'm good. Gosh, it's a full time job to make chili around Kyle's house. Well, I mean, it's this, mostly slow cooking by itself. It's slow cooking by itself, yeah, for the most yeah, part. I, take like, like, for like, that. Like, I worked with computers. I kind of was work. sitting uh, over this hot instant pot for six hours. <laughs> <laughs> caramelizing onions can be kind of like that. Like, like if if you're like legitimately caramelizing onions appropriately, then you're stirring onions for like half an hour or something like that, and like you can't stop. Not for more than, not for more than a minute without fucking something up. Mm -hmm. anyway that's probably a wrap right i i enjoyed our guest i'm glad we got sean uh back on again Dude. um yeah. gotta do man, him that, again he's got he's just a tremendous stories. storyteller i really enjoyed him he um, used a technique i'm familiar with called leading with the end have you ever heard this yes yes yeah, in sales yeah i okay I, i've only heard of it more recently but like let's say 
I had a story to tell. And it takes a lot of like background information to get there. If I lead with, all right, when I was young, I had a Honda Civic. Honda Civic transmissions are well known for being loose. And and the the when you use the stick shift a lot, then the top of it wears thin, right? I'm boring the fuck out of you. If I lead with, let me tell you how I became a dildo mogul, right? And then yeah. I go into the Honda Civic and the stick shift and the Yeah, and the yeah. You'll listen to anything to get there. Right. And you'll even you're like, all right, this is all right. Well, how, how does this get the how, how does, does this fold shift? into the dildo? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. You lead with the end, capture the listener, and then they're willing to hear about how you got there. And mm -hmm. uh, he did that a couple of times, and it's like, I see what's happening. I, I'm hooked. Tell me more. I want to know. He, he is tremendously good at what he does. So check out yeah. his link below, everyone. Yeah, for sure. Um, and uh, I'm glad we all made it here on time. <laughs> I'm glad we all <laughs> so, mostly so, and, made it so here on time. Pat, you're I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we, can all, we can all more or less pat ourselves on the back for that one. <laughs> I was late for right. uh, PKN, so I have no room. I live in a glass house over here. And I refuse to apologize. Fire jizz pills. <laughs> Fire jizz pills. Check out uh, Mr. Yeah, Adler. yeah. I, you know what? Just the pre-come alone is a is a good party, guys. Yeah. Come like a man, you bitch. <laughs> All right. That's a wrap.